Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, another stream on the Qadian for Ahmadi Um Alhamdulillah, we have a special guest today in addition to Qadian. We have uh, uh, Ahmad joining us from all the way from Australia. Um, he's, mashallah, going to tell us a bit more about himself uh, and then, inshallah, with uh, Ustad uh, Adnan Rashid and the opening. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Uh, Adnan Bai, Hashim Bai, it's a pleasure to see you after almost one year. So, alhamdulillah, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be part of this very noble stream. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my name is Muhammad Imtiaz. Uh, I'm from Australia. And uh, I serve as a Muslim chaplain at Australian Nesta University. And I also serve as a chaplain for different prisons um, in NSW, New South Wales. And uh, as a part of my uh, qualifications, uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm a student of Master's in Islamic Studies. This is my uh, last semester. And uh, it, it just so happens that I am working uh, on my thesis on the Ahmadiyya movement and uh, the evolution of different uh, phases and claims of the, of the founders. So, inshallah, I, I, I will be, uh, inshallah, waiting to learn from the Ahmadi community because we are always learning. It learning never ends, and uh, inshallah, let's see how we go. Thank you. Welcome, brother. Yes. Thank most welcome, uh, brother Imtiaz. Most welcome to this live stream. And uh, to start, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam al anbiya wa sayyid al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al ghur al mayamin wa man tabi'ahum. بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله السميع لي من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا نبي بعدي respected brothers and sisters in Islam dear friends and the Ahmadi community peace be upon you all May Allah guide all of you. Wassalamu ala manittaba ala huda. And today's stream is specially for you, the Ahmadi community. Okay. This is our expression of love, compassion, and mercy. We believe that it is our duty to bring the truth to you as we see it. Okay. So the It looks like we're having some internet issues uh, with the brother Adnan. So let's give him some time. So just to let you know, brother Adnan is actually not in the UK. He's traveling right now. He's uh, somewhere in Africa, I think. <laughs> so alhamdulillah. So brother Imtiaz, uh, I think while brother Adnan fixes right. that. Uh, can oh, can he's you, back. Can he's you... back. Sorry, Adnan, guys, we, my... could... we lost you for a minute there. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys, this may happen from time to time. Uh, I am in Africa right now. Internet, unfortunately, in this area is not very strong. So uh, the stream may fall from my side from time to time. And if it does, please continue the conversation. And as soon as I get back, I will uh, participate as usual. Sure. So so, so to start the, the stream, this is our expression of love, compassion, and mercy towards the Ahmadi community. We have no hate, we have no vendetta, and we feel nothing but sympathy. And this sympathy has driven us to bring the truth to you. Today's stream is about false prophecies of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, whom we consider to be a false prophet. He claimed to be a prophet after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our reading has led us to believe that he was a false prophet who misrepresented the many, many facts within Islam, Islamic literature, Hadith literature, the Quran. So he, uh, his writings are full of misrepresentations, misquotations. Um, Sorry, Brother Khan, we, we lost your video again. So we can hear you, but your video is not visible. Okay, can you can you hear me? Can you can can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll continue. 
and we will wait for the video to come back. So uh, his his writings are full of misrepresentations, misquotations, misconceptions, uh, and outright lies. In fact, he himself gave us the criteria to see whether he is truthful in his claims or not. We have quotes from him where he has himself given us the criteria to judge his alleged truth. He has said in his writings that if you want to judge me, judge me by my prophecies. My prophecies that I have made repeatedly will determine how truthful I am. And I'm going to read some of these quotes for you so that you can understand what we are dealing with. For example, for example, in one of his writings, he states that but khayal logon ko, this is from Rohani Khazain, volume five, page 288. I have the scan in front of me. I have the scan in front of me. And he says, but khayal logon ko vaze ho ke hamara sidq ya kid janchne ke liye hamari pesh goi se badkar aur koi imtahan nahi ho sakta. So he's saying here that people of bad thoughts, they need to know this, that the greatest evidence of my truth or my falsehood is basically my prophecy. Okay, my prophecy is the greatest test. My prophecy will determine whether I speak the truth or I am lying. Then he goes on to say, and this one is found in Rohani Khazain, volume 17, page 461. Page 461, it is stated, Phir agar sabit ho ke meri so peshan goyo me se ek bhi chuti nikli ho to mein ikrar karunga ke mein kazib hoon aur agar yun bhi khuda se lerna hai to sabar karo aur apna anjaam dekho. So in other words, he's saying that if you want to know that if out of my hundred, hundred prophecies, even one was to be shown to be false, even if one was to be shown, uh, was, one was shown to be false, then I am a liar. So he's saying, in other words, even if one was to find one, one false prophecy among a hundred prophecies of mine, then I am a liar. So these are from his own writings. This is the standard, the criteria he himself gave us. So in light of this, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we will proceed with this stream and we will show that not only that we have one false prophecy, we have multiple false prophecies of this false prophet. Now, why are we calling him false prophet? Is it to hurt the sentiments of the Ahmadi community? Is it to insult them? Is it to demean uh, you know, the, the, their status? No, absolutely not. You know, we consider the Ahmadi community to be our brothers and sisters in humanity. Okay, we consider them to be our brothers and sisters in humanity. We feel for them. We have sympathy for them, just like we have sympathy for Christians, just like we sympathy for uh, we have sympathy for other groups uh, that we reach out to. We do da'wah to. Da'wah is our duty as Muslims. So we are reaching out to the Ahmadi community with love and compassion. So today's program is going to be about Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's prophecies, so-called prophecies that he made repeatedly, and many of them proved to be false. Many of them proved to be false, as we will see in due course. I have already explained his own criteria, as he himself stated in his books, that if you show me one false prophecy of mine, then I am a liar. I am a liar. So if that's true, if we show even one false prophecy, that means by his own standards, he stands uh, condemned. He is a liar. He is a kadab. He's a dajjal. Okay. So after putting a case forward with the first prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we will open the floor to Ahmadi friends 
to missionaries and non-missionaries. This is a Q&A. We want to clarify that this is not a debate session. Uh, and this is a Q&A. So people can come in and ask questions about our approach to this topic. They can test our sincerity. They can test our uh, impartiality. They can test our credibility. They can test the authenticity of the quotes we are presenting. If necessary, we will pull out the original scans, like I see, uh, you can, as you can see in my hand there, okay, in yellow, uh, in yellow, in yellow, you can see there uh, uh, that I have the quotes with me. I think my camera has stopped again. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. The, the the main thing is that you can hear me, inshallah. <laughs> that's the that's the main thing. So so brothers and sisters, Ahmadi friends, those who those of those, those of you who are watching, this is history in the making. We've never had discussions of this sort before on this level. This is social media. This is the age of social media. Nothing remains hidden. Books have been opened. People are reading these books and people are asking questions. Many Ahmadis have messaged us and they are thanking us for this information because they were not aware of it. Their Murabis, their Maulanas or their teachers uh, from their places of worship do not expose them to this literature. And there is a reason why Ahmadi missionaries repeatedly request that they don't want to discuss Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. That's not their priority. They keep imposing upon us uh, topics like the finality of prophethood or the death of Jesus. And they call it Aqidah. They call it Aqaid. They want to discuss the beliefs. They call these topics beliefs. We ask this question, is the personality of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani not part of your beliefs? Is he not your prophet? Are you not told in your beliefs that you have to believe in his prophethood? If that's the case, then we have to question his personality. We have to question his credibility. We have to question his truth. And this is how we will de determine whether he is truthful or not. So we will start, inshallah, we will start the stream without uh, further ado, without uh, talking too much about it. I have already given you the criteria from his own writings that he said that the greatest test of the truth uh, of my teachings is my prophecies. If my prophecies are false, I am false. Then in another, in another place, he said that even if one prophecy was to be shown to be false, one of my prophecies out of uh, many hundreds, then I am a liar. With that note, we will proceed with the first false prophecy. Brother Imtiaz, Muhammad Imtiaz from Australia, please share the first prophecy of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani that was shown to be false. Over to you. Jazakallah khair, Adnan bhai. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma abad. So inshallah, brother, the first uh, prophecy we want to mention is that uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad in his book, Tuhfa Golarviya, and this is in the Ruhani Khazain, chapter 17, and page number is 311. He accepted and he said that Masih Maud Dawe ke baad 40 saal zinda rahega. Hadith se sirf isi kadar malum hota hai ke Masih Maud apne Dawe ke baad 40 baras dunia mein rahega. He is saying in Urdu that the promised Messiah after making his claim of messiahship he will remain in this world for his mission for 40 years and then he further again confirmed this ruhani khazain this is in volume 3 page 414 and the book is azala to oham he says that is takreer se malum hua ke 40 saal tak barabar jo muddat توقف حضرت مسیح کی دنیا میں بعد دوبارہ آنے کے قرار دی گئی ہے he is saying that the staying time of the promised messiah after he will come again it will be 40 years and inshallah we have many other references on the same topic where he repeatedly has said this thing that after promised messiah will come 
and he will make his claim of messiahship he will remain in this world for 40 years now our point is that mirza gulam ahmad according to his own writings according to the the literature of the of the ahmadiyya movement in 1892 first of all he he, he says that he was appointed when he was writing burahine ahmadiyya and he started this writing in 1880 and 1880 1880 81 82 83 84 up till 1884 he was engaged in writing the first four parts of burahin ahmadiyya this is his first book when he started his career so in this book basically uh, after this one he says that according to himself mirza himself and according to his own uh, movement he was appointed in 1885 now this is a very key point to note they agree that he was appointed in 1885 then again mirza in his book and this is again ruhani khazain volume 4 page number 398 and this book is called nishan asmani a heavenly sign in this book mirza sahab is saying that in 1892, please remember the date, in 1892, 10 complete years have passed ever since I made my claim of messiahship. So 1885 he starts and 1892 himself says that my 10 years have completed. And then again, there's a book and it's Ruhani Khazain, chapter 21, page number 293. It's, it's basically the fifth part of Burahin Ahmadiyya. And this is from his last books. And this book is from 1905 till 1907. In between that, this book was produced or written by Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. In this book, he says that now 25 years of my messiahship have completed. When? In 1905 or 1907, Whenever he was writing these lines in the book, he said that 25 years of my messiahship have completed. Now we all know that in 1908, Mirza Saab died. So our question is, how did he complete his 40 years of messiahship? Number one. Second question is, if he did not complete his 40 years of messiahship, is it not true then? Then he is a false messiah according to his own standard. Anarmi, over to you. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mithyaz Bhai. Um, can you guys hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, did you give the, the quotes, the exact quotes where he said this? Yeah, he provided the references. Yeah. Okay, the references yeah. have been provided. Yeah. So the case is, that he himself is saying that after his advent as the promised Messiah, from the day he announces his advent as the promised Messiah, as he claimed, he will live for 40 years. And we know from his history that is not true. He did not live for 40 years. He died. Okay. And he gave specific dates and times. Okay. He was very, very precise about this prophecy. Now, if that's the case, if that's the case, then he is a false prophet. Because he himself said, if one of his prophecies was to be shown to be false, then he's a false prophet. This is our case today. And we will open the floor. Hashim Bhai, is there anyone to engage with us on that very point? Simple, yeah. straightforward. Do you want to let the uh, people join in? Yeah, the Ahmadis. Okay. Yeah, yeah inshallah. Because, inshallah, you know, we will go inshallah one by one. So this is the first prophecy because we only need to prove one prophecy wrong. If one is proved wrong, he said that I am done. Yes, absolutely. All we have to show is one prophecy, but we have many to go through. Yes. We yes. may not be able to go. We actually may not be able to go through all of them yes. in this one night. Okay. There are so many so-called prophecies by him that... Actually, didn't come he, to pass. he said they are 300,000. Okay. He said there are 300,000 prophecies. Yeah. Now, that in itself is a lie because he didn't make that many prophecies. Okay. Because but anyway, 
if we if we count the day of his messiahship we have to give at least couple of thousand every single hour yes 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 <laughs> this, right. is, this is i mean can, okay can you can you have the 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 quote yeah give me lady? give me a minute uh, i'll just post the do you want me to post the link now or you guys want to continue no then inshallah we okay. can post the link so we can inshallah address this this point with them yeah. yes inshallah inshallah open the floor so that we can address this point so mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani claimed that there are over how many 300000 prophecies okay yes. and and by that virtue he would be making 2000 prophecies every what every minute every hour every day what it's it's a, it's a very tough calculation <laughs> <laughs> okay so so actually so we are by just just uh, just uh, one point on this one actually we have a complete case that in one year for example let's suppose uh, he, he would he would says today i have 10000 prophecies he might say next day i have 800 prophecies and the next day he might say i have 100000 prophecies so basically he was mixing up things so we don't know allah knows so better this... uh, either either there was problem with his memory or he was lying wallahu alam uh this was a man who was full of contradictions this was a man who was full of contradictions who contradicted contradicted himself repeatedly and he was riddled his writings are riddled with contradictions and you know what he himself said anyone who contradicts himself cannot be from god cannot be from god okay just like the quran says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عندي غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا Do you not ponder upon the Quran that if it was from another source than Allah then you would have found many discrepancies in it This is the argument we use against the Christians when it comes to the gospel because gospels are riddled with contradictions and this is one of the points we use against the 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 gospels that these are not from allah allah could not have sent down all these contradictions uh, if there is one entity inspiring all four gospels why would this one entity send down different information to these people to confuse people likewise mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani his writings are riddled riddled with contradictions mathematical contradictions some of which we will share with you today in due course to show how much of a liar how much of uh, um um you know a madman he was so we should open the floor if there are any ahmadis who want to join us you're yeah. most welcome so i just want to make it clear that uh, if you are not an ahmadi please leave the studio the back chat and we will call you later inshallah so you can join yeah us. please please uh, our our muslim brothers and sisters our muslim brothers and sisters please understand okay. this is a stream for ahmadis this is dedicated to them we want to talk to them okay we want to hear from them okay we talk to you all the time uh, we do many streams but this is a stream for them yeah so if you're not an ahmadi please leave the back chat because it's already full and we want to give the opportunity for the ahmadis to join and inshallah make the case so if you're not an ahmadi please leave the back chat now okay my early morning coffee inshallah <laughs> it's fajr time at your place isn't it uh, it's not in fajr yet inshallah fajr will be in one hour inshallah oh subhanallah i mean appreciate your dedication mashallah it seems it seems it seems all the all the usual culprits are avoiding a stream today <laughs> because none of them no. because they they might have been disorientated because normally the prophecies which are discussed this is not one of those famous one but i believe this is very important because if this one cannot be established then how can we say was true messiah okay, okay so, peace for you ji assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ji हाँ जी मैंने लिखा था कि मैं जर्मनी से हूँ उर्दू में बात कर सकता हूँ अगर इजाजत हो तो अगर नहीं तो फिर मैं मसला, मसला ये है कि हमारी स्ट्रीम इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग तबके के लिए है और आप उर्दू में बात करेंगे तो उर्दू में 
اکثر لوگوں کو یہ بات سمجھ میں نہیں آئے گی آر فرینڈ ہیز کال فرام جرمنی اینڈ ہی وانٹس ٹو اسپیک ان اردو آئی ایم ایکسپلینگ ٹو ہم دیٹ دس اسٹریم از فار دا انگلش انگلش اسپیکنگ آڈینس موسٹ پیپل ڈونٹ انڈرسٹینڈ اردو ہے دیٹس وائی وی ریڈنگ کورس ان اردو اینڈ ٹرانسلیٹنگ دم ان ٹو دا انگلش لینگویج ڈو یو اسپیک انگلش آپ کو انگلش آتی ہے اچھی نہیں آتی بہتر ہوگا میں اردو میں بات کر سکوں گا چلے آپ نے دو منٹ دیا شکریہ امید ہے کہ ٹوکیں گے نہیں بات یہ ہے کہ یہ کوئی بھی دعویٰ نہیں کرتا نہ میرا دعویٰ ہے کہ مجھے مرزا صاحب کی تمام کتب جو ہے وہ زبانی یاد ہے بہتر ہوتا کہ آپ اپنے حوالے پیش کر دیتے پہلے تاکہ ہم ان کا سیاق و سباق دیکھ کے اگر کوئی قرآن کی آج میرے سامنے پیش کرے گا مجھے اس کا نہیں علم سیاق و سباق کا نہیں پتا تو میں جواب نہیں دوں گا تو بہتر ہوتا کہ آپ پہلے بتا دیتے جی یہ ہمارے اعتراضات ہیں آپ تحقیق کر لیں اور آپ ہمیں جواب دے دیں تو اس طرح تو مشکل ہوگا نا میں نے بھی نہیں پڑھا نہ سیاق و سباق دیکھا ہے آپ نے حوالے پیش کر دیے تو اس طرح تو میں کوئی بھی شاید چند لوگ ہوں گے جو جواب دے سکے تو اگر اگلی اسٹریم میں آپ نے جواب لینے ہیں تو میں پھر انگلش میں بھی آپ کو جواب دے دوں گا کیونکہ میں جواب تیار کر لوں گا اس سوال کا جواب آپ کو پڑھ کے جو آپ نے حوالے دیے ہیں آپ کو جواب دے دوں گا تو یہی احسن اور بہتر طریقہ ہے کیونکہ کام بحث بحث نہیں ہونی چاہیے یعنی مقصد مقصد یہ ہونا چاہیے کہ آپ کے اعتراضات ہیں اور ہم اس کو کیسے جواب دیتے ہیں اس کا یہ مقصد ہونا چاہیے تو اس لیے بہتر ہے کہ اگر آپ پہلے اگر آپ نے کرنی ہے تو پہلے آپ حوالے بھیج دیں یا یو ٹیوب لگا دیں کہ ٹھیک ہے یہ ہمارے اعتراض آتے ہیں کوئی بھی آ کے جواب دے دے تو پھر میں بھی دے سکتا ہوں انگلش میں تیار کر کے لیکن اس طرح تو معذرت چاہوں گا مشکل ہے ٹھیک ہے آر فرینڈ ہیز سیڈ فرام جرمنی ان اردو دیٹ اف یو ہیڈ گیون دیز ریفرنسز بفور ہینڈ دین وی وڈ بین پرپیئر فار دیم But because these references have come to us and we haven't memorized all the books of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, uh, so we cannot fully do justice to these references and respond to them. Uh, so he is saying that if you had posted them earlier, then we would have had these responses. Uh, that, so I'm going to okay. respond to him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we got other, we got other yeah. Ahmadis who can respond in English. And so I'm not sure. آپ کے پاس ریسپانسز نہیں ہوں گے لیکن اور احمدی لائن پہ موجود ہیں ہم ان کو لیں گے شاید وہ ریسپانسز دے دیں تو آپ تین ہزار والی بات جو آپ نے کی ہے اس کا میں ریسپانس دے سکتا ہوں آپ کو تین لاکھ تین لاکھ اس کا بھی ریسپانس دے سکتا ہوں آپ کو کیونکہ وہ تو دس آر دا مین پوائنٹ سو لیٹس برنگ ان دا پیپل ہو کین ایکچولی ریسپانڈ ان شاء اللہ بٹ تھینک یو ویری مچ برادر فار یور کانٹریبیوشن جزاک اللہ خیر Yeah, this will be unfair to the Ahmadis as well. So let's bring in the people who can actually respond. Um, Take me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Ahmad? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking me, first of all. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's good to be back. But before we actually, you know, continue this, this discussion, Brother Adnan actually came to our stream last week. We had a very pleasant conversation. We showed the mannerism and respect in which a stream should be conducted. We never stopped him. We didn't even put a timer of two to three minutes or anything at all. We said, make your point. We will respond to your allegations and then we will respond. And Adnan himself at the end accepted and stated that yes, I was treated very fairly. And so I expect the same courtesy and respect from you If that is granted to me today, I will stay, inshallah, and I will try to answer your, your, to your questions. If you say no, we will inter in interrupt you, then it's not going to be a good conversation for you or anyone else. But based on the previous experiences, a lot of your own people have also said that you don't let Ahmadi speak. So can, I, can we please first agree on the fact that you will, you will let us speak, you will let us make our point, because the purpose is not interjection, interruption, but so that people can understand. Okay, so I, will, I didn't actually watch that. Uh, and Brother Adnan, it seems like he's lost the connection again. Yeah. Uh, so we try our best, to be fair. And the interjection was also from your side and from Razi's side. So let's be fair. It was yeah. from both sides. It wasn't just one-sided. Don't try to imply that it was only from our side. So if you want to be sincere, if you want to be fair, make yeah. sure you follow the rules 
just like the way you did on your stream where yes. everything was nice and hunky dory we want yes. the same we want the same we want a dialogue we don't want Absolutely. to Absolutely. interrupting Absolutely. interjecting so on both sides i mean i would make the request that they, they be you. given the chance to make yeah. the point and then let the other person speak of course um, and Okay. Yeah, sorry, Ahmed, just one sec. The guys in the back chat, if you're not Ahmadi, please leave. Okay, I've told you this earlier. And if you keep returning, we'll have to ban you. Okay, go ahead, Ahmed. Okay, yes. So um, thank you so much for that. And, and of course, ho ho hopefully we'll have a good conversation. I mean, um, it's a good addition that we have Brother Imtiaz. I've, I've, never, I've never seen him before, mashallah. He has a very nice beard as well. Uh, so there are a few questions you see, the point that we always make as Ahmadis when we come to your streams, what, and when, you're, when, when you're putting an allegation, first of all, to put an allegation on any individual is a very easy thing. To answer that allegation, it requires time. So therefore, it's, it's, it's very easy if someone comes and, as, as you were discussing before as well, and he raises an allegation about his Aisha's age or all of these things, and Quraiza and all of that, the time to reply takes a longer time. The rebuttal takes a longer time, Okay. So moving forward, I think, first of all, what we need to understand is whenever we're discussing a topic, and especially you claiming to represent Islam here against, against Ahmadis, every time you open your stream, you begin, and then you straight away jump to the character of the Prophet ﷺ. Today as well, you began with that verse, you went to the, uh, you've left the character now, because we've dealt with Adnan on our stream, he came to our stream, we had a very good conversation, few people can judge for themselves. But today you're speaking about prophecies, and I, and I, and I want to respect that, and I want to stick to that. Okay. Now, before so we discuss... So Adnan's here now. Yes, so, yes. Brother Adnan, but, I don't know if you've been listening, uh, but Ahmed... No, I, 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 I lost. Yes, I brother, lost. Okay. But so, Adnan, I would uh, Ahmed, right. one, uh, j just a quick uh, reminder. Uh, I would appreciate it if you make the point brief and to the point that yes. we ask. Because the thing is, look, if you talk about all these different things, it's just unnecessary. Yes, you yes. Take up, you take up time... You, you okay, are un well. It is unfair to the other people who are waiting in the back chat. So okay. let's not just drag it unnecessarily. Let me just summarize in, in, in a statement what I said. Uh, Brother Nan, I was saying you came yeah. to our stream. We, we hosted you with, 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 with a lot of respect. We gave you time and honor and respect for you to speak. We never interjected. So I expect the same today. That's all I'm asking. Okay. So let me very clar quickly clar clarify. I came to your stream the other day and you were very well behaved. Uh, you did not interject me at all i was speaking freely there was no issue there and we will do the same tonight so that we can show the world that we uh, we we can do this okay mm -hmm. how we're going to do this is by following the protocol we have already set the protocol is that you will have two minutes to respond to every mm -hmm. point we make then okay. it will be our turn to speak we will speak for as long as necessary because this is a yeah. q a just yeah. like your stream i was respecting your time it was, it was five of you, uh, and you were all speaking, and I was responding in my little time to that. So yeah. you will have fair time. We will, not, we will not interject. What we request from you is, Brother Ahmed, yes. my brother in humanity, that you need to stick to the topic. The topic today is yes. false prophecies. prophecies. Oh, yes. yes. So we have raised a question, and yes. if you have a response, please yes. do put it forward. We have given references that Mirza Ghulam yes. Ahmed Qadiani said yeah. that after his advent as the Muhammad, promised Muhammad. messiah yeah uh, he will he will live for um uh, 40 years so now okay. over to you your two minutes start now so as i was mentioning whenever you guys start your uh, streams with with uh, with with any allegation or, or start to something what you what you tend to forget is is the fact that you're representing islam here and when you're representing Islam, you need to be bring, uh, you need to explain from Islam what are the usul with regards to prophecies. This is not a prophecy. The prophecy that Prophet Muhammad Sallam received was thamanina haulan aw qariba min dalik, that 80 years or thereabout. Here, the Prophet Muhammad has quoted a hadith, and underneath he says, "It appears that the tenure of my mission will extend to 40 years, and it is Allah who knows best. It is Allah who knows best." So we have to conclusively study where else the promised Messiah wasalam, has spoken about his age and what has, he, what, what has he said with regards to it. But before that, the most important thing is, is the usul of prophecies. And it's, it's interesting that Adnan, whenever he starts his, uh, his, his, his stream, he, he mentions all these verses, but he never discusses the usul from the Quran. You're meant to be representing Islam here. 
So I think I have to so, sort of teach you today, and I'm going to ask you a few questions, and please re re reply to them as well, as it is also a Q&A. There are two types of prophecy in the Quran known as Vada and Va'id. Vada, Allah the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah la yukhliful miyad. That Allah the Almighty does not go against his Vada, his promise. With regards to Va'id, Allah the Almighty states, and it is mentioned in the Holy Quran, it's quoted, وَإِن يَكُوا صَادِقًا يُسِبْكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ That if this prophet is true, then some of that which he promises you will come true. And I'm going to ask Brother Adnan and Brother uh, Muhammad Imtiaz why Allah the Almighty has used Ba'd here and not Kul. Okay, moving forward. Now, some prophecies regarding promises are meant to be fulfilled in the lifetime of the Prophet. Just as we know, Allah told the Holy Prophet Wasallam, Wallahu ya simuka minan nas. Then there are others where Allah the Almighty told him, Huwalladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al haqqi li yudhhirahu wa ladini kulli. That Allah the Almighty has sent this messenger of Rasulullah Wasallam so that he may cause it to prevail over all religions. And Rasulullah Wasallam had told us in Sunan Abi Da'ud, Wa yuhliku Allahu fi zamanihi al-mila la kullaha illa al-Islam. That Allah will perish all religion, all religions except Islam. So I have a simple question and I'm re replying to that is, was this prophecy fulfilled in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that all of religions, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism that we see it in today's world, were they all perished or was there another understanding given by Mufassireen? Okay, moving forward. We also... Uh, your, your, your time is up. Okay, yes. I'll listen to your reply. Okay. Okay, so I'll quickly say what I have to say and then Brother Diaz can come in. Okay, when we pose a question about Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's uh, 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 to the, the Ahmadis, they have to understand that they cannot come back to us with responses like this, the one you have come with. You start Brother talking Hashim, about Rasul. Sorry to interject, uh, can, wait, can wait. you see the time of yeah. two minutes? Two no, minutes, please. No, 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 it's not two minutes from our side. No, no, okay. wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay, okay. We, this is our stream and we okay. are answering questions. All, all Ahmadis are welcome, all, including yourself. All Brother, Ahmadis no, are did welcome. we give you two minutes? But, did we give you okay. two minutes? Just asking. Okay. Can you can you mute? See, Ahmad, you're already interjecting, man. I'm yeah. asking. Can you mute Ahmad? After he yeah. finishes, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Brother Hashim, mute him. Mute him. No, mute no, it's him. okay. He'll, he'll be respectful. Go on, Ahmad. No, no, uh, just, mute him. Just be respect. respectful because the I'm thing fine. is, yeah. Bro you're, Bro you're breaking the flow that uh, Brother Plan yeah. is already saying. Yeah, Brother Hashim. Brother Hashim, mute him. Please. Okay, he's, he's muted yes. now. Okay, himself. yeah. Mute him, please. Now, the reason why I, I asked Brother Hashim to mute him is the other day I attended the Ahmadi stream. Okay, I was being challenged repeatedly on Twitter and elsewhere to come and face five Ahmadis alone. I was being called a coward, was being called, uh, I mean, people were posting memes of people running away things like that, that Adnan Rashid is running away, Adnan Rashid. So I was in my bed and I received messages that you better wake up because you are a coward. <laughs> so I woke up and I asked myself this question, am I, a, am I a coward? So I went on the stream and I saw a very nice, rosy looking gentleman, nicely dressed, talking beautifully, very nicely to their audience. And I was pleasantly surprised that are these the same people who came to our stream the other day, shouting, screaming, interjecting, saying all sorts of things and not allowing us to finish our sentences? I mean, it turned into a war zone the other day, the stream, right? Hashim, you can remember that, right? Yeah. So, so I was surprised. I was actually thinking, are these the same people? Uh, Razi and Brother Ahmed there. Now, you come to our stream, and the behavior changes completely, as you've already shown. Okay, Please try to understand that we want to have a very decent conversation. The purpose of the stream is to educate people, not confuse people. So we want straight answers in your own time, when you are given the chance to give answers in your own time, straight answers, no waffling, no beating around the bush, no, no changing the topic, no start indulging in discussions that are not relevant. You talk about a soul, you don't have an soul. You have no a soul. You change a soul as you go along. You change colors like chameleon lizards. Okay, when we pose a question, you start changing the topic, you start raising questions about 
the Prophet of Islam, you start talking about the Quran, you start raising questions about Hadith. This is what you do. This is the game you play. When you know you cannot defend Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, the game you start playing is change the topic. Start talking about <coughs> Wafat al Masih. Start talking about Khatma Nabuwa. Start talking about da 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 da. And then what happens? The real question is unanswered. The question is again Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani himself said, if one of my prophecies was to be false, one out of a hundred, one was to be false, then I am a liar. All we have to show today is one false prophecy, one of which we have already shown, and clearly you don't have a response, and you're throwing things to us from the verses of the Quran, and this verse means this, this verse means that, this hadith means this, what about the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's not the answer. The answer is defend Mirza. Defend Mirza. Mirza said, I will live for 40 years after I announce my messiahship. After I am appointed on my messianic mission. Over to you, Brother Intiaz. And then we can go to Ahmed. Jazakallah khair, Brother Adnan. Inshallah, very quickly, uh, without wasting anybody's time. Uh, basically, in principle, in usul, we agree with this. Okay, that it is the ulama, the scholars, they can tell us that what any prophecy means. But the problem here is in the last stream, Razi said that according to Ahmadiyya, Ghulam Ahmad is Hakam and Adal. They are not going to take hadith as the Wu Muslim take. Rather, if any hadith is confirmed and accepted by uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, they will just take it as an authentic hadith. Now, first of all, it is a prophecy. And secondly, because Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is saying, and he is basically referring to a hadith. Now, which hadith? They have to prove this because Mirza is quoting the hadith, not us. He said that hadith is telling us that when Masih Ma'ud will come, he, his mission will be 40 years. Now, if Brother Ahmad is trying to say that this prophecy did not complete it in its apparent form, that it says 40 years, but Mirza Saab did not complete 40 years. So my first point is, Ahmad has to admit that what is the wording of the prophecy, it was not fulfilled. And after that, if he wants to give it a second meaning, go for it very quickly. You can give it a second meaning. We can discuss that is this second meaning within the scope of the text. Because the problem is, you cannot just give meaning to a text which cannot be substantiated from the text itself. So we have no problem. But just two points, okay? Number one, you need to concede, if you want to, that the prophecy was not fulfilled in its apparent form, number one. After that, give us a very quickly the secondary meaning which you want to give and then prove that meaning from the text. Thank you very much. Okay, Ahmed, you want to come in? Yes, thank you so much. So, yeah. uh, Brother Hashim, there has to be some fairness. I can't just be given two minutes to reply to an allegation. One second, one second, one second. One, one second. Brother Adnan, one you second. have to be honest here. One second. Okay, go on. You said one second. Stick to a second. Yeah, listen to him. Come on, Ahmad. Just listen to what yeah. Ahmad can, Adnan can has you, said. Yeah, Adnan, we can, can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah to repeat yeah. Brother Muhammad uh, Imtiaz's point, if you yes. are saying now that the apparent meaning of the words is not fulfilled, then you have to admit it, be honest about it, because clearly they're not fulfilled. Mirza did not live for 40 years after his advent as the promised Messiah. This is a historic fact. No one can deny it on this planet. So I'm clarifying this so that the audience follows us. The audience knows where we're going. Okay, okay. thank you. So, so Mirza, one second, Ahmed. One second, Ahmed. I'm finishing right now. You will have your two minutes. So yeah. Mirza claimed that after my advent as the promised messiah i will live for 40 years mm -hmm. so if the apparent meaning was not fulfilled which it was mm -hmm. not because he died before 40 years after mm -hmm. his advent okay then what is the meaning okay first you accept first you admit Is the again. apparent meaning fulfilled? And if it's not, then talk. Go ahead. Over to you. Two minutes. Brother Adran, you know, the, the, the thing is, whenever I've spoken to you, and I think my time begins, there's a revelation. It's over to Ahmed. 
There is a revelation of the Prophet where he says, Mana mani'u min as-sama. It seems as Allah the Almighty puts something on your tongue that, you know, you, you every time you come, something happens to your stream. It's been like three or four times. So you have to look into that as well. I don't know what is going on. But every time you come with these allegations, something happens to your stream. But let's, let's get back to the point. I mentioned with regards to this reference, the promised Messiah is quoting a hadith. Okay? And he says underneath that Allah, according to the prophecy mentioned in Izal Samanina hawlan aw qariban min dhalik. Which he has quoted numerous places. 80 years or thereabouts. We have your own scholars, Mawlana Salaam al Amratsari, if you want to see it, those who are his opponents. They themselves admitted and accepted that, that the prophecy has been fulfilled. We, or, and if you want, I will show you on the screen for, 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 for the viewers to see. But the point that I'm, I'm making here, and another beautiful point with regards to Samanina Hawlan or Qariba Min Dalik, is the fact that the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu was salam, Allah the Almighty informed him about, even about his demise. In 1905, he receives the revelation and Allah tells him, two or three mouthfuls of water has, has, has remained. Three mouthfuls of water has remained. Exact three years later, in 1908, he passes away. Okay? So, so, so what, you're saying, what you've come up with, you think you're very clever, you've come up with this thing, is, but this is not even a prophecy. It is, you started off with a prophecy, this is not a prophecy, he's quoting a hadith. And he's deducting a meaning from it. Okay? He's not prophesizing it. There's a different thing. Okay, otherwise, I, I can mention, mention to you many a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which would go in line with this thinking of yours. But why I'm bringing you back to the usul is because then I'm going to cover that in those usul. Okay, so please, as scholars, first of all, let your listeners understand what are the usul of prophecies. What does Quran say about them? What does a hadith say about them? Because you are claiming to be scholars here. Brother Imtiaz, as I said, he's sitting there. You, I know you, you love going to the, you know, uh, to the writings of the Prophet and take bits and pieces from there like the Jews did. But what I'm telling you to do is explain to us whether the prophecies of, 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 of a prophet, right, they are to be fulfilled in its actual word or can there be another understanding? Can you answer that point? That whatever the prophet says, it has to be, it has to be fulfilled word for word. Is that true or is, that sta is this a statement of kufr? This is my, because it's a Q&A, I'm asking you this question, please answer. Brother Ahmed, uh, it's better you complete your time and then we'll talk. Yeah, his okay. time is over. His time is his up. Time. Oh, yeah. It's already over. Subhanallah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two minutes. It's already Why? over. Okay, okay. Take, take more 30 seconds. Please take it. Take it. Okay, okay. So this, this is not how we treated Brother Adnan, though, but it's okay. It's okay. We know how he is. Okay, so I, I, I was saying to him, uh, Brother Adnan, and my simple question is this, and I'm going to repeat this question. Whether the understanding of a prophet with regards to any, because this is not a prophecy, first of all. This is his statement with regards to Wahi. The prophecy or the revelation the Promised Messiah Islam himself re re received was Thamanina Hawlan aw Qariba Min Dalik. We have his opponents who accepted that the Promised Messiah wasalam, have lived that time. He has completed that time. So this statement, the, the furthest thing you can say is, is, is his misunderstanding. Right? And I can present to you numerous examples from the, from the hadith of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said something, right? Where, for instance, let me give you one example. Your, your time's up. Just yeah. last statement. I, I, I'll request for 10 seconds, please. Okay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw in, in a vision that Abu Jahl has accepted Islam. Okay? What happened? It was never fulfilled in Abu Jahl. It was fulfilled in Ikrama. So the fulfillment of the prophecy, fulfillment itself explained what the revelation meant. Okay, so when Ikrama accepted uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he accepted Islam later on, the prophecy and the understanding became apparent to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions. This is just one example. But let's continue this and inshallah people will realize how flawed your usul are with regards to prophecies. And I only asked you one question with regards to wada and wa'id and you don't even know it. You don't mention a single verse from the Quran or a single hadith of the Prophet. So why, how are you representing... Okay, Ahmed, Ahmed Islam? your time's up. Come on, uh, let Muhammad MTS answer now. Go ahead, Muhammad. So, Bismillah. So, first of all, uh, Brother Ahmed, Alhamdulillah, we know that what's the meaning of wada and wa'id. 
but brother we need to stick with the topic so that we don't want to waste people's time because in the last stream this is what happened there were many tangents and the actual topic was lost so we want to stick with the topic inshallah if you want to have a discussion on the ulul okay, tafsir inshallah we can do it separately okay now first of all because brother ahmed is mentioning many times samani na haula i just want to explain people don't know he is referring that the age of ulam ahmed was predicted according to mirza ulam ahmed it's going to be 80 years or or close to it no problem inshallah we will discuss their prophecy as well no problem at all we are simply saying and by the way i don't know if you made any new point in the, in, in the last 5 minutes because i already said i already said that we already accept the usul that if you want to give a text a secondary meaning we accept this uh, this usul okay but the the only thing we need to stick with is that the text need to permit this it has to be within the scope of interpretation of the text okay we cannot give a meaning to a text which cannot be inferred from the text itself number one okay and number two my brother is that uh, please i'm asking you a second time if you want to give it a secondary meaning go for it but but please first you need to accept that the apparent meaning is not full okay you, you accept this you can see this then inshallah give a secondary meaning we can discuss that ahmed that the the primary meaning is not fulfilled ahmed are you there yeah 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 i'm listening i just want yeah, to just add one point brother i should just one point to add in this one yeah, yeah. yes go ahead okay the the point i want to add is this first please please follow the logical order first concede that the apparent meaning is not fulfilled and then we are, you are more than welcome give us a secondary meaning we can discuss that and my second point is you are saying again and again it's not a prophecy my brother when something about the future is said what is it called okay prophecy. and now in this one we did not we are not quoting this hadith because if we will quote the hadith then as raji said last time that for them the usul of hadith are different we are simply saying that mirza sahib in his book has accepted this hadith he said according to this hadith masih maud after coming in this world and after making the claim he will live for 40 years it is something about the future when something is said about the future it's called a prophecy go ahead ahmed can i answer yeah yeah i'm going to i'm going to be, if you're going to just stick to this thing right with regards to this as as, as i've already explained to you you can't take a single statement and just say you know this is this is all it is if the promise musa alaihi salatu wasalam did not have other revelations and 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 prophecies with regards to his end which was it was not just about uh just about 40 years or so he spoke how his ending will take place he specifically mentioned and allah the almighty informed and even ibrahim ahmadi of allah ya simuka minan nas allah the almighty would protect you all of these things in his lifetime you are you are like you know the the disbelievers who go towards mutashabihat and leave muhkamat there are countless prophecies of the promised messiah alaihi salam that you are intentionally avoiding as i said this is not a prophecy he is saying here he is quoting a hadith but underneath he is saying tamanina haulan aw qariban min dhalik what does it translate to 80 years or thereabouts did the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasalam live near the 80 years or thereabouts or not that's the question i'm i'm i'm, I'm asking you he lived near 80 years the plague took place in india which killed millions of people he was in the epicenter where the plague took place yet allah the almighty killed those 10 million people but the messiah was not killed all of his opponents your scholars from ahli hadith rashid gangohi and all of these people were killed in that those who made prayers against the promised messiah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you're not going to mention that because this is the deceit of the jews and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that in my ummah will also be will also remember the jews who would oppose the messiah and this is this is this exactly what happened and we're seeing it in front of our eyes that the jews just as they take the aspect of the prophecy from jesus jesus lifetime and they say it hasn't been fulfilled and they're waiting for thousands of years for him to return similarly muslims you are waiting for 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 isa alayhi salatu wasalam to descend 
And I'm going to say this last thing. The Promised Messiah Islam, said, in his time, you will die and not see the descent of Christ. Your progeny will die. They will not see, see the descent of Christ. Their progeny will die. They will not see the descent of Christ. Brother, this, this in itself is a prophecy. When Nawab Sadiq Hassan Khan in, 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 in Iqtarab Ussa and, and, and his son was speaking about that the, that, that the Mahdi should appear in, in, in few years or so, right? And you, you made Adnan many videos about him as well, and I've seen it. What do you say about you know, all of those things? The point is, brother, you don't have a Messiah. You don't have nothing. You're, you, you have a hypothesis in your hand, and you're basically defending the hypothesis, and you can do that till the day of judgment. I challenge you. You mentioned one. I would, I would mention the, 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 the prophecy about plague, about Lake Haram, you know, about his message reaching the corners of the earth, about him being protected and not being killed. What about those, what about those prophecies? Why are you not mentioning this? Based on okay. this, based on this criteria, okay. last thing, last thing, last thing, based on this criterion that you, you mentioned. You've already said your last thing. You've already no, said your last thing. Your last, don't interject. Don't okay. interject. Don't okay. interject. Don't interject. You, you, no, no, you, don't you've interject. already said your last thing. Don't interject. You already... uh, Ahmed, you, you were given two minutes. You always want to finish? go over time. Is it finished? And then you say we are unfair. Is it finished? I'll stop. Is it finished? It's finished, obviously. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll go silent. Go ahead, Atnan. Adnan, I can just add yeah, go ahead, make a point. I think Adnan's frozen again. Yeah, so uh, my brother Ahmad, first of all, everybody can see, sometimes you're calling us like the Jews, sometimes like the Kuffar. So people should see this. I yeah, never said Kuffar. Said... I never said Kuffar, okay. Don't, don't brother, misquote me. Brother, people because Rasulullah said Jews. Rasulullah said Jews. He said, okay, just as a shoe remember, resembles you're, a you're, Jew. You're interjecting. Can you let him finish, Ahmed? But, he, but he's lying about me, please. Inter yeah, you can, you can make the correction afterwards. You're the one who said to stick to the rules, and you're breaking it every time. Why do, so, you don't do this on your streams. Yeah. Why are you doing it on our streams? Is this some sort of a trick, some sort of a tactic? It doesn't work like that. Please, Ahmed, just respect the decorum, and then we can all have a nice dialogue and something that is productive, inshallah. So I think Brother Adnan's suffering with this uh, internet again, unfortunately. He's in Africa and um, maybe, maybe the inshallah. internet there is something. Inshallah, can I just talk now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Brother Ahmed, uh, no problem. I don't want to waste people's time. People can see that if you said as Jews or not, whatever, let's not go to on that, okay? If you said, may Allah forgive you, okay, brother? So what I'm trying to say is, Brother Ahmed, you said that there are other revelations as well which needs to be considered when understanding and interpreting this revelation. Once again, number one, have you conceded or do you have the courage to concede that the apparent meaning of completing 40 years was not fulfilled? And after that, you are more than welcome. We have to be fair and inshallah will be fair. You can give us a secondary meaning we can discuss that secondary meaning, no problem at all. Secondly, as you said that there are other revelations as well, we need to consider that. My question to you, please answer the question first directly in your, in your time, and then you can add something on, on the top of that. My question to you is, regarding these 40 years of completion of Messiah, did Mirza receive any other revelation on this 40 years thing? And if he did, please bring it to us. Because you are trying to say, and you are trying to give the impression to the audience that there are other revelations regarding this point that Messiah will complete 40 years and we are hiding those other revelations. So I am inviting you, please bring those other revelations in which Mirza corrected or Mirza added or he amended the period of 40 years. So please, you need to bring that. Now, you okay. are talking about the age of the, of the Messiah, not a problem at all. We have everything ready. Be it a Lekram, be it Abdullah Atam, everything is ready. But obviously, we have to go step by step. So, just to summarize, number one, you need to concede first that the apparent meaning is not fulfilled. Then we can discuss the secondary meaning. And point yes. number two is you are you are saying repeatedly that we are hiding something and and just uh, mentioning few of them. No, if you if you think and if your claim is that on this subject that Messiah will complete 40 years after he will make his claim. If we are hiding any of the prophecy of Mirza on this topic, bring it. Let me very quickly come in. Hashim, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. 
Okay. Let me let me burst let me burst the bubble the plague bubble. Okay. Let me uh, let let me kill the plague, inshallah, Met metaphorically, because our friends here love they love metaphors. Okay. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, in his book Daf al Bala, page five states, Qadian remained free from the plague because the prophet and messiah of God was residing there. Is that clear, guys? Yeah. Hashim, is yeah, that clear? Yeah. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, in his book Daf al Bala, page five states. Qadian remained free from the plague because the Prophet and Messiah of God was residing there. Then in his book, Hakikatul Wahi, page 84, he writes, In the days of the plague, when Qadian was under its attack, my son Bashir Ahmad fell ill. I will repeat. In the days of the plague, when Qadian was under its attack, my son Bashir Ahmed fell ill. So in one place, Mirza Ghulab Ahmed Qadiani is saying that Qadian, his city was protected from plague because the Prophet and the Messiah of God was in the city talking about himself. Then in Hakikatul Wahi, he goes on to admit the plague did in indeed attack the city of Qadian. Not only that, his own son, Bashir Ahmad, fell ill. There goes your plague house of cards. There goes your plague claim or your plague prophecy. This is the Are reality. That's that, wait, yeah, yeah, no, like... wait, 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 yeah, wait. So, so this, this, this is the kind of person we're dealing with, who is not only contradicting himself, he doesn't even know what he's saying. Okay. Over to you, Tiaz Over to you, okay. very quickly. Inshallah, just, inshallah, just inshallah, 30 seconds, just want to say very quickly, Brother Ahmed, we are not going to discuss about the, the, the prophecy of plague, okay? Because this is exactly what happened last time, and please, we are more than happy to discuss that, but after we will finish this first prophecy, because I said already, prophecy means when something about the future is said and mirza sahib is saying that prophet muhammad sallam himself has said now if you will say that this prophecy is not fulfilled then you need to explain to us that according to mirza prophet muhammad sallam said that this will happen and it did not happen then basically mirza sahib is putting a, a, a blame on prophet muhammad sallam as well because he said this is the hadith okay and this hadith is, and if you will want, I'll give you more references. This hadith is accepted by Mirza Sahib. So there is, we don't need to present the hadith. So please, point number one. First, you need to concede, brother, that the primary meaning is not fulfilled. After that, number two, the point number two is, you need to bring those revelations on the subject of 40 years of messiahship, which I am hiding, Adnan Bai is hiding, Please bring all of those references, okay? And inshallah, after we finish this one, we will discuss what you are saying again and again, Samadhi Nahaulan. We will discuss the age, the, this, this prophecy about the 80 years of age. We have a lot of material on this one. We'll discuss that. But please, let's go in a logical order. Again, lastly, I'm saying, please concede that the primary meaning is not fulfilled, number one. And number two, give us those revelations which we are hiding from Mirza Sai, please. Okay, so we have we are already one hour into the stream, and I've seen Brother Muhammad Imtiaz repeating the same question over and over again. Yeah, yeah. For the last one hour, Ahmed, you have not considered whether the apparent meaning of the prophecy has been fulfilled. If it yeah. has not, please tell us so. And if yeah. it has, then you, if there is a secondary meaning to it, like Brother Muhammad Imtiaz say, say this is a secondary meaning. It hasn't been fulfilled, and this is the second remaining. Otherwise, we are just okay. repeating okay. ourselves. I will yeah, bring yeah. in the other Hamadis. We are not going to respond. This is That's your last chance because one hour is more than enough. I think it's my, it's my last right. chance. Okay. So yeah. I, I made, and I, I did not avoid it. I did not digress from the topic. I mentioned from the very get go that this is not a prophecy. You have to explain what a prophecy is. This is not a prophecy. This is the Promised Messiah, Islam's statement 
where he says samanina haulan aw qareeba min dhalik and then he says it appears that the tenure of my mission will extend to 40 years it appears it appears i'm i'm telling you i'm repeating for you so you understand it goes into your brain and it is allah who knows best when we say wallahu alam it is not definite okay so to reply to you in another form i want to say that a prophet can make a mistake in interpreting a prophecy this is not to say this was a mistake because it wasn't even a prophecy first of all he's saying allahu alam but from the quran based on your your criterion right has a nu alayhi salatu wassalam when he was building his 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 folk wa kullama mara alayhi malau min qaumihi sakhiru minhu they laughed at it okay and allah said wa nada nu rabbahu fa qala rabbi inna inna bani min ahli wa inna wadaka alhaq wa anta ahkamu alhakimin oh allah you told me oh allah you told me you will protect my son what did allah say qala ya nu innahu laysa min ahlik innahu amalun ghayru salih oh noa he is surely not of thy family he is indeed a man of unrighteous conduct so what i'm trying to say to you based on the criterion that you're trying to make it always falls back on your face as an ant the point i've answered that i i i haven't digressed from the topic i've said this is not a prophecy this is his statement this is his statement with regards to at the end of which he says did, did he say i will definitely live for for 80 years he didn't say that he did not say that he said it appears and then he says wallahu alam okay now uh, the second point but but the moment imtiaz made that i was saying you are hiding two minutes are over two minutes are over he's waffling two minutes are over okay look over have, to you imtiaz wait wait over, over by, so ahmed you know this is this is what i wanted to avoid you know the the reputation you kept saying it's not a prophecy but the muhammad imtiaz clearly read it in urdu which is the book written by mirza so i don't understand when you say instead of using the term prophecy you're using saying this is his statement well statements of prophets are prophecies yeah Those it's clear are prophets are pro prophecies i didn't say no no no, no, no there's no. a difference i don't, are I don't prophet. think any prophet wait a minute no, 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 not, true, i don't think any prophet says okay i'm now going to make a prophecy and are this is the prophecy all, are all statements of 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 of, of a prophet a prophecy let yes, let sir. brother muhammad imtiaz answer no, no, that no you but made a statement brother hashim i made imtia but he made the same yeah. statement he said he's already said I that before so I let did. let brother muhammad imtiaz answer that yes. go ahead so inshallah uh, this is the last time inshallah i'm just gonna say on this prophecy because then we have to move on we already more than 1 hour into the yeah. stream we are only discussing the first point so brothers inshallah this is summary from my side and please i want listener to understand and to listen this summary inshallah in 2 minutes and then decide that who was hiding and what not okay point number 1 mm -hmm. brother ahmed is again and again from the get going he saying <coughs> it is not a prophecy i want audience to please listen again when a prophet is making a statement and in that statement he is saying something about the future what is it number 1 number 2 in this one it is not that mirza is making a statement only please understand that how important is it is he is saying that according to hadith please think about this he is saying according to hadith masih maud after he will be appointed as masih maud and will he will come second time he will complete 40 years it is not just a statement of mirza sahib himself according to mirza sahib it is a hadith as well okay and if this statement is something about the future everybody knows if a statement coming from a prophet we say something about the future this is exactly what is called prophecy okay and last point is okay. everybody everybody can see here in in this last rebuttal brother ahmed was saying that even the prophets can make mistakes in interpreting the prophecies or the statement now hang on a second we are not going to discuss any prophets we are not going <laughs> to discuss anything we are going to stick with this one actually ahmed has conceded please note the point ahmed has conceded that mirza sahib made the mistake that's why he wanted to bring the other prophets to hide mirza mistake brothers wallahi sometimes the ahmadis they say to us oh why you, we have to be emotional in this case is brother when you are trying to defend your prophet maaz allah maaz allah by throwing all the prophet under the bus is the, is that fair my brother 
people can see people can listen you already concede it but you don't have the courage you don't have the courage to say that the primary meaning was not fulfilled number 1 and number 2 i yeah. challenge you i challenge you you cannot give a secondary meaning to this prophecy which is within the text within the scope of the text my brother you may be thinking i'm just first time here i am reading this topic for years okay mm-hmm. i have in front of me how ahmadiyya has given secondary meaning i wish i wish you would have bring those secondary meaning so people can see that how you take those secondary meaning which have no basis in the text okay my brother i i'm 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 Sorry, ending before, this before before adnan comes in yeah. i just want brother imtiaz to repeat the prophecy once again yeah. for our yeah. audience to make sure yeah. this is not just some nilly willy statement somebody made yeah. it is something yeah. which is with assertion so yeah. just yeah. please repeat it in urdu and also yeah. in english inshallah okay no problem So, my brothers, uh, there are many references for this prophecy. I quoted two of them. One of them I quoted, which is which is the primary quotation for this case, and that is in Ruhani Khazain, Volume Seventeen, Page Number Three Hundred and Eleven. And this book is called in Urdu Tohfa Golardiya. Okay, in Urdu, Mirza Sahib writes, "Masih e Maud, Dawe ke baad, chalis saal zinda rahega." Hadis sirf हदीस से सिर्फ इसी कदर मालूम होता है कि मसीह मऊद अपने दावे के बाद 40 बरस दुनिया में रहेगा मिर्जा साहब इज सेइंग दैट अकॉर्डिंग टू हदीस व्हेन द प्रॉमिस्ड मसाया विल कम एंड व्हेन ही विल मेक हिज क्लेम ऑफ मसायाशिप आफ्टर दैट ही विल लिव इन दिस दुनिया फॉर 40 इयर्स एंड इन दिस स्टेटमेंट मिर्जा साहब इज नॉट ओनली मेकिंग अ स्टेटमेंट ही इज सेइंग इट इज अ हदीस okay that's point number 1 point number 2 is we have references multiple references for example mirza sahib has said in 1905 to 1907 because the book is called burahin volume 5 and this was written between 1905 to 1907 in this book mirza sahib said that my mission has been out there for 25 years and in 1908 mirza sahib died so clearly mirza sahib said that the hadith says that the masih will remain in this dunya for his mission for 40 years and then he himself said that i have completed 25 years in 1907 and then he died next year so he clearly did not fulfill this sign please understand the point this is a sign mirza sahib is quoting i will repeat and this sign is not completed so now the you I only have two options you only have two options option number 1 please maaz allah maaz allah prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and something did not fulfill we cannot believe this the second option is mirza sahib gave this sign sign did not complete so he is not a messiah okay so to summarize what brother intel <coughs> said already that mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani said in 1907 that my mission has been around for 25 years and he himself quote, quoted the hadith <coughs> saying that the promised messiah which he claimed to be himself here from the promised messiah we understand mirza to be claiming himself to be the promised messiah so he's saying the promised messiah after his advent will remain alive for 40 years according to the hadith he quotes the hadith in this support in 1907 he acknowledges that my mission has been going for 25 years and then he dies in 1908 the next year that makes his mission 26 years that means mirza is a liar that means mirza was 14 years short of his own prophecy which he used a hadith for uh, for for support okay for which he used a hadith to support uh, his prophecy so mirza was for 14 years one four 14 years short of the prophecy therefore he was a liar now it doesn't stop there I want to quickly move on because Ahmad is clearly not paying attention and he's not going to concede. He's not going to say uh, that like indeed, 
20 once minutes again, or so. Once again. No problem. <laughs> this is not a debate. This is not a debate. Great Don't courtesy. interject. Great please. courtesy and respect. We, we, well done. Yeah, of course. Of course. Remember the other day on the stream, five of you were speaking for 20, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I was listening patiently, taking notes. Oh, we didn't give Take you two minutes. Now. We but gave you, we gave you 10 minutes to five to 10 minutes to speak. But, 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 but this is not a Be stream. For, well, yeah, that stream, Ahmed, that stream was specifically de dedicated to this Ajis, this Miskeen. You were challenging me by name on Twitter and elsewhere. You were sending out shots at me saying, where Who are you, you, coward? Where Who are you? you? Ahmed, listen. Ahmed, listen. Was it me? Ahmed, listen. Was mute it him. Me? Hashim, mute him, please. Hashim, Stop mute him, please. Line. Is, is getting emotional, is getting emotional. Ahmed, you and your company, five of you were sending shots at me, challenging me, where are you, Adnan Rashid, the coward, where are you? So I was talking to five people and you were talking for nearly 10, 15 minutes uh, each time. And then I was taking notes and responding patiently. So in that light, we should proceed. Now, very quickly, I want to raise a very, very important point. Before you come in, okay, Mithyaz Bhai, go ahead. Uh, I just, just for the sake of the record of the stream, I want to make it very clear. Because Brother Ahmed was giving this impression that maybe there are other revelations on the topic of that Messiah will complete 40 years and we did not quote this. I challenge any Ahmadi brother can come even now. They, we have not hidden any of those. There is no revelation on this topic. These were the only revelations he mentioned that he will complete 40 years. And everybody can see. And 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 by the, and by the way, in all honesty, in all honesty, our topic has completed. Okay, we don't need to even move forward because Mirza Sahib said exactly. if one of my sign, one of my sign, is not proven to be true. I am a liar, and my claim is finished. Okay, now everybody Absolutely. can see. They can watch this last one hour. We have already established that this sign was not fulfilled. And no secondary meaning has ever been given to this sign, which is within the scope of the text. Because you can give any meaning. It has to be within the scope of interpretation. Okay. So uh, I want to move on from this very quickly. And yeah. I want to give uh, a chance to other Ahmadis who may not be as agenda-driven as Ahmad was. So before uh, I do that, I want to put my case systematically in front of the Ahmadi community. They don't know the avalanche we have. They don't know. Okay. Let me present my case very quickly. Okay. Prophecy about his age. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Karyani writes about his own age. Okay. In his book, uh, Duffel Waswas, page 288. He writes, God has commanded that not only the people of this generation should be benefited by the words of my prophecies, but also that the people of future generations should be provided with a great sign, such as you will be 80 years of age, a few years more or few less than that. This is what he says. But hold on a second. There is trickery in the words of this prophecy. For it sets no definite age limit and is open to both ends, like Ahmad has been playing games. In another prophecy, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is more definite about his age. And he goes as follows. The words of the prophecy promise that my age will be between 74 years and 86 years. This is taken from Mirza's book, Burhan al-Ahmadiyya, volume 5, page 97. We're giving references step by step systematically we are giving references so that no ahmadi can claim that we are making these things up okay we're not just a bunch of fools who are going to reject someone who's truthful or we're not going to attack an innocent person of uh lying we're not going to accuse an innocent person of lying we have evidence black and white evidence of his lies and keep following me this is going to be slightly long about three minutes but please follow Paying attention. Pay attention, everyone. Ahmadis and non-Ahmadis, pay attention. So he said, the words of the prophecy promise that my age will be between 74 years and 86 years. From the combination of these two prophecies, it is evident that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad should have died 
within these two limits, 74 and 86. He died, in fact, at the age of 69. Even this claim of Mirza in Burhan al Ahmadiyya was not fulfilled. This is actually a prophecy because he himself uses the word prophecy. And I repeat again, the words of the prophecy promise that my age will be between 74 years and 86. And we know Mirza died at 69. According to most records, including records put down by his own sons and his first Khalifa, Hakim Nuruddin, they testified that Mirza was born in 1839. Okay, Mirza himself gave his age in a court case, as we will see in due course. Okay, so if he was born in 1839 and he died in 1908, that makes him 69 years old. And according to his own prophecy, he said that I will die between 74 years and 86 years. That makes him a liar. This is another gift for the Ahmadi missionaries like Ahmad. Before I proceed, I would like Ahmad to come in and comment comment specifically on this prophecy, which is more specific. Because before that, Ahmad was playing games. Ahmad was saying, oh, he said 80, more or less 80, more or less 80, possibly a bit more or a bit less. But in this prophecy, Mirza was very, very specific. I will die between the age of 74 and 86. Okay? He died at 69. Over to you, Ahmad. Two minutes. Okay. So, Ahmad, this is your last uh, last say, basically. I'm going to bring in another company okay, after you. this. So, okay. please. Because so it's been all, like more than I, one hour, yeah, 20 minutes. Fine. So, I didn't have Nishani Asmani open in front of me. I've, um, while they were speaking for 25 minutes or so, I try, I opened in front of me. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in Urdu, "Yani is roz se jo wo imam mulhim ho kar apne tayi zahir karega." That us that from that day when that person would would present himself as someone who receives revelation, okay, chalis baras tak zindagi karega. Okay. Now the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, received in 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 uh, his his revelation. In about 1860s, and I'm going to give you the exact date here. So, so based on that, he fulfills the criterion that your your men mentioning, because the point that's being men mentioned here in is rose jo wo imam mulhim ho kar apne tayi zahir karega, 40 barak tak zindagi karega. Ab wazir hai ki yaajiz apni umar ke 40 me bars me daawat hak ke liye baal ham khas mamur kiya gaya, aur bashara di gayi ki 80 bars tak ya uske karib kari umar hai. So it's 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 a long reference, but the point is. And I'm, I'm, although this is my last time, I know you want to take other people, specifically and generally with regards to the age of the Promised Messiah, till today in the community there is ikhtilaf on the day the Promised, uh, you know, I mean, there, there there's differences of opinion with regards to research about the Promised Messiah's birthday. And they know that, right? Just as there is ikhtilaf and, and you know, on the birthday of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, as, 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 as well. Okay? So, so this is, you know, and, and there's a whole research where 1835 is mentioned, 1837 is mentioned, and there are numerous other things, uh, you know, other dates are mentioned. But the point that, that I'm trying to make here is, is that the specifically to choose this revelation about which they know that the person's birthday is not even fully known. It wasn't written down. Tells you that there's already ambiguity about his date of birth, okay? And, and to choose that specifically is to confuse the conversation and take, take it away from all of those other prophecies which have been fulfilled to the word, to the word. And this is, this is exactly the case with, you know, uh, the, the opponents of Islam as well. But if you want to go into the detail of, of this specific prophecy, with, uh, you know, you, uh, with, 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 with regards to his date, then there, there, there has to be a proper format, and, and we welcome you, and we can dis discuss that in detail. But the point is, why is it the case, and the question is, that you deliberately choose something and you know that his, his birthday is something that is, 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 it wasn't written down when he was born, right? And you know there are several opinions on that. All right, thank you, Ahmed. Jazakallah um, khair. Uh, we are going to bring in another Qadiani, but Jazakallah uh, khair for your time.
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have been very kind to you today, and we have. Uh, just, uh, uh, just one, st one thing. Before. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. It does he's he's uh, listening. Uh, That's fine. Carry on. Okay. Okay. Basically, I, I just want to inshallah, inshallah, we're not going to let them to muddy the waters. Okay. In this time, he basically tried to drag it back. That instead of mission starting from 1885, he said, "Oh, mission started from 1860, so they can complete the 40 years." Okay, here is a very simple answer, Brother Ahmadis. Please pay attention to this one. In 1892, Mirza Sahib said that today, 10 years of my mission have completed. How you can deal with that one? In 1905 to 7, he said that 25 years of my mission have completed. How to deal with that one? Secondly, remember the usul in Ahmadiyya. Mirza Sahib said that the mulham has the right to interpret his prophecies. Nobody else. We are not going to allow any Ahmadi to give any meaning to Mirza Sahib's prophecy, which Mirza Sahib himself has rejected. We are going to defend Mirza Sahib for you as well, because you can't defend him. Okay. So okay. this, I think yes. we have uh, dealt Ash. quite a long time with this. Let's move on to the next prophecy, <laughs> shall we? When I bring in no, the next wait, person. Wait. Oh, you want to stick yeah, to this? Wait. Uh, yeah, I want to stick to this for a few more minutes and then we're going to move on so that we nail it uh, once and for all so that the Ahmadis uh, are very clear on this, okay? So that they know we're not making this up. Ahmad, before going, acknowledged the confusion Mirza and his immediate followers have caused. Now, the problem is the followers are not the ones who were receiving revelation. Mirza was. Mirza, according to the Ahmadis, he was a prophet, the promised Messiah, who was receiving revelation. The question is, when he was receiving revelation, was he re receiving revelation from the same God? Or were there different gods receiving revel uh, sending revelation to him? My question is, are you listening, Brother Imtiaz, Brother Hashim, yes. and yes, everyone? Yes. yes. My yes. question is, when Mirza was receiving revelation and giving these prophecies and these pieces of news, was he receiving revelation from one God or many gods? Why do I ask this question? You may be thinking that's a very stupid question. Mirza never claimed to, be, uh, to believe in uh, multiple gods. He always said he believes in one God, right? Mirza always said that. But the problem is, here... The point I'm trying to make is that Mirza did not receive revelation because he contradicted himself on his very age multiple times, on his very mission multiple times, giving conflicting information. So Ahmed can try to play these games by saying that there is confusion, there is ikhtalaf, there are people talking about different years, different ages, 1835, 1836, 1830, 1839. Quite not. Let's see what I have here for you. So I'm going to present this to you. So from the combination of these two prophecies, it is evident that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad should have died. Sorry, Brother, within... brother Adnan, uh, I'm just going to quickly pray Maghrib and be back, but continue, inshallah. We're going to continue, inshallah. Thank you so much. Okay. So two prophecies, which two prophecies? In, in one prophecy, he said, I will die at 80. Then the second prophecy is quite specific with the, the numbers. It says between 74 to 80. And by the confession of himself and others, he was born in 1839 and he died at 69. So that shows him to be a liar. His prophecy is false. But then, furthermore, from the combination of these two prophecies, it is evident that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad should have died within these two limits, 74 years and 86 years. He died, in fact, at the age of 69. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad gives the following date of his birth. And I'm quoting Mirza. I was born in 1839 or 1840. Hello, everyone. Are you listening? This is what Mirza said himself. And where is this? In his book, Kitabul Barai. Page 146, he said, I was born in 1839 or 1840. 
in the last days of the Sikh rule. The last days of the Sikh rule, if he's referring to the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh died in the year 1839. So Mirza is saying that I was born in 1839 or 1840. By that virtue, by his own confession, Mirza was 69 years of age when he died in 1908. And then the conclusion is that his own prophecy is proven to be false, where he said, I will die between 74 to 86, between the age of 74 and 86. He's a liar. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, by his own confession, brothers and sisters, is a liar. How more simple you want it to be? How? So we cannot put it more simply, my brothers and sisters. I continue. I want to continue so that you know. Adnan, can I, Adnan, can I just uh, say a few things? Please. Please. Oh, please. Okay, Go okay. ahead. Okay, okay, brothers and sisters, please pay attention to this one. When wait, wait, I was... Wait, wait. Yeah. Brother Imtiaz, I, I actually don't want to break the sequence. I want to continue with this, building this case, so that everyone Adhan follows me. Adhan, just three you, minutes. Yeah. Adhan, just three yeah. minutes, inshallah. Okay. Then you can shall so Three on. minutes will break the sequence. Three minutes will break the sequence. We'll continue. Make it quick, inshallah. Go ahead. Adnan, okay. I want the Ahmadis especially to please pay attention. When we were discussing with the previously Ahmadi brother about the 40 years of mission, he was saying again and again, why don't you discuss the Samani Nahawla, Samani Nahawla, the 80 years, 80 years. Now look at this one. Please pay attention. You can check the stream again. As soon as we started to discuss the 80 years prophecy, what did he say? He said, oh, because the date of birth of Mirza Sahib is under research and we cannot say something. And why did you say this before? Number one. Number two, some people may be thinking because he said this that we don't know about the age of Prophet Muhammad as well. The point is this Mirza Sahib about this prophecy. Please pay attention carefully. We have the reference. Mirza Sahib said that this prophecy of my age is going to be a sign for the future generations so they can check the validity of my claim. And then he made the claim that I will live 80 years or a bit more or a bit less. And then sometimes he was adding one or two years. Sometimes he was saying six years. Now, the point is finally is this. Here is my simple challenge to all Ahmadis. Please pay attention. My challenge because this is a technical topic. We don't want to waste people's time. Here's my challenge. I invite you to come and debate with me and prove to me that how can you say on your website that Mirza's date of birth was from 1832 to 1835? How can you say this? Mirza Sahib, in the court of law, under oath, please pay attention, in the court of law, under oath, he said that I was born in 1839 to 1840, which was the last period of the Sikh Raj. Okay. If Mirza Sahib, your prophet, please listen carefully, your prophet is saying in the court of law, under oath, that I was born in 1839 to 1840, how can you not accept his claim? At last point on this one, is this is the last inshallah, I promise, last inshallah. Adnan, my look, look, look at this one. Look at this one. Mirza Sahib is receiving revelation for more than 23 years. Okay? And he is telling us that I'm going to give you a sign regarding my age. Now, obviously, we know the date of uh, date of death of Mirza Sahib. How come in those 23 years, Mirza Sahib did not ask Allah, the, oh Allah, what is my date of birth? Please listen carefully because this was a sign. And lastly, I challenge you, brothers, I will produce 10 evidence, 10 pieces of evidence that it is conclusively that Mirza was born between 1839 to 1840, which means this sign has been disproved. The second sign has been disproved. So Mirza was a liar. Yeah, we don't we don't need anything more, Brother Imtiaz, when Mirza himself is saying yeah. uh, on oath, okay, yeah. that I was born in 1839 and Mirza is a prophet of God to the Ahmadi community. Either he was a liar, he was lying about his age, 
or the Ahmadi community doesn't think he's a prophet. Which one is it? Which one is it? Because if he's a prophet of God, he could not have lied about his age. Why is he lying? So I'll continue. The death of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad occurred on May 27, 1908. Therefore, at the time of his death, he was only 69 years old and not 74. Even continuing by, uh, even counting by lunar years, the age of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad at that time of his death was 72, not 74. Indeed, he confirms once more that he was born in either 1839 or 1840. In 1857, I was only 16 or 17 years of age. Again, Mirza is saying again, and the book is Kitab al Barait, again, page 146. He says, in 1857, I was only 16 or 17 years of age. Again, confirming his date of birth, either 1839 or 1840, right? 17 or 16 in 1857 makes him either, either he was born in 1839 or 1840. By that virtue, his prophecy was unfulfilled or false because he himself categorically said, I will die between the age of 74 and 86. He's a liar. Clearly by his own confession, he's a liar. We continue. The followers of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad also agree that he was born in 1839, by the way. Hakim Nuruddin, the first caliph of the Qadianis or Ahmadis, writes, Hazrat Masih Mawood was born in 1839. Okay. And where does he write this? Akhbar e Payam e Sulh. Akhbar Pagam e Sulh. July 21, 1923. This is when he wrote this. Okay. In this uh, source. Akhbar Pagam e Sulh. July 21, 1923. It is there where Hakim Nuruddin states. Hazrat Masih Mawood, i.e. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, was born in 1839. The court testimony of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, which Brother Intiaz mentioned earlier, further confirms this date of birth. At this time, in 94, I am only 65 years of age. And then again, this is taken from his court testimony. He testified to this upon oath in the court okay and this was done in uh the court of extra assistant commissioner lala motiram mehta gurdaspur july 6 1904 we have the reference for every single thing we are putting to you brothers and sisters this is our love our compassion our mercy for the ahmadi community we want you to recognize this liar we want you to understand that you believe in a liar you cannot dismiss all of this. You can't just say, oh, no, no, there may be an interpretation. There may be a metaphor. There may be another meaning. No, he's categorical. He said that I will die between the age of 74 and 86. And repeatedly he confirmed that he was basically 69 when he died. So in the court, he said at this time in 1904, I am only 65 years of age. And he died four years later, which makes him 68, which makes him, uh, sorry, 69, which makes him 69, as we have been saying. Again, on May 16, 1901, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad gave the following testimony in the district court of Gurdaspur. God be my witness. Are you listening, Ahmadis? This is what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad said in the court of Gurdaspur in Punjab. He said, these are his words, I'm quoting. God be my witness that I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age. And this was said in 1901. In 1901. So I am only 60 years of age. So he died. Seven years later. Okay, so that makes him again 67 years of age. 
So clearly, he himself was not clear as to what exactly his age was because he is now saying that God, God be my witness that I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age. In 1901, he said this. However, this second testimony is inaccurate. At that time, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad had to be 62 years of age and not 60. So when he said in this court of Gurdaspur, upon oath again, that God is my witness, I'm 60 years old, Mirza was not speaking correctly because his other testimonies contradict this as we have already put, put it to you. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad got confused about his age. He began contradicting his own testimonies and statements hoping that he will be able to compensate for his prophecy and the confused state of his mind. Mirza was extremely confused, often contradicting himself on his own age. Okay. So now, continue. We'll continue. Not my, can I just uh, say a couple of things here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, before you say, I'm just yeah. going to quickly do this, and then you can come back in, inshallah. Yeah, no worries. No worries. In several different writings, he furnishes different statements about his age. So, which one is it? And is Mirza telling the truth when he's talking like this? He writes, at this time, in 1896, I am 64 years of age. This he wrote in Izalat al Oham, page 3. Then he states in another place, at this time, in 1903, I am 70 years of age, which is, again, confusing. This is in Hakikat al-Wahi, page 71. Then he goes on to say, at this time, in 1904, I am 65 years of age. And this he said in, again, the court testimony, which has been mentioned earlier. Okay, then it goes on. Now in 1905, I am 70 years of age. Okay, so in the court in 1904, actually in 1903, he says, I'm 70 years of age. In 1904, in the court, he says, I'm 65 years of age. In the, in the year 1905, the very next year, he says, I'm 70 years of age. What James is Mirza playing? Has he lost his mind? Are these his writings? Or he's crazy? Or he's a liar? Which one is it? In either one of these cases, he cannot be a prophet. He cannot be a prophet. Then he goes on to say, at this time in 1907, I am 68 years of age. Okay, and this he said in his book, Hakikat al Wahi, page 201. So, brothers and sisters, we have six options, actually, five options in front of us. I will repeat so that you are not confused. In 19, sorry, in 1896, Mirza said, I'm 64 years of age. In 1903, he said, I'm 70 years of age. In 94, in 1904, he said, I'm 65 years of age. In 1905, he said, I'm 70 years of age. In 1907, he said, I'm 68 years of age. What the hell is going on? And these are all his testimonies, his writings. We're not making this up. Imtiaz Bhai, are we making this up? No, no. Okay. We, all, I have, we have all references. I have the quote and the reference to every single one of his statements. So what games is Mirza playing with his age and why? Now, putting these statements in another form, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad presented his age as follows, as I mentioned. As I mentioned earlier, 1896-64, 1903-70. 1904-65, again, 1907-68. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so we are all confused. Then Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died on May 2, 1908. Thus, at the time of his death, he did not exceed 69 years of age. He had prophesied about his age in these words. You will be 80 years of age approximately or a few years more. And further, God has told me that you will be 80 years of age or little over. This is another prophecy of his in a different place where he said this. 
Okay, this is said in Mawahibul Rahman, page 21. In view of all these facts, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad has passed judgment on himself by saying, if you can prove that out of 100 prophecies, that is one prophecy which is false, I will accept that I am a liar. So, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, having considered this case, having looked at this evidence, quotes from his book, first he claims he was born in 1839 or 1840, and he repeatedly confirmed that. And then he died at 69. And then he is repeatedly changing his age. One year he's saying he's 65. The next year he's saying he's 70. Then the next year he's saying he's 68. What games is Mirza playing? In his own writings. Is this a prophet of God? Or is this someone confused? Or is this a liar? Or is this someone crazy? In either one of these cases, he cannot be a prophet. He cannot be Masih Maud. He cannot be the promised Messiah. I rest my case. Over to you, Mtiaz Bhai, and then we can let someone in to comment inshallah. on this very quickly. Okay. Inshallah. So, inshallah, very quickly, inshallah, I will not take a lot of time. Brothers and sisters, one thing is very important. Some people might be thinking that what is the significance of discussing all of this age and or etc. Please let me say it one more time in very clear terms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by us by, by by through this prophecy allah has given all the people to come attest that was he a liar or was he a truthful person because he was say he's a prophet okay and when a prophet is saying that allah has told me that i am going to give a sign for the future people to check the truthfulness of your claim number one problem here is Alhamdulillah, we all believe that Allah knows the date of birth of Mirza Sahib. I believe so. Shall we all believe this? Okay. How come the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving through Mirza a sign to the future people and Allah is not telling him his date of birth? Please think about this. Okay. Because without knowing his date of birth, there is no way for you that is he lived 74 to 86 or not. Because the only way you can know, you need to know his date of birth. How come Allah wants to give us a sign and Allah doesn't want to tell us his date of birth? Please think about this, okay? And second, very important point is this. Mirza Sahib was born from 1839 to 1840. What is the evidence? There are three types of evidences. Number one, I will produce if somebody wants. Ilham of Mirza, revelation of Mirza, that he was born from 1839 to 1840. Number two, as Abnan Bai said, a statement of a prophet under oath in the court of law that he was born 1839 to 1840. And number three, the first Khalifa, according to Ahmadis, Khalifa is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa Allah guides the people to choose the Khalifa. This guided Khalifa, the first Caliph has said that Mirza Sahib was born in 1839. Okay. And after that, I will, if somebody will try to come on this team, I will give you evidence that actually there is employed and circumstantial evidence that Mirza actually knew his date of birth. But he was always trying to give different contradictory statements. Why? To muddy the waters. Okay, if somebody wants, I can give you the evidence. So please... Ahmadi, brothers and sisters, Allah has given you a sign. Allah has given you a sign to know if he was a truthful or a liar. Allah gave you the sign. Now, it is your choice. If you want to take Allah's sign and to leave this liar, or if you want to reject Allah's sign and still you want to stick with the liar, it's your choice. Okay, so I'm going to bring in Raziullah here. Uh, Raziullah, you're, you're live now, so if you want to unmute. Yes, good afternoon. So just on this topic, a lot has been said, but no salam today, Razullah. What's wrong? Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so uh, quickly, just because hey, I know he said it incorrectly. It's wassalamu alaikum. Yes, yes. Okay. No, no, no you're okay. so saying it. Say, say it again, please. Wassalamu alaikum. 
and you okay. people are not ala, brother do we want to get into your <laughs> arabic ears with the holy quran which is far worse this, this, this is quran brother, by the way you twist the quran you twist the quran all the time hatta Can where you... did hatta come from in chapter let me just uh, speak now please okay do not okay, count that apart my two I'm, minutes because I'm... You've said a lot. There's a lot to say. Before I get into this allegation, I just want to ask uh, Brother Hashim, last time I requested you that in the description, you should be truthful. You wrote reincarnation. Ahmadis believe in reincarnation. I asked you to remove it. You kept it there. And you also kept in the lie that God forbid. We when did you ask me? You can watch the last stream. That's how I entered. I said in the description, you have written that Hazrat Ahmed al has claimed to be a reincarnation. This is a lie, okay, brother. So Why are you spreading falsehood? Please I, change I did not, not then I'll start my that's, two that's no issue. I did not okay, actually Jizakum write the Allah. description. Yeah. We got uh, mods who actually do that. Okay, but so it's no problem. Lie. We can we can remove that. Right okay, but, uh, yeah, you let's carry on. Right Come on, let's let's try okay, to make okay, this so friendly. Yeah. So make it productive, inshallah. Let me start now, please. Okay. So you fix that. There's another lie that he claimed to be God as well. Please fix that as well. Anyhow, regarding Adnan Rashid and this brother Muhammad, I don't know much about him, but my challenge, I repeat that, dumb, they cannot discuss with me from Quran and a Hadith. I hope you have the courage. Open challenge. We can do it later because obviously Adnan will never let Quran be discussed. It's his worst nightmare. Now you mentioned the prophecy of age. Okay, This is the issue. You people take one one verse of the Holy Quran and you you know how kuffar take one verse of the Holy Quran they misinterpret and don't look at other verses this is what you do with the writings of the promised Messiah number one Hazrat Ahmad in his own books in uh, 1905 in Brahim volume 5 he clearly explained that only Allah knows my real age but according to the knowledge I have I am around 70 years of age but this isn't even a debate topic brothers this is not even in the debate topic because Adnan Rashid Saib's father, Muhammad Hussein Batalvi, and his other spiritual father, Sanaula Amritsari, have accepted that this Peshkoi, this prophecy was fulfilled. So were you no more than them 100 years later? Number one. Number two, you said Khalifa Awal radiallahu anhu mentioned 1839 but you have to remember till that day the research was not done the research was done in the lives of other khulafai and there's ijma that he was born in 1835 1835 so there's not research going on number three Adnan Rashid read the reference of Tawfai Golavia open it right now and read the whole paragraph I'm not going to let you run away from this the Tawfai Golavia reference you read that even if you're already running Adnan Yes, I'm running. I go I'm running, I'm running, I'm you have to pull that I, out right now and read it in I, front of everyone because you I lied. Enjoy, you deceived, brother, running. like the Jews. Okay. And Muhammad okay. Imtiaz lied as well about Nishani Asmi. Nishani Asmani, I'll refute him on that. And Adnan Rashid mentioned every book's name wrong. Brother, do you read these books or just go on Google and find allegations? Open Tofai Golavia right now. Open that reference and read it out for everyone. Okay. okay. Okay, Open it. one second. Okay, thank you. So I, I have a question for you very quickly. So yeah. let's make it, uh, Razi, you came very charged and very passionate and very yeah, emotional. For, the, for which, Allah's which, true which, faith. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I understand. Yeah. I understand why you feel like that. I completely understand. Look, I am not uh, uh, a, a subhuman species or I'm not an alien. I am a human being. I understand human emotions. I know why you feel emotional about this. Okay. So don't think that we have no sympathy for you. We do. What would, what would what would what we would like to do today is what we did the other day on your stream, have conversations rather than uh, shouting matches and uh, uh, cutting each other. So I have a very quick question and try to answer it as soon as possible, yeah. uh, as quick as possible, as directly as possible. When Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani said, "God be my witness that I speak the truth," yes. I am only sixty years of age. This he said in 1901, 1901, yeah. okay. Was Mirza lying or was he speaking the truth? Which one is it? Because he claims he was speaking the truth. I and mean, we have the reference. Over to okay. you, answer. 
So really important question, Jazakallah. So now we are moving somewhere. You have to remember that Hazrat Ahmad was a true prophet of Allah. He never lied. But if you look, the statements you mentioned answer the allegation. You mentioned in this year, you mentioned this year, in this year, you mentioned he's this age. He himself explains in Brahim 5 that Allah knows my true age. I'm around 70. It was always estimation. This is how he explained it and this is how all Ahmadis understand it. Now read the page of Tawfai Golaviyah. Why are you afraid? Open it right now, please. Read that page. Okay. Okay. We will. We will. Wait. No, right my now. Question. Right now. My, you yes, have to yes, read it yes, because it will Razi, expose Razi, your Razi, falsehood. Yeah, yes. Yes. Wait, because wait, it wait, exposes your scholars as well. Razi, how scared Razi, they were of the Messiah. Razi, all of his prophecies were alhamdulillah fulfilled. And one sec, one point, Hashem, I'm sorry. Razi, Razi. You know, one sec, let me just say one statement, then I'll listen to you patiently. Razi, Razi, what Muhammad, happened to you today? Just one Razi, statement, on. Adnan. Let me, please, just Razi, one statement. Let me make the one point, Adnan. Okay, Razi, make the quick statement. Okay, so. And, and by the way, if you ask someone to read something, I think because you're making the point, so you yeah. should bring that whatever reference it is, and you quote it. Okay. Why are you asking okay, others to read it? Fine, you bring it. it. And then we'll, we, we will I'll reflect on it, inshallah. So, I just want to ask Brother Muhammad one point. If a prophet says something and then something else happens, right? Not what he thought and meant. Is he a liar or no? Just say yes or no. I'm not asking for details. Wait. And then I read the page. Okay, I just say right, you... yes or no. And wait, then I'm wait, going wait, to read wait, wait. 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 Before you answer that question, this is... Uh, Digression. This is what you call it. How is it. this digression? Uh, How? Because I'll you tell people you, are I'll, I'll, I'll soon. Okay. Razi, I'm going to request again. And I will remind you again. Look how beautiful, how nice, and how polite you were on your stream. When I came on your stream, I praised you for your politeness, for your generosity, for your kindness. And today, you're behaving very differently. And I even mentioned in your stream that let's see if we can do this on our stream. And clearly it's not happening. Okay. So, Razi, let's make it a conversation so that our audiences okay. can benefit. Right. Okay? okay. So, before so, you throw another question, which we will address, yes. which we will address yes. respectfully, can you now tell me when Mirza said, God, God be my witness on oath? Yes. This is oath. This yes. is an oath. God yes. be my witness that I speak the yes. truth. Yes. I am only 60 years of age. Okay. And he said this in 1901. Where he said this? The district court of Gurdaspur. This is recorded history. This yeah. cannot be denied. He said, okay. God be my witness. Was Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani lying? Or was he speaking the truth? He was speaking the truth because everywhere he mentions his date of birth, it's estimation. And in this around that time as well, we find other years as well. Never did he claim this is based on Wahi and Ilham. Now read the page of Tofai Golar Viyadnan. I'm not letting you run today. Today you cannot run. Please open <laughs> Tofai Golar Via. Or Hashim, if you want to read it. Guys, Why didn't you read not, it, Razi? If you if you no, no, if you no, really no, want, I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not going to let this happen. Yeah, yeah. Gonna yeah. Gonna yeah. Gonna 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 this happen. Tell me which page. He him. won't do it. He knows he lied. He's he's like the Jews. Hashim, Hashim. If there's by wait, if there's by wait, if there's by wait, follow my lead. Wait. Here again, I will remind Razi Allah, brothers and sisters, please go and watch my appearance on the Qadiani live stream the other day, about two or three days ago, and we had a very beautiful conversation. Five Qadianis there, okay, talking uh, on top of me, and I was responding, responding to them very politely. No interruptions from Razi, no interruptions from Ahmed, and no interruptions from uh, Tahir, the host, and no interruptions from two uh, Arab Qadianis. Today, Razi, for some reason, seems to be very charged, and he's not answering straight questions. He said, uh, "He said Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani spoke the truth." I asked him this question: that when Mirza said, "God be my witness that I speak the truth," I am only sixty years of age. Only qualifies the precise nature of the number he's mentioning. Only. Can you do only. The reference, only. By the way? Wait, 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 Razulullah. Razullah, wait. This is at the district court of Gurdaspur. The reference is taken from uh, Manzuri Lahi publication at Qadian, 1922. Okay. 
page 241. Okay, that's the reference. Okay, here Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani is saying, God be my witness that I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age. Razi responded, he is a prophet. He speaks the truth and he spoke the truth. And if he spoke the truth, he's 60 years in 1901. That means in 1908, he is at least 67. 67. That means he's a liar because he himself gave specific numbers that I will die between 74 and 86. So by Razi's own confession, can I answer is, them? His so-called prophet is the liar. And Razi keeps interrupting me because this is what these Ahmadi missionaries do. On their appeals or their screams, they are very calm, very compassionate, very generous, very polite. But when they come and talk to us on our streams, this is what they do. So Razi, I will request again, behave exactly how you are behaving in your stream. Please. So now, Okay, By Razi's own confession, Mirza Varam Ahmad Qadiani is a liar. And if one of his prophecies proves to be a lie, then he himself said, I am a liar. Now over to you, Mdiaz Bay, and then we'll go to Razi. Over to you. Can I answer first? Yeah, or? after yeah. Razi, yeah. let, let Brother Mdiaz make a point because he's been waiting for a while now. Okay. Go ahead. So, Hashem uh, inshallah, after this one, I have to pray, inshallah, Fajr, inshallah, yeah, yeah, sure. then I will leave. Okay, Brother, inshallah, uh, very quickly, Inshallah, now I will show the audience that how, alhamdulillah, we answer the questions directly. Razi asked me a question that is it possible in a, as a usul, as a principle, if, if a prophet says something and that thing does not happen. Razi, is, is your question right? So my question was, is it possible for a prophet to prophesy something from Allah the Almighty? And mm -hmm. then what he interpreted as does not occur. Okay. Okay. No problem. So now people listen very carefully. There's a usul called tahaddi. Tahaddi means that when a prophet throws a challenge and he says that I'm going to say this thing and this thing is going to be the test and criterion to check the truthfulness of my claim. This is called tahaddi. Okay, Razi, answer, answer to your question is, it can never happen that a prophet says something as the Haddi, as the Haddi, as Mirza Sahib said that this is going to be a sign to check the truthfulness of my claim for the future generation. It is called the Haddi. So my answer is, once a prophet gives a Haddi a challenge as a criterion to check the truthfulness of his claim, it will always happen as the prophet will say. That is now number one. Okay. I think that's number enough. Two. Now I should no, be able no, no, to no, answer. No, no. I am how done. will I answer I everything done. in two minutes? Done. Done. We, will, we, will, we will give you a chance. Razi, okay. Razi, 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 I am not done. Razi, 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 Razi. Okay. So Razi, Alhamdulillah, Razi. people can see. People can see. We gave the direct answer. That is number one. Number two. If prophet with his ijtihad, if he if prophet through his ijtihad, he says something. Okay, there may be a possibility of error. However, however, in the case of Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never leaves a Prophet on error. That is the point here. Uh, any other mujtahid can make a mistake and he can stay on the mistake. In the case of Prophet, if a Prophet makes an error, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cracks the Prophet. Okay, Allah never leaves a Prophet on the mistake. Number three, Mirza Sahib said, that Allah will not leave me on mistake even for a brief moment. Now, my question is, according to these last two points, if Mirza Sahib made a ijtihadi error, a, 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 a mistake of jurisprudence, okay, when Allah corrected him, my question is this, okay, number two, if Allah did not correct Mirza, and, and for how long? This prophecy was in the, uh, in the public for more than two decades. And Mirza was making statements in the public under oath for more than two decades. It means that Mirza was making a mistake. And Mirza says that Allah will not leave me on mistake. Number one. Number two, Mirza was a prophet. If a prophet makes a mistake, Allah must correct him. 
answer the question. Okay, okay. Before he answers, before he answers, very quickly, just to clarify for the audience, what our brother Imtiaz said is that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, in his own writings, said that Allah will not leave me upon error even for a moment. Correct? Allah will not leave me upon error even for a moment. If Mirza is right, then why is he making errors when he's saying or when he's talking about his age? And why did Allah leave him upon error for 20 years? He said not even a moment. 20 years Mirza is upon error. And he's upon error about something that belongs to the Tahaddi category. As Brother Imtiaz highlighted quite beautifully, that Tahaddi is a challenge which comes directly from Allah. When a Nabi, when a Prophet makes a challenge, that challenge cannot be broken. That challenge cannot be false. Because that challenge, if it's falsified, then Allah is falsified. Allah takes full responsibility of a challenge put out by Nabi, and Nabi himself does not have the authority to put out a challenge if Allah has not revealed that challenge to him because the Nabi speaks from Wahi. So Mirza made a challenge. Mirza was in error for more than 20 years, and Mirza said Allah will not leave him upon error for even a moment. Mirza was a liar. Therefore, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani was lying. Therefore, over to you, Razi. Okay, so Two firstly, no, see, this is unjust. Hashim Bay, look at this. They spoke for 20 minutes. No, uh, Razi, if you, so if you listen, if you lis listen from yeah. the starting, we said that this is a QA. This yeah. is our platform. We are giving the People, the guests who come in, two minutes. We never said it's two minutes for us. And this is not about, about being unjust. This is something we said from the very beginning. Adnan made this very clear. So just to emphasize, this is okay. not unjust if we have already okay, made so it clear also, from the start. Yeah. Okay. So uh, one second. I'm just going to put a timer on so I don't get yeah, cut sure. off. Adnan, but you won't cut me off, right? While I'm speaking or will you? I don't think anybody cut you off. You're the one doing the cutting okay. off, you and Ahmed. Okay. So, so please, so I'll start practice now. what you guys preach. So I'll go start on. one sec. I'll restart. Uh, yeah, go on. Stop, stop. Okay, so first thing is that Nan Rashid lied that Hazrat Ahmed al was not corrected by Allah in 1905. Allah told him that you have three sips of water left. Allah made it clear that there are three years left to his life. In Hakikatul Wahi, Hazrat Ahmed al explains that I'm around 70 years of age right now. So you lied and said that he always said he's 60 or something like that. He al always explained that his age, it's always... Uh, uh, estimation. He will, he said in Hakikatul Wahi that at this moment I am uh, the when I challenged Dawi I was the age of seventy. Number one. Number two. Muhammad Imtiaz Adnan Rashid Hashim. You mentioned the asul. If something is regarding the challenge of the truth of Prophet, he will never misinterpret it. If I show you an example from Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right now, are you three ready to leave Islam? Yes or no, Hashim? Will you leave Islam? Adnan, Look, will you leave Islam? Muhammad just, this is your two minutes, so please. So, so I'll mention you're getting two minutes, minutes, not more I'll than that. So please complete your point. Answer the question. Yes, because so you're doing the same thing yeah, Ahmed is so doing. You're finish, waffling. Let me finish. You're cutting me up. When you're getting an answer, you're going to always call it waffling, right? The point no, is. No, you're asking a question. You're not okay, answering. So, so Muhammad Imtiaz has to unfortunately reread his Shahada because he lied against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hazrat Nuh alayhi Hazrat Nuh alayhi prophesied that his family will be saved. And he gave this challenge to the Kuffar. When he was making the boat, he told them that we will see who the punishment comes upon. That was the Hadi. Number two, so, uh, Sula Hudabiya vision. Nabi Sassim, that yeah, was the Hadi as well. And the um, Sahaba had to return. They couldn't do Umrah. Then there's a Hadith of Sahih Muslim where Nabi Sassim said, the wife with the longest hand will die first and the wife who di died was not the actual one who had the longest hand. Now you're putting your hands up. You mocked two prophets, Hazrat Yus al-Islam, Atahu Jibreel al-Islam, and he told him, Andir hum anna al-Azab kad hadara hum, that a Azab is about to overcome them. That was the Haddi. It was now fulfilled as he said, 
all three of you have just mocked Yunus, mocked Nuh alayhi salam and Hazrat Muhammad salam, and you people have left the fold of Islam according to your own usul and you lied against other prophets as well who made prophets and misinterpreted them although they were tahadi. Hazrat Ahmad alayhi salam did not misinterpret this revelation, this uh, prophecy of 80 years. He never said Allah told me I'm 80 in Brahim. He said, I'm around 70 years of age. And he also explained, your own ulama, Sanaullah, but Talbi wrote, he fulfilled this prophecy. Yet you people are here 100 years later, crying about a prophecy your spiritual fathers accepted. But Talbi also called the non-Rashid's forefathers sinners. Maybe that's why he wants to disown him today. Your own ulama accept it's fulfilled. How dare you raise an allegation on a prophecy your ulama say is fulfilled. Hazrat Ahmad Asam always gave references of approximation. In 1905, he said three cups of water are left. That referred to the three years. He was corrected and he fulfilled the age prophecy according to us. Okay, your, your two minutes are up and you're repeating exactly yourself anyway. Right. Okay, uh, Muhammad Bai, MTS Bai, go on. Okay, so inshallah, first of all, uh, I think uh, Razi need to understand the question first, okay? The haddi is called when a prophet gives a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that look, if this thing will not happen, then I am not a true prophet. Okay. Now I I want Razi to produce for me that, for example, he gave example of many prophets. Let's pick one of them. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Razi just Salah. quoted. He said that they went for Hudaybiya. Okay. And they did not perform the Umrah. He gave this as one example. Now, my question to Razi is, produce to me the report where our Nabi Sallallahu has said that people, listen, I am going to go to perform Umrah this year. And if I don't perform Umrah this year, I am not a true prophet. Okay, bring the report. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so this shows yes. you accepted that you're a liar. Number one. Where is, listen, listen, don't put your hands up now. Please listen, I listen carefully. You gave a definition for Haddi that they have to say that if this is from God and it doesn't happen, then I'm alive. Prove this definition from the Quran. Read the ayat of Surah nu uh, regarding Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Surah Hud and Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam. Your own ulama, including Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, explained that Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam challenged them that I am prophesying you will be destroyed. And he left them, brother. He even left and said, Lan arjia ila qawmi kazaban. I will never return to my people as a liar. Were they punished? Yes or no? Just answer yes or no. You know they were because the Quran says, Kashafna anhum adab. So according to you, Yunus alayhi salam, Nabi alayhi salam, and Nuh alayhi salam were liars. You were just using the shoulder of Hazrat Masima to reject Nabi Sallam. Sula Hudaybi as well. You asked about that. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Sula Hudaybi. You, make, you make said one where, point. You, make one point. Last make point. One point. Regarding Sula Hudaybi, you said uh, where did Nabi Sallam say that if I am not true, if I am true, then we will definitely go this year. This was not a claim. Did the Sahaba not go with the Surah Sallam, going with the thought that they would go this year? Did Nabi Sallam not think he would go that year? Is that not what the Sahaba thought? It, did Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu not say, I never doubted Islam till this day, and then he was corrected? So don't try these games. Dear. The definition of Hadi is nowhere in Quran Hadith. You have made these usul in your kitchen, brother. They're nowhere from Quran Hadith. You done now, brother? Okay. Yes, yes, inshallah, yes. deal with them one by one. Okay, number one, Razi said that Yunus alayhi salam, he said that the punishment will come on the people and did not come. Razi, please pay attention, okay? Allah has told in the Quran about this principle that Allah says, Illa Oma Yunus. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has declared istasna, an exception for only one nation, and that was the nation of Yunus alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given my answer already in the Quran. So you cannot quote an exception because when you are discussing, you cannot quote istasna in order to prove the regularities. That is one answer. Second answer is about Sul Hadibiyah. My brother Razi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned this thing. Allah calls this journey of Hudaybiyah and the pact of Hudaybiyah Fatha Mubina. Brother, please pay attention. Allah is calling it Fatha Mubina. And are you trying to say that this, this was a failed prophecy? Please think about this. Okay. And everybody who knows the Seerah, they know that if this Hajj or Umrah would have been performed in this year, 
then all the rest of the things they would not have come the way they came and that's the reason Allah called this Fatham Mubina my brother please listen Allah is calling something Fatham Mubina okay and you call it as a failed prophecy please think about this and last point about the prophecy of Nuh alayhi salam my question to you is Nuh alayhi salam announced a punishment did punishment come or not my question to you is this now listen the usul of mirza Can i answer now no, 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 let me answer no, no, because no, no. you lied so wait, many wait, times wait, wait, you're about to wait, be fit wait uh, mirza, 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 <laughs> sahib, mirza sahib has set a usul he said that in the in the case of prophecy you need to deal the nafse pishin goi which means the subject matter of the prophecy and then Mirza Sahib says I am not accepting it I don't believe in Mirza but you believe in him Mirza said that the timings are not important what's important is the subject matter now in the case of Hudaybiyah apply the same principle okay Sahaba did perform the Umrah number one they went next year and Mirza Sahib says that the subject matter is important it is not the timing now, I don't accept this one but you believe in Mirza Sahib and lastly Please, you need to tell me this point. Allah is calling this journey of first year towards Hudaybiyah. Allah is calling it Fatham Mubina. Are you calling it a failed prophecy? This is my question. Jazakumullah. Okay. So you have one second last to Brother, mute, it's mute, us two now. Mute. You're one relevant right now, brother. Okay, one, second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Okay, we're going to keep it as civil as possible. Again, I would, I would like to remind you so that people can benefit from our conversation. We don't have these conversations every day, and this is a golden opportunity to get to our people, people who listen and follow. So all three examples you gave are irrelevant to what Mirza is doing to himself and to his prophecies. So your attempt to bring the Quran and Hadith in doesn't support you as Brother Imtiaz has clearly highlighted that you are the one always insisting Quran and Hadith, Quran and Hadith, and they don't support you. In fact, the Quran and Hadith are directly against you and your claim to prophethood about Mirza. Okay, so this is very, very clear. Okay, okay Mirza, cool. Mirza, wait, 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 Mirza gave challenges. Mirza gave challenges and claimed that if these challenges are not fulfilled, and he gave, gave specific details. He gave specific details. What the subject matter is. The subject matter is the detail. The limit he himself puts on his prophecies, on his prophecies, right? He said, I will die between the age of 74 and 86. Then he says, Allah is my witness that I am speaking the truth. I am 60 years old in 1901. That makes him 67 upon his death. That means Mirza, by his own confession, the issue of subject matter, he's a liar. Because the subject matter of his prophecy was what? And this was a nishan. This was supposed to be a sign from Allah in Mirza that I will die at this age, 80. First he said 80, give and take, more or less, somewhat, give and take. Then he gave specific timing, specific years, 74 and 86. And he dies at 69. Uh, and he did not reach the age of 70 by... Uh, the confession of his own words and his immediate follower, the Khalifa, uh, Hakim Nuruddin. <laughs> so all of this shows us that Mirza was a liar and your attempts to use the prophecies and the examples of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu do not work. You cannot protect a liar. You cannot defend a liar by using these examples. Over to you. Two minutes. That's First, Brother Muhammad Imtiaz just lied to everyone. He lied regarding the Quran and did kufr by doing so. He said that Yunus Alaihissalam regarding him, Allah says that it's only his qom. Allah says because of their faith, that was the only qom that did this. But your ulama exposed you. Your spiritual father 
Ibn Timiyah, who Adan Rashid believes is in the hell of fire, says, وَكُلُّ وَعِيدٍ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ مَشْرُوتِ Your other ulama explain that every wa'id prophecy is based on off of if the person repents, Allah removes the punishment. Read Surah Al-Maidah, the story of Musa Al-Asam and the people during his time. So do not lie against the Qur'an in your own ulama. Your scholars have ijma on this, that every prophecy that has to do with wa'id you said it was only Yunus alayhi Why did you lie? Fear Allah, brother. Number one. Number two, you lied regarding Hazrat Nu alayhi that it was not the Hadi. Read the ayat, brother. He's challenging the people that let us see who the punishment comes upon. He told them, my family will be protected. Did his son drown or not? So you mock Yunus alayhi as well. Regarding uh, uh, Sula Hudaybiyah, we believe it's Fatih Mubi, no doubt. But you lied against the Sula system with your usul and put him in the uh, category of false prophets as well, and you ignore the long hand prophecy regarding Adnan Rashid. You have to remember as a Tahmid Asam in Tofa Gorabia explains he was born on a Friday 14th lunar calendar in Zikri Abib. It's written that he was born in the month of Falgun. The Khalifa Sani Rabbi Allah, did the full research and it was 1835. Last point I want to mention is Adnan Rashid quoted Tofa Golviya, brother Hashim. I'm sorry if I go past them, but please let me finish this one. Adnan Rashid, may Allah guide you. You lied about Tofa Golavi and said, Hazrat Ahmed al said that even if one prophecy fails, I am a liar. The context there is, he says, I challenge all the Muslim ulama to come in a sitting with me and then prove a single prophecy to be false and then I am a liar. All of your scholars were scared. Not one stood up because they knew that if they discuss with him from Quran and these, what will happen is what's happening to you right now. Regarding the challenges, Hazrat Ahmed Asam did a challenge. I am writing this Arabic tafsir. No one will write better than me. Not a single man stood up. But all these and all are together. Okay, uh, Razi Allah, I think your, sentence, your time is up now. Sentence, I promise. Last sentence. Just last sentence. I just end with the quote from Imam Ghazali attributed to him. He says that if a person says that I am a prophet of Allah, and then he puts his finger up and says, today, no one, no one will be able to put this finger down, then know that he's a truthful prophet of Allah. Till today, this Arabic challenge, Surah Fatih Tafsir, Muhammad Hussain Batali couldn't okay, even... Okay, thank you. End, thank brother. you, Razi What thank are you so talking about? Okay, carry on, uh, Brother Imtiaz. Okay. Okay, Razila, before I start my turn, can you please again quote the, the quote you said about the Wa'id? Please quote the, the Arabic text about the Wa'id. Yes, so let me open it again. One yes. second, please. Yes. Uh, so there's two. The first one that I quoted. No, I quoted two. No, I, quote it too. I said all your scholars say this. So I said I mentioned two points. Once I mentioned, one I mentioned is Ibn Taymiyyah. He says, Wa'kullu Wa'id in fil Quran. You said it's only regarding Qomi Yunus. You lied. You lied. Okay? You lied. The second one is Imam. I didn't read the Arabic of this, but I said here, yeah, all your scholars agree. Imam Razi says, Inna jamil wa'idat mashrutatun bi admil af. More scholars I can present as, as well, but you lied. You said it's only Qomi Yunus. Fear Allah okay. and live right now. Okay, I'm just lying. You can respond now. Okay. Okay, inshallah. Uh, first of all, let's, let's begin with the last point first. Okay? Uh, if Razi does not know the reference for the ayah which ends with Illa Koma Yunus, inshallah, I give the reference. But if he knows the reference, please put that ayah on the screen and interpret for us. Okay, number one, that it that what exception Allah is giving in this ayah to Koma Yunus, you need to explain for all of us. Okay, that point is done. Now, second point is this. Everybody can go back and that's why I asked him to quote the reference again. When he quoted the reference, it was only about Okay, but when it translates in the English, he says that every uh, wa'id and, and prophecy, my brother, when is I saying that my age is going to be long, is it a wa'id or is, is it a good news? It's not a wa'id. Okay, is, is, is it basically threatening or warning people? Because wa'id and wa'ad, these are two things. Wa'ad are the glad tidings. My brother Radhi, wa'ad are the glad tidings and wa'id are the Warnings about Warnings. When, Mirza, when, when Mirza is telling people that my age will be like 80 or more than 80 something, 
Is it a threat to people or is it a blessing for the people? Please explain for us. How can you put this one under the category of Faiz? Exactly. Okay? A beautiful That's question. A, okay? Let me answer yeah, this. Wait, Let no, me no, answer no. this. Wait. Let me answer this. Let me respond to point. Let me respond to your point. Okay. And then you said, then you said about the son of Nuh alayhi salam. And please, before I say this, Radhi, please do not play these, uh, these these emotional games by saying that, okay, you have, you know, said this about all the profit you have did. Let's not do this, okay? Let's have an academic discussion because these things are not good in an academic setting. Please don't use this word. Okay, now, regarding the, uh, the, the son of Nuh alayhi salam, how can you make this subject? Allah has clarified to Nuh alayhi salam in the Quran that your son is not from your, not from your family. Okay, yes. my brother, please, please, every time you are so trying wait, 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 So you're saying Razi is making a kafir son of Nuh alayhi salam his family. While yes. the Quran says, the, exactly. while the Quran says, the Quran says, so Razi is now playing games with the Quran as well. The Quran is saying that the son of Nuh is not from his family. In other words, the words are, innahu laysa min ahlik. Please, Razi, please, Razi, Razi, remain civil. Control yourself as you did beautifully on your stream. Okay? Or if you had special pills on that night, go and have that pill, have two of them and come back. Okay? So that we can continue in good spirit. So, Quran is saying he is not from his family. Over to you, Dazbay. Okay. Okay, my brother, Radhi, so please. If Yadbe is done, let me answer now. No, 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 Yadbe I have not done it. No, no, wait. No, 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 no. It's not finished. Radhi, Radhi, it's not finished. That's unfair. Is, when you no, start, it's not finished. Point point is, okay, next time, Radhi, let him finish. Please. It's not no, finished. No, no. Let him finish Radhi, next time. Because Uthamin is about to Razi, expose you so bad at now. You just mock him and he's about to destroy you. Okay, go, Imtia. Razi, Razi, Razi. Razi, what did you eat? No, no, wait, wait, Imtia, wait. Adnan Bais, okay, let, let him just finish. No, 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 I want to understand. Alhamdulillah, I'm done. I I want to understand. Okay, he's done. Can I speak now? I wait. No, 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 no he's no, done no, the no, Fajr prayer. Okay, yeah, no, I'm yeah, saying done, I okay. haven't eaten Fajr, brother. He's worried that yes, he's Razi, Razi, we we you know where we are? You know we are in three different continents. Uh, sorry, four different continents, four. actually. Yeah. We're in I am currently, plus countries. Uh, no, What's no, wait, wait, Razi. I am speaking from Africa. Hashim is in uh, Europe. Our brother Imtiaz is in Australia. And you are in Canada. Okay, so these are four different continents. And let's make it worthwhile. We are all in different time zones. Uh, some of us haven't had sleep. Okay, so I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this, by the way. Yeah, Not that... Because, uh, you know, I, I want to put you down or humiliate you. It's not that. It's just I want your audience to see what games your missionaries play with their minds and how, how you misguide them. And, and there is, there is an outright liar, a clay-cut liar who was confused about his own age. And he repeatedly lied, telling upon oath his people that I... I'm speaking the truth by Allah, by Allah, in the name of Allah. Allah is my witness that I am speaking the truth. That in 1901, I am, in 1901, I am 60. So Mirza, to save him, you're playing all these games. And you know what, Imtiaz Bhai? We're actually falling into it. We're dealing with all these. No, no. You know what? These are these are distractions. What he's I'm doing. Next in the what, what they did last year. Wait, wait, Razulullah. Razulullah, this is my time. I can say what I like. Okay. I can say what I like in my time. Okay. Your, your time is not. Yes, you have to be patient. Okay. Please don't interrupt. D did you watch my behavior the other day in the stream? Did you watch me carefully? Razi? Yes, yes, I'm listening, brother. Please continue. Okay, D Razi, did you watch me behave? Yeah, but we give you, so you full time. If you give me full time, Razi, I will interrupt you. If you Razi, give me as much time, we give Razi, you, I will interrupt. Razi, I, at times, at times, you guys were talking gibberish. I kept my quiet. I kept my patience. I listened to you. I was taking notes and I responded in due course, with, respectfully, with honor, because you were behaving honorably. Today... You are dishonoring all of us by behaving like this. So please remain silent until we are finished. Okay. I want to not 
digress. Brother Imtiaz, you have given all the answers. Just, okay. just, just, so, just, just one. Yes. Okay, finish and then come back to me. Inshallah, so, this is uh, this is this will be inshallah because uh, I I love Adnan Why this will be inshallah my last take on this subject. Okay, brothers, please pay attention. When Razi comes for his turn, I want Razi to explain for us that in the ayah which ends with illa comma Yunus, he need to explain to us that in this ayah what exception Allah is talking about about the comma of Yunus. Number one and number two, very quickly because Razi. Again, he tried to give the impression because our point was that Mirza was continuously for more for around two decades making a mistakes under oath regarding his date of birth. And then we raised the point that Mirza has declared that Allah will never leave me on my errors. Okay, now then Razi gave the impression by quoting those uh, three things, what he quoted at the end, that Allah actually corrected him. My brother Razi. The, the, the mistake Mirza was making about his date of birth, right? Now you need to give us the reference in which revelation Mirza fixed his mistake regarding his date of birth. Please understand the question. The mistake Mirza was making was in the date of birth. Please only quote one revelation where Allah corrected him about his date of birth, not his lifespan, his date of birth. And lastly, inshallah, very quickly, the last point, Please don't give people the impression that you quoted the Quran, etc. I have given you reply already that you cannot compare the Hudaybiyah event with the failed prophecy of Mirza. Why? In the case of Hudaybiyah, the Umrah was performed, number one. In the case of Nuh al -Islam, punishment did come. In the case of Yunus al -Islam, Allah clearly gave exception to these people because they repented after Yunus left them. I don't want to go into detail. It's a waste of time in this discussion. Allah accepted the repentance of people. Then Allah declared the, its exception for, for the people. And my brother Razi, please don't give, don't compare these three prophets with a failed prophecy of Mirza. Because in the case of Mirza, prophecy was failed. Lastly, lastly, you claiming that there's a research your, your, your uh, Khalifa has done. Now look at this one. Because you are saying, that nobody is, is willing to accept the challenge. I request Brother Hashim, please bring the research of Khalifa. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I have read all of those researches. I will prove to you that Mirza's date of birth can never ever be 1835. I challenge you. Okay, so now I can explain. I can respond now, Hashim. Or is Adnan going to go again and then Muhammad again? Uh, Hashim, I want to speak first, and then Rosie, you're like a Okay, okay. So now, just to summarize again, um, what Razi is doing quite systematically is distracting everyone from the main point. What are we dealing with? Mirza made a prophecy that I will die between the age of 74 to 86. Mirza himself upon oath said that Allah is my witness. I am 60 years old in 1901. And he made this statement upon oath in a courthouse by saying Allah is my witness. That makes his age 67 upon his death. That means Mirza lied. Now Razi is saying, that Allah corrected him in 1905, three years before his death. My question is, when Mirza from his own revelation said that Allah cannot leave me upon error even for a moment, why was Mirza left upon error for over 60 years of his life when he doesn't even, he doesn't even know his age that Allah had to tell him? In 1905, that you are basically going to die in three years while he himself has been telling all kind of confusing things to his people. Why did Allah leave him on error for an issue that Mirza himself used as a nishan? This is a sign from me. How can be the sign itself confu uh, confusing when he is making it a sign for himself from Allah? So my question to Razi is, oh, wait, 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 Razi, head on, 
deal with this problem, this dilemma yeah. you're facing. Why did Allah leave him in error for so long? No when he dilemma said at all, brother. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Why did Allah leave him in error for uh, so many years, so many decades, when he himself said, Allah cannot leave me on error, uh, on error for a moment. And then he, upon oath, said he's uh, 60 in 1901. And then that goes against his prophecy, his own prophecy. So he's a liar. Go ahead. So, Over to so you. Two minutes. Before I start my two minutes, I just want to clarify something that Nanbai said so I didn't misinterpret him. Can I do that, Hashim Bhai? Just something that I, I didn't really understand what he's saying. If it's just a digression, no. If it's it's a regarding no. what you said right now, let me just. If you want to no, no. clarify something Adnan said, yeah, make it Please, quick. Adnan, yeah. don't be scared. Come on. He's not you scared. You mentioned something about Hazrat Nuh last time, right? Was that his son or no? Who drowned? I'm... Was it his son? <laughs> you said, you said, are you calling him a son who Allah says he's not your family? So are you saying he wasn't a physical son? Is that what you're saying? I am saying. Allah says, no, yeah, okay, I'm telling you, you go away. So he, okay. no, 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 why are you running? Because you know you lied against Quran. Tell me. Brother, it's, not, it's, not, a battle, it's not a battle. Yeah, yeah, him, a question, he's not a battle. Okay, I, I, I will respond. I will you respond. said he's not I will. his son, right? You said I will he's not respond. his son. Okay. I, I, I will respond. I will yeah. respond. I quoted the Quran, remember? Yeah. And what is the verse? Do you know the verse? Yes, I do. What does it say? Allah says he is not min ahlik. No. Oh, okay. So Beautiful. is he, is he the literal wait, wait. son or no? Answer. Razi, Razi, Razi. You asked me a question. Let me answer. You asked me a question. If I said uh, no, his no son was not his family. You said he said his family will be saved. You said this, right? In your claim. This is okay. what the and Quran then we, says. And then, wait, wait. Okay, you claimed... Do you claim that the Quran says that? We came back telling you that the Quran says that was not his family. Okay. That was not his family. So he okay. wasn't his son, right? Do you not and understand Yassif, what I'm saying? Don't try interfering. You know he's <laughs> no, struggling no, no. and you're do trying you, to do you, save wait, him. Wait, wait. You do you not out, understand? Okay. What did I say? Simple when, question. When I made was he the physical son of Hazrat okay. Muhammad or no? Simple question. Brother yes, Hashim he was. looks worried. Too. Yes, he, he was. was right? Biological. Wait, what wait. did he say? Razi, 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 Razi. Razi. Just, just okay. let him answer. Uh, uh, yes, yes, be patient. Yeah. He was, he was, he was a biological son of Noah alayhi salam. But Allah says he was not his family. Just like Allah says that Ummahatul Mu'mineen are the mothers of believers. Not biological mothers. Not biological mothers. They are mothers. They are mothers by the virtue of being believers. Does Perfect. that make sense? Jazakum. Okay. Perfect. Jazakum. Yes. Like now so, okay. I will explain. So you, got, now, you got your two minutes starting now? I get my two minutes. Can I actually yeah. put a timer as well, please? Or are you going to make sure I get my exact time? I'm sure you will do that anyway on okay, your side. I'll start it now. So okay. now Adnan Rashid has indirectly done takfir on Muhammad Imtiaz. This is unfortunate. I apologize that I had to cause this. That was the haddi. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam challenged them that, look, this is my prophecy. Then his son drowned. Then Allah told him that, look, he's not of your family. This was an ijtihadi ghalati on tahaddi. Imtiaz's usul was that a nabi cannot make ijtihad on tahaddi. Adnan Rashid, brother, maybe after this show, he can recite the kalm again. You misquoted the oath point. Hazrat Ahmed Lassam there isn't making oath on his age. That's a court case. He's saying everything I say regarding the court case is true. His age, he's always explained that it's an estimate. This is why he himself in his own writings has explained that Allah has told me, I'm near 70. Why are you cutting me off? Near 70 in Brahim 5. Number three, you had to cut me off. But anyhow... Hazrat Ahmed al did not challenge anyone on this in the sense you're saying that, you know, Allah had to correct him. You misquoted the quote from the Arabic book, Why Left on Error? I challenge you to read it right now. It's regarding Hazrat read Ahmed al-Asam. Right? Read it. Listen, listen. Okay, I'll read it. But then you have to wait till I bring it out. And you can't speak while I'm finding it. I have it here in my images somewhere for sure. Anyhow, well, it's, it's, this is, listen, hello, brother. Wait, listen, wait, let me wait, finish. Wait, Hashim, wait, wait. Yeah, this is, this is our let me finish. Okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Two minutes are finish. almost done. No, no, no it's, it's okay. You still got time. Let me finish it quick. Do I cut you guys off? I mute myself now. 
just out of respect. So please let me finish. You lied that that means Hazrat Ahmed Lassam cannot be left on any ear when on the same page he says, I can have Sahu and Nisyan ears. And in his own books, he says that regarding my age, I do not know. It's always estimation. And he gives different terms. Your spiritual father said the prophecy was fulfilled. Thamanina <coughs> Hawlan was fulfilled according to your own scholars. The, uh, regarding uh, Batalbi, I gave the quote, and Sanaula says, ye ye jo pesh ko ye, regarding his ideas, ye puri ho chuki hai. Open tafsir sanai, read it for the audience. Regarding Tofai Golavi, you still didn't answer why you lied about that. Hazrat Ahmed said, Come, let me speak on my proxies, then prove one is false. Okay, no one yeah, your, your, no your time one is up now. Time is up. It, okay, Mtias Bay, Mtias Bay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, and Hazrat Ahmed Lassam did get corrected by Allah. That was the last point. I explained the three cups of water, which you both keep repeating that why wasn't he corrected? Allah told them three years left in your life in 1905. He passed away at 1908. He passed away at the age of 76 Hijri. Okay, I think, Razila, you made this point several Nakala. times. Nakala. So just, be patient, please. Yeah. Go on, Imtiaz Bhai. Okay, let's inshallah deal with the last point because people have this in their mind very fresh now. Look, there are three points in order to understand this prophecy. Number one, date of birth. Number two, date of death. Number three, lifespan. Okay, these are three points which need to be understood properly. Then you can understand this prophecy. Okay, my brother Radhi, Mirza Sahib was making mistake in the first point regarding his date of birth. We are not discussing his lifespan at this moment. Okay, and the, 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 the verse you quoted from the Hazain that is dealing with the lifespan and how much lifespan is left. That's not subject here. The mistake Mirza was making repeatedly as you accepted that he was doing an estimation, ijtihadi galti or whatever, okay? The mistake was not in the lifespan. The mistake was in the date of birth. My brother, please do not waste people's time. My challenge to you is bring on the screen one revelation in which Mirza was corrected on the mistake, which was date of birth. That's one point. Okay. Second, second oh, just, just, just and, I, and, and I want to add that yeah. for quickly yeah. something add to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not only that. When Mirza said on oath that by Allah, Allah is my witness that I am speaking the truth. In other words, Mirza is lying on oath because Razi is saying Mirza had no clarity on his age. Imtiaz Bhai, are you listening? Razi is saying Mirza had no clarity on his age and he knows he has no clarity on his age and knowing well that he has no clarity on his age, he is saying on oath, Allah is my witness that I am speaking the truth. Today, I am 60 years old only. I'm only 60 years of age. That means Mirza knowing well that he doesn't know his age Lying is lying on oath. So that alone makes him a liar, according to Razi. So Razi just made takfir on his prophet. Razi just made takfir on his prophet, just, his, just, just as he's making takfir on us, directly or indirectly, and he's saying that I think Ibn Taymiyyah is in hellfire. Subhanallah, <laughs> mashallah, tabarakallah. Oh, yeah, please, over to you. Okay, uh, brother, very quickly. So, brother Radhi, obviously in our discussion with you, we have discussed many points, okay? And people yes. are listening. We don't want to repeat things, okay? Now I'm just going to stick with the point, okay? I'm not going to discuss. I have all the things you said, okay? But I don't want to discuss them to save people. Let, let's discuss just one thing. And that thing is Mirza was making mistake in telling his date of birth. And your claim is Allah corrected him on this mistake. Please. I can speak for 10 minutes, but I don't want to. Let's stick with this one point. Please, your answer. Okay, so I, if you listen carefully, Hazrat Ahmed al explained that he was born on a Friday, February the 14th and in the month of Falgun according to Zikri Habib. If you look at these dates, you only find 1832 or 1835. So he was correct. In number two, then in Hakikat al-Wahi, according to Hakikat al-Wahi, he explains his age and he doesn't say what you guys are saying. According to Hakikat al-Wahi, the prophecy was fulfilled as well. Then your own scholars, Sanaul and Batalbi, accept the prophecy was fulfilled as well. I mentioned the three 
drops of water as a final point after I already explained that he was corrected through knowing the Friday he was born on and the month of Falgun. Those living with him knew the prophecy was fulfilled. Yet today, 100 years later, you want to raise allegations. And these are the same types of allegations raised by all raised against all prophets of Allah. I did not do the fear of anyone. I'm just showing that the usul you met. Brother, why are you stopping me? Let me finish. No, no, it's brother. time. Point this by is point. Point I should get point another point. two minutes now. No, no, you shouldn't. Imtiaz, it's his point. Make a note what you want to say and then come back, inshallah. Okay. Go on. So Go once Jinnah. again, Adnan Rashid lied like he lied against Tofai Golavia as well. I explained that in this court case, the oath was only regarding what he is saying regarding the o regarding the court case itself regarding his age he explains that only allah knows my true age so why are you taking one writing from one book one from the other and doing this i explained before that adnan rashid is like the christians and jews who do the same thing with sahih muslim where it says nabi sallam said push the jews to the nearest part of the earth they take this they say look nabi sallam mocked us he said uh harm so, us cause okay. let me finish brother why are you cutting me off he said spread violence your ulama agree that this is out of context in the same way you take these writings out of context you took the oath out of context and you lied against Tofai Golavia because Batali was shivering he couldn't dare raise an allegation on the prophecies that's why he didn't show up where was he? you think you'll wake okay. up 100 years later okay. and try to you know, prove okay. the prophecies wrong yep. that he couldn't disagree with? first of all First of all, you keep saying Batalvi and Amratsari, Batalvi and Amratsari. Okay, okay. He's, he's keep, he keeps calling me, calling them my spiritual fathers. I don't know why he does that. Okay, so the fact that you have to rely on two individuals who buried Mirza while he was alive, both of them, Amratsari and Batalvi, these two individuals. What are you talking buried, about? Wait, 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 no wait, one wait, 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 wait. They both buried Mirza while he was alive. Batalvi was the same man who gathered the ulama to give a fatwa of kufr against Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. He declared him to be a kafir by the, the collection of the ulama he could uh, get the support of. Amratsari is the same man who challenged Mirza, and that was the last challenge of Mirza's life. Okay, so don't mention these people who dealt with Mirza while he was alive. Okay, Mirza was shown to be a liar by both of these people, by the way. Okay, stop saying Batalvi Amrasari, Batalvi Amrasari. These two people, the mission of their lives was to show the world that Mirza is the Jal Kadab and a liar. Okay, now coming back to the same issue, Razi has uh, already admitted that Mirza was a liar. Because Razi is not addressing the point. Did Mirza say upon oath that Allah is my witness in 1901? I am 60 years of age and I am speaking the truth. I'm going to read the court again. I'm going to read the court again so that Razi doesn't Can you please, make any mistake. Uh, provide the reference, one, one. Okay, reference I've already given. He knows the reference. Okay. He knows. He's not denying it. He's not challenging the reference. The words of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed on May 16, 1901, in the district court of Gurdaspur. And I quote, God be my witness that I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age. Was Mirza lying or was he speaking the truth? Razi. Quick answer, not two minutes. Quick I answer, need, yes or no? Oh, answer I need, my turn. I need to oh, answer respond my to what Razi said. Brother. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, wait. Razi, was Mirza lying or was he speaking the truth? Hazrat Ahmed Lassam never lied ever. And that oath has okay. nothing to do with his age. You're lying. Okay. You're the one okay. lying. Yeah. Okay, okay. Guys, okay, guys, guys, wait. I think okay. Imtiaz Bay wanted wait. to make a point. Wait, wait, wait. wait. guys. So before, guys. yeah, before sabar, Razi Ullah says, sabar. let Imtiaz Bay make the point. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, sabar, sabar, sabar. Razi has now said that Hazrat Ahmad, alayhi salam, okay, according to him, never lied. Razi said that, right? So that means in this oath, when Mirza said, God be my witness that I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age in 1901. On the 16th of May, 1901, upon oath, Mirza is making this statement in the district court of Gurdaspur. And Razi said, Mirza is speaking the truth. 
That means Mirza is 60 years old in 1901. And Mirza died on the 2nd of May, 1908. Exactly, almost exactly, seven years later. That makes him 67, 67 years old. That means Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani was a liar. Because in his prophecy, which he himself called a prophecy, and I will give the reference again, in this prophecy, Mirza stated that I will live, I will live between the age of 74 and 86. Where is the reference? The words of Mirza. I'm going to quote. I quote again. The words of the prophecy promise that my age will be between 74 years and 86. The reference is Burhan al Ahmadiyya, volume 5. Page 97. So the prophecy says, which Mirza himself made the prophecy, and he uses the word prophecy in this very quote, that this is the prophecy, that I will live between 74 and 86. In 1901, he speaks the truth, because he is Hazrat Masih Maud, according to Razi, he cannot lie. He says, I am 60 years old, and he died seven years later. That's 67. So he is seven years short from the very first point of the prophecy when he said he will die between 74 and 86. Anyone listening, anyone listening right now, live or otherwise, with two brain cells, let's make it four here, two and two, four brain cells, anyone listening to us tonight with four brain cells, knows that by the calculations I presented, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was a liar. And okay, if he was no, a liar, Hashim because, Bhai, can I because one of his prophecies, because one of his prophecies is shown to be a lie. Yeah, one Adnan of his Bhai, prophecies let is shown to be a lie. Hashim Bhai, can I yeah, answer yeah, first? Yeah, then one, Imtiaz wait, Bhai goes because... No, no, but then he never gets a chance. He's being like, okay? He's being like, wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. One of his prophecies has shown to be conclusively a lie. That means Mirza, by his own standard, is a liar because he said, if one of my prophecies out of a hundred is shown to be a lie, then I'm a liar. Game over. I rest my okay. case. Now, Razi's okay. games are so, not going to save Mirza. Go ahead. Let me, let me. Okay, so first he had non Rashid. You fear Allah, you claim. Can you read the Urdu of the oath page you keep saying? Can you read the Urdu quickly? Let me read you it read for it. you. Read Hazrat Ahmed Lassam uses the word Karib which book? Hai. Which book? Which book? The Quirky scan. I have it. I have the Quirky scan, the one you quoted. The one you okay. quoted. No, no, okay? which, which He page? says what, uses what, what Karib the hai. The reference, page 241, the right? Page 241? Reference. reference. Page 241 of, of the Manzur thing you said. No. No. So what which page do you have? Using? Can you read the Urdu? Which okay, read the Urdu. Read the Urdu. Read the Urdu. Read the Urdu. Okay, my reference may be wrong. Read the Urdu. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait. let me finish. Let me let me finish. On your turn, you can answer, Nambi. Do you, you have Manzur Ilahi? Manzur I have the scan of where the oath is. I have the scan of where the oath is. Okay, I can show. Okay. Should I put it on the what screen? What is the date? Can what I put it on the screen? Can I put it on the screen? Yeah, you can put it on the screen. Okay, wait. One second. One second. What is the date? What one second, date? one second, one second. It says uh, 12 date? May 1901. No, the one I have is 16th of May 1901. Sorry, it's 16 May. 16 May. I can't read Urdu now. Yeah. I apologize. 16 May 1901. Okay. 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 16 May up. 1901. Okay. I'm going to put it up. Uh, put it up. Okay. So, uh, how can I put it up? Screen share? Uh, no, you go to at the bottom where it says present. Do you see it uh, on your screen? Present. One second, one second. Screen share present, yeah, and then I click video slides. Present. Uh, no, no, is it on a where is where exactly is it? Is it on your hard can drive I or is it on it, a website? Can I, can I tweet it to Adnan Rashid quickly so he has it? It'll be a long no, no, okay. So, no, can no, I just share a screen? No, no, no. Can I share yeah, screen? Share screen. No. That's what it is. Yeah, share screen? Share okay, screen. one sec. Let me just yes. open the image right here. I got it. Okay, screen share. Okay, uh, okay, eight second. My screen just went small. One second, just once. Two I seconds, have a double three screen, seconds. so I apologize. Uh, share okay. screen. Take your time. Share Take your screen time. window. Okay. 
Read it out loud, please. I shared the of screen. Of course. We can't see it still. It should be there. It says you're in the show, and I sh my screen is showing in the bottom right. You just have to accept it. it no, no, we can't the... see. We can't see it. None of us can see it. Really? It, yeah. Okay, let me stop sharing and share again. Present, share screen, share screen, window. Can you check now? It should be next to my name. No, we can't see your screen at all. Brother, I promise you it's showing here. Okay, let me let me put it on my phone and put my camera on. How about yeah. that? Or you can send yeah. it to Ahmed and maybe he can share it. Maybe he knows. No, no, don't worry. It's fine. Uh, I'm opening it on my phone right. and I'll open my camera. And then Adnan has to read it out loud for everyone, okay? Yeah, of course. That's the deal. Okay. Uh, do you guys see it? Uh, okay. Which we part? Can see the highlighted we part? Can see the whole thing. Okay. okay. Me, we cannot see out. the whole thing. Let me zoom out. It's the same one you have. You can confirm right here. We can't read it. No, we can't Bring see it closer. It. Okay, we let can't me read it. No, now okay, you that's can. It. No, no, look, Razi, now you Razi, can. Adnan, bhai, pare, uchi pare. We cannot read now. it, Razi. Razi, put it up on the screen and we will read it for you. Okay, so we I'll do it again. Wait. I'll share screen yeah, one it. more time, okay? Yeah, do Sh it again. Stop do it sharing. Again. Present, share screen. Don't show these tips again. Window, there. Uh, uh, if your studio is full, maybe that's Tweet where they're not Tweet showing. It. Okay, okay. There, 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 there. Okay, okay. 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 Zoom, in. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. You need okay. to zoom from your okay. side. Okay. 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 Read this, Adam. Keep zooming. Okay. Yeah. 16th of May, 1901. Hazrat Masih Maud ka bayan jo aapne adalat kurdas par mein batoor. Go back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, make it a bit smaller. That's it. That's it. That's okay. it. Oh, okay. Hazrat, okay. Hazrat Masi Maud ka bayan jo aapne adalat Gurdaspur mein batoor gawa mada ale Mirza Nizamuddin ke mukadma uh, band. Uh, can you band karne rasta? Can you uh, can you zoom in? Scan? Yeah. Uh, sorry, zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Slightly yeah. zoom in. Yeah. That's it. Mukadma band karne rasta share. आम जो मस्जिद को जाता था मैं हसब जाल दिया अल्लाह ताला हाजिर है मैं सच कहूंगा मेरी उम्र 60 साल के करीब है मिर्जा गुलाम जिलानी ने हमारे महदियों में से था अब तो उसके उसका उसका कोई घर नहीं दौरान मुकदमा हाजवा में मुझे मालूम हुआ कि गुलाम जिलानी ने इमाम उद्दीन और मेरे वाल साहब के मुकदमा कर दिया तो हियर हियर लेट मी ट्रांसलेट एग्जैक्टली Word by word, it says, "Why did you Allah lie? First, tell them why you lied. Tell them why you lied." No, no, I'm not lying. I'm not. Can you put it back did up? Did you not see? He, did you, you not see? He's saying he's only sixty. Okay, let me share it again. Can you? Can you put it back up? Is it can there? It Is it there? Can yeah. You put it back up. Okay. Okay. Right now, Allah Taala Hazir. God is present. Okay. Yeah. In other words, God is my witness. No, it doesn't say that. Do not lie. Read it. That's what, what it means. Okay. Come on. Okay. 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 Allah is okay. present. Okay. That's what he says. Okay. Allah. Okay. Allah. Chalo, chalo. I will do it word by word so that Rosie yeah. is happy. Allah is present. I will speak the truth. My age is about sixty years. About sixty years. Yes. Now, what okay. what are you saying? Jazakallah. <laughs> So you were yeah. emphasizing and lying that he's no, only no, no. he's make. Let me finish now. I let you speak right no. now. Let me you, you, expose you the apostle. This case. is what the Jews did with the case. with no. the Torah. They put their hand on the Torah so they don't get stoned. So let's see how you have become like the Jews. So, so let me expose so, so you. Can on I this quickly? Now. Can I quickly? Can I, can I quickly? Can, yeah, you can answer. But wait, okay. you can answer. What we have just seen, Razi has confirmed that we are very, very. Diligent and accurate about our sources. Okay, no, so no. so the date the, so the date I gave is absolutely correct. Sixteenth of May, nineteen o one. The quote I was reading go, goes as follows: "God be my witness." There it says God is present. Now Razi insists that that's not witness. God is just present. He's just present for no reason. That I speak the truth. Main sach kahunga in the Urdu language. That I speak the truth. I am only 60 years of age, right? Here, he is dispute, Razi is disputing the word only. He's saying, instead of only, it says Karib. In the Urdu word, in the Urdu language, it says Karib. Karib means close. Karib mm -hmm. means close. <clears throat> so when he says, I'm close to 60 years of age, okay, we have other quotes from Mirza, 
from same time, for example, I'm going to answer to this so that Razi can actually tell us what's going on. In 1896, Mirza says he's 64 years of age. Yes? Yes or no? Finish, then I'll answer. Okay. In 1896, Mirza says he's 64. What is our case? Our case is that Mirza is lying repeatedly about his age. He is in error. And he has said upon oath that I am about, let's say about 60. No problem. It's, it's a minor point to us. It's, it's, it's a minute point to us. It makes no difference to our case. Our case still stands. What is our case? Our case is Mr. Mirza is a liar. Wherever you go, whichever quote you go to, Mirza is shown to be a liar because Mirza repeatedly said that his age was different at different times. Okay. In 1896, Mirza says, I'm 64. In 1903, he says, I'm 70. Okay. So now you tell me, in 1901, Mirza is saying, I am about 60. In 1903, he's saying, I'm 70. Two years later, okay, two years later, he's saying, I'm, six, say, I'm 70. So if Mirza was 68 in 1903, if Mirza, by his own confession, was 68 in 1903, as he claimed in 1903 that he was 17, 70, was he about 70 years of age or about 60 years of age? Any sane person will tell you that he's about 70, not about 60. He's not close to 60, he's close to 70. So even that shows, shows him to be a liar. Then Mirza in 1904, the very next year, says, I am 65. Okay. Then in 1905, Mirza says again, I am 70. Then in 1907, Mirza says, I am 68. So which one is it? All of these were said by Mirza. Allah says in the Quran, "Afala yadabburun al Quran, walau kana min indi ghairi la la wajadu fihi ikhtalafan kathira." Now let me tell you something about Mirza himself. What Mirza said, okay? Mirza said about his or uh, his his own words that an individual who is wise and pure in heart, I'm quoting Mirza here, in this vein, okay? An individual who is wise and pure in heart does not create contradictions in his words. Are you listening, guys, everyone? Is everyone with me? Mirza yeah. said, and where did he say this? Sat Bachan. His book, Sat Bachan, published in 1896, page 29. Mirza said, in his own words, an individual who is wise and pure in heart does not create contradictions in his words. Of course, if he is mentally deranged and lacks sound judgment, or if as a matter of flattery he agrees with somebody else, there is no doubt that there will be contradictions in his words. So okay, Mirza, can I I'm answer now? Yeah, wait, wait, you can answer. Let me finish. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani here is saying that a person who is wise and pure in heart will not contradict himself. Who is wise and pure in heart will not contradict himself. Unless he is mentally deranged and lacks sound judgment, in which case he cannot be a prophet. This is my caveat. Clearly about his age, Mirza was not only contradicting himself, he was contradicting himself severely. To give you the list again, 1896, he said, I'm 64. 1903, he said, I'm 70. 19, 1904, I'm 65. 1905, I'm 70. 1907, I'm 68. This is a deranged, mentally ill, immoral, now you're mocking. Now you're abusing wait, our founder. Wait, wait, this was the Hashim by where's wait, the wait, respect wait, gone yeah, now? Yeah, that's yeah, that's wait, disrespectful wait, wait, because wait. you got I'm, I'm, caught I'm, to I'm, be a liar and I'm, now he has to mock I'm, my founder. Allah been, says, don't mock others. Yeah, Allah, 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 Allah,
everything you throw at us. We have a quote from Mirza to destroy his own credibility. Everything okay. you will bring in defense of Mirza, you will open your mouth. There will be something with us to completely dismantle your defense of Mirza. Please fear Allah and accept that Mirza was a liar because repeatedly we're bringing things to you from your own writings that undo him, that prove him to be a liar. So yes, if Mirza can can I say, answer Hashim, but it's been a yeah, whole yes, speech you've given, yeah. brother. What, what are you, you expect what me are you? to answer in two minutes? It's unjust. Razi, 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 okay, Razi, so I'm, I'm going to answer Razi, now. I'll share my... I'm finishing. Yeah. Let, him, Razi, let, let what, Adnan I, finish. And then yeah, I want yeah, Imtiaz Bai to come yeah. in because he has been waiting a what, long time, longer than you. you gave a full speech, Hashim Bai. Yeah, but make a note of it. I mean, come on. I have. Razi, Razi, Razi. Did Mirza say that a person who is wise and pure of heart cannot contradict himself and if he does he's mentally deranged okay he's mentally deranged and sick if mirza said this first of all you have to confirm did mirza say that if he said it then he is contradicting himself giving different numbers of his age in different years that means he's contradicting him contradicting himself that means he is not only impure of heart he's mentally deranged too do you agree Okay, let Imtiaz Bhai make a point and then you can come in. Razi Allah. So now, come on, Imtiaz Bhai. No, no, okay. You haven't Imtiaz finished yet or you have? Respond. No, 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 no. No, no, no but this, is, this will go on, Adnan, but I think Brother Imtiaz has been waiting no, for no, a no, while. This is, no, no, well, Hashim, I request specifically he answers. He answers. Yeah, I'm but he's made a note. Him. He's he's made notes I'm, of the things. No, 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 no. Hashim, I'm, I have... Hashim, I'm not going to let, let him go. Okay, so after two minutes, Imtiaz Bhai comes in. Okay, go on. Yes, please, please. So who's speaking now? Me or no, you're you speaking. You got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, so I have two minutes. So I want to go a bit back as well because Adnan Rashid lied previously as well. And I can't let him keep lying no. on this stream. See, you're cutting me off again. Brother Hashim, is this no. just? Respond. Yeah, Adnan, but it's his time. Let him finish. Did we decide what he says on our stream? He's going to play the same games, Hashim. All time. This yeah. guy is just deceiving left right and you expect Hashim, Hashim, like, him to lie, Hashim, brother. Hashim, let's, Hashim, let's all Hashim, calm Hashim, down. Uh, yeah. uh, Hashim, as a moderator, can I request, can you get him to answer my question? I yeah, will. So he's got two minutes. And if he doesn't answer the question, that's his, his loss, isn't it? So you heard the question. You made the notes, Razullah. Okay, uh, now please answer the question. Let me just get to my notes while I can't find it. Uh, okay. okay, right here. There it is. Okay, can you share the screen again, Brother Hashim? Yeah, if you're sharing it, I can. I, it says sharing. Okay. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, I got to zoom in, right? So as everyone saw, Adnan Rashid lied again and was caught just like his spiritual forefathers, Batalvi and Sanaullah. Hazrat Ahmed Al-Assam says, Kareeb, near 60. That could be 65, 66, 63. He does not say on an oath. Obviously, you're saying something you're certain about. He uses the word Kareeb to show it's an estimation as he does in his other books. In Hakikat way we prove that he passed away at 76. Other books show past 74. So we have hundreds of references. Now, Adnan Rashid lied to the viewers that Sanaullah buried Hazrat Ahmed Asam. Open challenge. Read the Mubahala challenge in front of all the viewers right now. Qiyamat will come. You will fear reading it. Why? Because in the end, Sanaullah gets scared. He says, you know, Mirza said, challenge me to Mubahala, but the plague is happening. I might die in there. He starts crying that I cannot accept the Mubahala. Your mullahs lied to you that he accepted the Mubahala. Why do you deceive? Then you say, Batalvi, do you know where his grave is today? His Christians became Christian. His uh, children became Christian. What are you talking about? You disowned him last stream and said, I don't care what he says. Who is Batalvi? No one knows where his grave is. The man has disappeared. Mm -hmm. You're trying to bring him back to the world. He's already finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now returning to the other points that Adnan Rashid says, in Hakikatul Wahi, does it prove he was 76 or no? Answer in yes or no like you ask me. You can't okay. answer. Exactly. Let me finish Hashem Bhai. Regarding... Yeah. A person who cannot contradict 100% Christians raise the same allegations. They say, Oh, Quran says, Do not mock their gods, then it says their idols are in the hellfire. Hazrat Ahmad never contradicted on the faith. These are historical <coughs> points. Nabi Sism says, You people know more about the history. So Adnan Rashid, fear Allah. You are only using the shoulder of Hazrat Ahmad to reject the other prophets of Allah. You already rejected Nuh Alasam, Yunus Alasam, and now Nabi Sism, you rejected with Sulah Udabi, you rejected Batalbi. Regarding Tamiya, you did say he's in the hellfire. And regarding Ibn Tamiya, you got exposed on Twitter today. 
according okay. to you, your time is up two reference. minutes so you're not answering anything man you're just I making everything okay. what i don't think you are answer what oh. didn't i answer okay. tell okay. me wait 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 i'm not going to tell you can you clarify that he was corrected in when he mentioned his month of falgun and the 14th friday of february so i answered everything can you can you can you stop it in government people okay go ahead Mute. Last thing in government people's dates are always asked. Hashim, mute him. Hashim, mute him. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You see, you see. Last thing. Wait, wait. Imtiaz, wait. Imtiaz, wait. Sorry. One second. What, This what is very important. Last thing. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let him get off. This is a very look. Look. If we, if we, if we let him off this, then you know, we have to keep it on topic. My issue now is this guy. He the other day in the last stream he made up a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he's calling me a liar. He, he actually added the words "kala nabi." I told you it's based in. on what he don't wait, lie. Wait, I said wait, based wait, on wait, what he. Wait. Um, You're supposed to be quiet. Come muted. on, Razila. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Razi has eaten something else today. Uh, he has taken off his uh, Ahmadi, you know, polite, polite, gentle, civilized Ahmadi hat. He has taken it off today, and he is now behaving like a Sunni today. Sunni, you know, as they claim, as they do the propaganda that these mullahs, these Maulvis, they are violent, they are extremists, they behave like this. this. This is how these people behave. When we go on their streams, they are like beautiful fairies. You know, there are rainbows, like my little pony land. There are ponies flying around. You know, these are like rainbows. But when they come, when they come to our streams, they turn into monsters. So please be patient, Razi. Okay, let me finish myself. Now, he made up a hadith the other day on one of our live streams. When we probed him, we asked him, "Where are these words, Mirza, attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there will be a black prophet from India whose name will be Kahin, also known as Kishan and Kanaya, Hindu deity, Hindu deity." He attributed Mirza, the prophet, attributed this information to the prophet. When we asked him, "Where is the hadith?" Razi basically claimed, using words "Kala Nabi," it is recorded. It is historic. It is going to go down in history. It's not going to be removed. Okay, he said "Kala Nabi," and we caught him lying. When we asked him to show the text, he said, "Oh, these words are not there. These words are basically from Ilham, from Revelation." This is the game he played. Today he's saying that I said Ibn Taymiyyah is in hellfire. I challenge him to produce a statement for me, a video clip for me, where I said Ibn Taymiyyah is in hellfire. Okay, if he doesn't, then not only that he is a compulsive liar, just like his prophet, his entire community, those who don't take him up on this, the Ahmadis who are listening right now. You need to understand that your trained, paid missionaries. This is what they do. This is what they made of. Okay, they will never give straight answers. Black and white contradictions, black and white prophecies of your false prophet, and this guy is playing games. So I request now, Hashim Bai, remove Razi. Let someone Let else in. Let me go last and time. But now, no, you have prophecy. to Hashim Bai. Okay. Give me I my. I think Imtiaz Bai. Okay. Imtiaz Bai has to. I'm going to let okay. only Imtiaz Bai speak now. No, brother Hashim, please. I ask. For... Yeah, Imtiaz I told Bhai. you. I'm going to let Imtiaz speak. Go on, Imtiaz Bai. Okay, Akhi Hashim, I just want to propose uh, something very important. Because this discussion has been there for one and a half hour. Now, what will happen is three, three hours. Now, 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 they will claim at the end. Razi will claim I was not allowed to speak, etc. Now, here's the, here's my point. Let's Razi give two minutes that on this failed prophecy of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, give us four, five, whatever bullet points in two minutes. Inshallah, I will address them in my turn. And secondly, I want to answer what he said, with what I need to address. Why? Because we need to cap the discussion at the end. Because people should see that what was the conclusion, what was the best shot played by Razi, and how they were responded. Please give him two minutes. Okay. Are you sure you don't want to make the points because you might get? Inshallah, after two minutes, Inshallah, but Adam, Inshallah, after that, I want to respond to his points because I want him, I want him to give us his best points on this prophecy. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Raziola, you can go ahead. Now. Okay, so firstly, uh, Adnan Rashid lied that I lied against Rasulullah. I never lied. That was Ilham, that that was a true hadith. In Mu'jam al Osset and Tafsir Nasfi, the call is from Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu, your Ahli Hadith ulama, except that if Ilm Ghab comes from Sahabi, it is call of Rasulullah. Even your favorite point, Alama Iqbal said, Mere Arab se ai hawa, thandi hawa, jise mera batan wohi hai. He said, Nabi says, and smell the cold wind from India. That's call of Ali. Your Alama Iqbal is also in Jahannam today, mashallah, you have no one left as well. Then you said, I said, Ibn Tim is in hellfire according to you. I said, based on your usul, I have countless of references of Ibn Tim where he says, Qala Rasulullah, you'll never find the hadith. Day of judgment will come, you still won't be able to find that hadith. Then you said, mention five points. Number one point, Adnan Rashid's Mujaddideen, Batalvi and Sanaula said it was fulfilled. That's my first point. Number two, Brahin Ahmadiyya part 5 has a Tehmad Asam explains it's always estimation and my age is around 70. Number two, it was never based on Wahid that he was born in 1839. Number three point is that according to Hakik al Wahi, his age would be 76 when he passed away. Number uh, fourth point is the three drops in 1905. And number fifth point, the criteria of a truthful prophet according to Sanaula and also Hashmi. I apologize. I'm Taking a few extra seconds, but if you let me finish this. No, you got you got 40 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. So my fifth point is according to the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty mentions Surah Hakka, the claim of a true prophet of Allah. His Mujaddidin interpret the same way Ibn Qayyim as well. For example, he says, how is it possible someone lies for 23 years and Allah supports him and he doesn't get destroyed and his community doesn't disappear? So now Allah says that Jobi Nabuat ka dawa karega, it's like eating poison. Whoever claims proper, it's like eating poison. They will die, they will be killed. Their faith will disappear from the earth. Today, Hazrat Ahmed Lassam's message is in over 200 countries where the most organized community in the entire world and we are continuing to spread day and night, which is why you are forced to do these streams. But we thank you. You are getting our message to those who would have never gotten it. Wa ma Muhammadun illa Rasul, God khalaq min kablihi Rasul. Isa is now coming. He is dead and he'll never return. Thank you very much. Allah for your time. Imtiaz bhai, has he answered your question? Ameen. Has he answered your question? Okay, Hashim bhai, the reason was I wanted people because I said to him, give us your best shot on this prophecy. Okay, he said five things. Okay, let's deal with them in one minute, inshallah. Point number one and point number five is about that our scholars said this. They are not part of this discussion. Okay. We are discussing Mirza, his prophecies. So we you are throw the money too, just Brother like Rasulullah. You're not into Jack Razulah, in, please. In Allah Allah he will humiliate these people. You people are humiliated. Okay. I'm going to remove him because he's being okay. disrespectful. Now, it, it is for Razulah and for all the audience. Please understand, I said to him, give us your best shot on this prophecy. He said five points. Point number one was, he said that our scholars have accepted this prophecy. Number one, he was lying. Our scholars clearly declared him a liar. If they would accept his prophecies, okay, why would they call him a liar? And secondly, this is not our main answer, by the way. Our main answer is this, what I'm going to say now, okay. Our scholars, whatever they say, it has no bearing on the Ilhamat or revelation of Mirza. Our subject is, this is what Mirza said, you need to defend that. You cannot bring up, or, or secondly, if our scholars are a hujja, if they are approved, then you need to accept everything they say. Okay, and they clearly said, Mirza is a liar, do you accept this? How can you do the cherry pick? Okay, you just take a few things our scholars and you rest all of that. Allah does not allow this to a believer to cherry pick from the akwal or from the sayings of the scholars. Okay. So point number one and five were about the scholars. Point number two was, he said that the Mirza Sahib made mistakes because he was always giving estimations. Okay. On this point, I asked him, I said, okay, because he was making mistakes, because of his estimations, he was having this error. When Allah corrected him on his, on his what? Date of birth. Okay. Because this was the error he was always making. He was always making error about the date of birth. This was the key point. And Razi has not been able to produce any evidence to tell us that when Allah corrected Mirza Sahib on his date of birth, this was the point of error. Okay. And then the next point is this. Okay. 
uh, Razi was trying to hold on to one thing. He said, oh, Adnan Bhai quoted the translation which says that only 60 years. But the actual text says uh, Takriban uh, Saat Saal or nearly or close to 60 years. Okay, my point is this. Number one, Razi said that I have the scan. Razi, you know what scan means? That what statement was given in the court of law, you have the scan of that statement. You don't have that. You produced a book. That book is quoting this testimony of, we have the book as well. So only thing that can justify that you are truthful if you can produce the scan of what statement was given in the court of law. Razi has no scan. And I really doubt, I really doubt because I can give you many references that they keep putting things here and there very little. They can change the whole meaning. So my challenge yes, to Razi is, my, my challenge to Razi is, if you want to hold on to the point of only or Karib, please produce the scan. If you will produce the scan, then matter can, you have no scan. But you said you have a scan. You are lying in this one. Okay. And the next point is this. Okay. If Mirza Sahib say, according to you, his date of birth was 1835. Okay. In 1901. If he was saying, I'm 60 years old or Karib 60, he's still lying because from 35 to 1901, it becomes how long? It becomes my brother 67 years. So according to your, uh, your rep, it, it's still lying. It did not solve any problem. Okay. And then the, the, the main point is this. Okay. The actual prophecy was that Mirza will live between 74 to 80 years or, or, or 86 years. Okay. This prophecy was not fulfilled. This is the subject matter. Everything else was discussed because of this. And on this one, Razi was saying again and again, and I want to say it in very clear terms. The platform of Brother Hashim is available to you, inshallah, is available to all of us, inshallah. My brother, bring your research, okay? Your claim is that according to the research of Khulafa, Mirza was born in 1835. My research is that according to my research, Mirza was born from 1839 to 1840. And then we will let the people decide that whose research is backed up with evidence and who's just lying. Okay. You want to respond to that, okay. uh, Razila? Yes. No, yes, no, no. Yes. Wait, wait. No, oh, no, you no, want no, it now? No, wait, okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Can you, can I quickly say something? Okay. Okay. Razi. Uh, we're going to move on to the next prophecy uh, because we've spent all already about uh, two hours, nearly two hours on this. And we're going to go on to next pro prophecy, inshallah. So um, we're not going to let Razi come in uh, because we, they're, he's repeating his stuff. Okay. We have shown why Mirza is a liar. The prophecy remains unfulfilled. Razi is throwing irrelevant things at us, which we... we uh, don't want to address because they are completely irrelevant. So we're going okay, so to move on to the next. Bhai, can can we bring somebody else in uh, after Raziullah makes a closing statement? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah? yeah. First, we need to we need to. So go we'll give him two minutes. Talk. Make his closing statement, because the thing is, we gave him enough ample opportunities to respond to the uh, the yeah. uh, claims that you guys are making. So inshallah, let him make uh, the closing okay, statement. One thing, one thing, one thing before he speaks. One thing before yeah, he speaks. Go ahead. Okay. I am again throwing this challenge on Raziullah that bring your research. You have to bring evidence from that research that Mirza was born on 1835. I will bring my evidence. He was born in 1839 to 40. Do you accept the challenge or not? No, no, okay. no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> again, in Dersbari, again, we have shown Mirza is contradicting himself. Mirza remained in error for decades. Mirza said, God will not leave me in error, even for a moment. Mirza contradicted, him, contradicted himself. He said, a person of pure heart and wise, uh, a wise person of pure heart cannot contradict himself unless he's deranged, unless he's mentally deranged. Mirza was mentally deranged by his own standard. Because Mirza kept contradicting himself. And there's no doubt in my mind that Mirza was mentally deranged. And by that virtue, Mirza was not fit to be a prophet or fit to be even a, a school teacher. Mirza was not fit to be even a school teacher. 
even a football coach, even a kabaddi coach. You know, kabaddi is a Punjabi sport, right? Kabaddi, yeah. Mirza wasn't even fit to be a kabaddi coach. Let's say, uh, let alone being a prophet of God. Over to you uh, okay. and uh, next prophecy. Go ahead. Yeah. Next so this prophecy. is uh, Razila. This is your closing statement. You got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, brother Hashim, can you share? Do you hear me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to start my timer. Can you show my uh, screen, please? Yeah, just one sec. Okay, so um, Muhammad Imtiaz accused me of lying for saying I have the scan, but when Adnan Rashid kept saying he has the reference, he has the reference, he never said a word. This is how the Jews behave, number one. Number two, Adnan Rashid lied about the word. Why are you cutting said, me off? Why are, Why are you cutting me off? Why are you cutting me off? Are you dancing? It's okay. I, I, dance? I, I, Don't Let lie. Let me finish. Don't Let lie. me finish. Let Don't me lie. finish. This is it my reference as well? Yes. All right, I'm gonna now I'm gonna reset I'm time. gonna reset the timer. You got two minutes. Okay. Go ahead. So that answers the first question. I'll stop sharing. And now Muhammad Imtiaz challenged me. I openly challenge all three of you. Get your Ahli Hadith ulama as well. Debate me on the death of Hazrat Isa from the Quran and our Hadith. You'll never do it. Qiyamah will come, you won't do it. Adnan Rashid has to lie. He says Hazrat Isa was sleeping. Miraj, Nabi Sassam, greeted Hazrat Isa He replied, according to Nabi Sassam, lied that Isa Sallam replied because you say he's sleeping. Last thing I'm going to quote, Brother Hashim, this reference ends Adnan Rashid's propaganda. I want you to share this reference. Sorry, Hashim, but last thing. I'm just going to share my screen again and I'll end at that. I thank you a lot. May Allah bless you for being a just moderator and a lot of Ahmadis praise you for this. So may Allah keep you uh, just in this, I'm just one uh, more minute. You got here, yeah. So, I'm just going to ask you if you can share this. Uh, is it showing, brother? Not yet, okay. Okay, it is now, yeah. yeah. Adnan, Bay, read this Arabic, please, for everyone and translate the highlighted one. Yes, can you read it? You're smiling, read it. You need no, to, you, you, you need to zoom. 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 This is your reference. This is your read reference. It. Read it's, it's it. And translate it no, yeah. no, no. I want it from your mouth. No, you read it and I want translate you to it. Go you got, I want you to no, I got 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I, okay. Okay, 30 seconds. Ibn Taymiyya yeah. Rahmullah says, Yajibu taziruhu ala hadal kalam. He's asked about someone who calls someone wala du zina. He lied against Hazrat Ahmed Lassam because Hazrat Ahmed Lassam used this majazi sense, had the kazaf is needed. Ibn Taymiyya says, your mujaddid, your spiritual father, bring him out of the hell today, Adnan Bay. Accept this reference. He says, only had the kazaf and tazir is needed if they do not mean it in the sense that you call a khabis majazi torpe wala du zina. What do you have to say about this? I don't understand your point. Make it again. Says, okay, your, time, your two let minutes are up. Wait, wait, let, wait. Me, let, wait, me, wait, let me finish the point. He let me finish the point. Let me what is in this? What let is me finish. I'll explain. Yeah. In this Adnan, reference, please don't go brother, on this topic, please. Not my bug, none yet. Wait, wait, I know wait. you're like the movies you want to run. He asked me for clarification. Let me clarify. Don't cut me off. This, this, because of this reference, brother Adnan, you should delete all those videos. And you were saying Hazrat Ahmed Asim needs Hadde Kazaf because he used Waladu Zina metaphorically. Ibn Taymiyyah Rahmullah says if you call someone Mal'oon and Waladu Zina in the Majazi sense, like you call the Mashtum a Khabis, there is no Tazir or punishment. You okay. have to delete okay. all those videos now for lying against your spiritual fathers and okay. Islamic theology. And you lied about all right, thanks for your time. Ta ta well. He said, yeah, Haram Zadi has because of Hazur used the word Haram Zadi. You lied on that twin day. Let me finish that day. So I okay. end there. May Allah guide you to the true Islam, Islam, Ahmadiyya, those who follow Quran and a hadith. Quran and a hadith and sahaba. Mm. We do mm. not follow mullahs of today. Shah Walula Muhaddis Delvi says they rejected Isa lesson because of their salaf. Quran and hadith proves the truthfulness of Ahmadiyya. May Allah guide you all and show you such a strong sign that makes you accept the true Islam. 
Islam Ahmadiyya and Hazrat Ahmad as the latter day Messiah, Isa as is dead, he is never coming back. Quran is clear. Wa ma Muhammadun illa Rasul. Qad khalat min qablihi Rasul. All messengers before Isa okay. as have died. May Allah guide you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please stay. Oh, I would love to stay. I would love to stay. Okay, just listen to what I have to say. Just one minute. Just one minute. Okay, just one minute. Okay, go ahead. Keep your camera on, Razi Bhai. Please keep your camera on as well. Oh, it's we on. See Do you see me? Okay. Do you see me? Yes, I want to see okay. you, brother. Do you see my the brother. Quran as well? Do you In see this the Quran? Book, my brother, okay, let, let, him, let him speak. Okay. Him. Okay, brother. Every listener, please pay attention. In this whole prophecy, there is only one cop out. There's only one exit which Jamaat Ahmadiyya has discovered. And that cop out is that Mirza's date of birth was 1835, number one. This was the main cop out. I challenge Raziullah, you have not answered to me. Come on any independent platform, okay? My, you cannot prove this. I'm saying it very clearly. You have no evidence. You are you are seeing Muhammad in Tiyas for the first time, but you'll see me now more, okay? You have no evidence. I have studied every single evidence produced by Ahmadiyya on this subject. I challenge you, brother, I challenge you. You, If you cannot prove that he was born on 1835, then you have no option left. Then you have to admit that Mirza's prophecy was a failed prophecy. And he said this is a sign for the future people. So you can't hold them. Number two. You are saying to Adnan by the Hadde Kazaf of Abaladu Zina, I challenge you. you I challenge you, okay, I, on this topic. You want to debate this topic that what is the Jamhur opinion? If somebody says to somebody, Waladu Zina, without evidence, what is the Kolu Jamhur? You want literally to debate Literally or me? metaphorically? Literally or metaphorically? No, no, no. You want to Answer debate this. me? Literally or metaphorically, Jabab de answer. Then, literally, I, I, give you, I give you, I give you. Literally, I give you. Answer, he heard your question. Answer, Calm down, Razi. Bhai. He heard Allow your me question. speak. I give you Run. the answer. You are wait, saying. Wait, wait, it does my. Wait, wait, wait. No, it does my. No, he's. No, he's just, one, just one minute. Now he is creating an exit that he will try to say that Mirza Sahib said it metaphorically. Guess what? I'm going to produce those references, Razi, you have not seen in your life, which will prove... I've read all his books, that, brother. That Don't Mirza, be no, no, not just, Don't be allow arrogant, me to speak. okay? Allow Wait, me to speak. Mute him. Okay, mute let's, him, let's, mute okay, him. let's, why, why are you discussing? Why don't you accept my challenge? My challenge to you is Adnan Bhai, you are, you, you're saying to Adnan Bhai, he was lying. My challenge to you is debate me on this topic. That if you call somebody Waladu Zina, what is the Kalu Jamhur? I challenge you. Okay, now let me answer Ashma and then I'm done. Okay, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. I, I thought that was a closing statement. Yeah, but he went again. So let me end because I'm the guest. Adnan, you I want to you, ask, you want to continue this? I don't yes, know. I want, I want, last point. I want, I want to say something. something. Last point. Last okay, point. okay. No, no, no. Okay. I want to say you, something. Do you accept the wait, challenge? Wait, wait. No, no, no. Yes, my yes, question, question is, let me okay. my question is, guys, 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 calm down. Calm down. If you are a man, Okay, if you, are a man, Razi, if, Razi, if you are a man, if you are a man, and if you are all those things you claimed, accept the challenge, yes. we will produce references, yes. we will produce references that anyone using the terms like Dhurriyatul Bagaya, Waldul Haram, or Waladul Haram, or Waladul Zina, okay, or Harami, or Haram Zada, we all this beautiful language beautiful flowers coming from mirza's mouth for his uh, opponents if we show you references and show you the position of the overwhelming majority of ahlu sunnati wal jamaa that they believe anyone using these words deserves qazf 80 lashes and such a person's testimony will never be accepted this person is vulgar foul and not worthy of any respect Accept the challenge. Be a man. Accept the challenge to debate this topic. Oh, shut up. Which Why are you is... being abusive? Why are you being abusive now? Why are you being I abusive? I didn't call your answer. Is that how you I treat your guests? Is that how you treat your guests? I did not call you your answer. Let me conclude. I did not now. call you your answer. I did let not call conclude. you Zina. I did not call you Harami. I did not call you Zuriyatul Bagaya. How can okay. I be abusive? That's your profit. Okay, no, no, That's, wait, wait, wait. Hashim, mute him. Hashim, mute him. One second. Yeah, Ashim, it's Imtiaz, Imtiaz Bhai speaking. Imtiaz Bhai, go on. Okay. It's very okay, no, no, He said, he said I am being abusive for telling him to shut up. His prophet, Mirza, was calling people Harami, Haramzada, Waladuz Zina, Durriyatul Bagaya, 
All of these things mean one thing, a bastard child. And he's telling me that I'm abusing him for telling him and, to shut up. This and is by the, way, the reality you, of these people. You call Adnan a liar many times, so... We, we could say the same thing that you are abusing him. Yes. But anyway, let, let him just by make the point and then you can come in again. Nazirullah, listen, listen. I did not ask you for any reference, Nazirullah. I did not ask you for anything. I simply asked you one question that this prophecy can only be defended if you can prove that Mirza Sahib was born in 1835. On this topic, I'm throwing you a challenge. Are you accepting the challenge or not? Your, your turn, Razi. Can I, can I answer? Okay, first I'm going to expose you for lying about Hadi Kazaf. When there's ikhtilaf in the ummah from your spiritual father, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmullah, why are you going to majhur? First, you have to get witnesses against Ibn Taymiyyah, number one. Number, why are you cutting me off? I don't Nobody understand. Nobody cut you off. He Nobody started you speaking. Off. He started speaking. No, Anyhow, but he didn't. Look, the majority of Pakistan today are Barelvis. Ahmed Azza Khan's fatwa is also that there is no had de kazaf on the word haram zada. Adnan Rashid lied. He said, read the next line. That was haram zadi. That word, not, word, word was not even used by the Prophet. We can show you authentic narrations from Sahaba. They use this as well. Where was the had de kazaf against them? This shows you're a liar and you have your own usul. If there was. Hadde Kazaf, Sahaba would also have Hadde Kazaf against him for using these words. There's narrations in Kanzul Umal as well and many other books which I showed already. Ibn Taymiyyah is on our side. He's our scholar, not yours. According to you, the the listen, let me accept finish. the challenge. I accept the challenge accept on the death challenge. of Isa from the Quran. That's my challenge. Run now. Run now. My challenge is on this. Razi, everybody, everybody can see. Okay, listen, listen, I'm just going to start tracking the original points. I'm just one second, one second, wait, wait, everyone, mute it, mute it. Okay. Razi, please stay there. Wait, wait, I'm just going sorry, one second. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Kardiani, he said he will die between 74 to 86. Then he said, in 1901, in a court proceeding, that he is 60 years of age. Around 60. Why are you lying again? Okay, okay, around, Let him okay, finish. I, I, finish. Just yeah. I just, or, 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 or taking his word, close to it. No problem. Still, my case still stands. That means he's closer to 60 than 70, as I have shown already. Still, he's a liar. Still, he's a liar. You know why? Because still, even, even if we were to take... If it was up to 65, add another seven years. That makes it 72. Mirza is still a liar because close to 65 cannot be more than 65. Sorry, close to 60. Close to 60 by your book, your reference that you pulled out and we accept it. It says close to 60. It cannot be more than 65 because more than 65 is 66. That would be close to 70. So it says close to 60. So that means maximum 65. And add another seven years, that makes him 72 at his death. Even then, Mirza is a liar because he said, I will die between 74 and 86. There goes your Mirza. There go you and all your lies and all your lame defenses. Now, wait, if that's right, no. Now I request that we don't fall for his uh, digressing tactics. Ask we go to the next one. No, 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 no. Imtiazbhai, I'm sorry. You have to Give listen. One minute only. Next, no. next, no, Imtiazbhai, Imtiazbhai, next prophecy, right now. Next prophecy. Let me, don't, and no. let me it's, do it's the conclusion. Good. I'm the guest, no, right? I'm no, no, the no, guest. No, 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 no. Yeah, but you have to wait your turn. Wait your turn. We'll give you a chance. This is my stream. This is my stream. This is my stream. So please listen to my request. Myself and Hashim and Imtiaz Bhai, a request from all of you, move on to the next prophecy. Otherwise, otherwise yeah. we're going to be here. This guy, you know, he's playing games. So let's go to the next prophecy. We I was going to do that like half an hour ago. We have, shown, <laughs> we have shown Mirza to be a liar on many fronts. Let's go to the next prophecy. Over to yeah. you, Imtiaz Bhai. Next prophecy. Yes, I can. Adnan Bhai, because Alhamdulillah, in our tradition, we respect our brothers, our elders, inshallah, even though I have very strong point, but let me, inshallah, proceed to the next point. 
Okay. okay. Please. Uh, so, Razil, I'm going to bring somebody else in if that's okay. And with I you. the last concluding point. You said that already. Okay. Anything new. I won't mention any. Then everybody will go again back, no, back and forth. One, no. one minute. Never no. stop. No. You, should, no. you should let the no. guests okay. finish. No. Not no. necessarily. No. 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 Let no. you make a closing no. statement already. Just, just 30 I seconds. I didn't. Buddy. 30 seconds. Okay, no. give him 30 seconds. I, I, 30 I, I, seconds. No, no, Hashim, Hashim, Hashim. Okay. Hashim, Hashim no? Sorry, just I did not allow 10 India. seconds. I did not allow India. India had seconds. a very good point to make. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Okay. Ten seconds. We're going to go to the next prophecy. Otherwise, this guy is going to be playing all night. I'll tell games. you what, Razir, we'll do another one, inshallah. You can come in and make your points. In Hijri, yes, convert 72 to Hijri. It go. was fulfilled. So now let's say it's fulfilled, but now we say it's fulfilled. Okay, thank you very much. I knew he's going to make his point. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got a guest here from Imam Abdufur. Okay, next prophecy, and then we can bring the Imam Sahib. Uh, Let's see if he's got a point to make. Imam Sahib, you got a point. Where are you calling from, by the way? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I'm calling from Samoa Island, but oh, I'm Allah. originally from Ghana. Alhamdulillah. Are you Ahmadi? Well, first of all, yes, I am an Ahmadi Muslim, a very strong believer in Mirza Gulam Ahmad alayhi salam. Now, Adnan Rashid made a statement right now that Mirza Gulam Ahmed alayhi salam does not even deserve to be a school teacher. Just about a few minutes ago. And Adnan Rashid is also on record for saying that Mirza Gulam Ahmed alayhi salam's writing, particularly Barahini Ahmadiyya, is one of the greatest writing in Islam. So I want to ask him, is that not a contradiction? Good question. Very good question. Someone's character determines how qualified... No, I am not person. asking about character. Well, I'm answering, I'm, I'm, answering, answering. I'm answering, I'm answering. No, 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 brother. I'm, 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 I'm not answering. asking about character. I am answering. I am, I am answering. Mutual. He's answering Mutual. in this way. Let him answer, Imam. Yeah. Imam Saab, Imam Saab, I am answering your question. Someone to be a good author and a good writer doesn't make him a good person necessarily. Okay, when someone writes a good book and someone is a good author and writes the truth in it, because Barahine Ahmadiyya has good arguments for Islam, it has wow. at that time. When can you mute him? Can you mute him? Yeah, can you mute him? Hashim, can you mute him? Please? Yeah, I did. Mute I did yeah. Okay. Okay, hear my answer, Imam Saab. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. You have a beautiful smile, but stop laughing. Stop laughing. You're not listening, are you? Are you listening? Are you listening? Okay, good. Listening. Someone who is a good writer and makes good argument is not necessarily a good person. And if a person is not a good person and a person is a liar, and is a person of no credibility and is a person of contradictions, that person should not be a school teacher. Do you understand me? Barahine Ahmadiyya has correct Akida. For example, it says Isa salam, is alive in the heavens with Allah and will return near the end of times, which you people don't accept, which Mirza himself later on changed. He changed his belief. He changed his Akida. Okay. First he writes, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. First he writes, first he writes in Barahini Ahmadiyya that Jesus is alive with Allah and he will return near the end of times. That is something beautiful. That's a beautiful Akida. That's our belief. And Mirza confirmed it. So that's a good thing about the book. Now, same guy who wrote this book later on started to make the blunders we have already mentioned. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to let you defend Mirza now. Let's see what you can do for Mirza Saab. Okay? Mirza Saab said... So, in so a, I asked, I, I asked a, a specific question. Wait, wait, wait. You have spoken for... Pause, I, pause, I have been, pause. This I have is been not a debate. Pause. Listening. Uh, course, Adnan Bhai, course, we want to go back course. to the prophecies because this will carry on otherwise. This is a tactic. Yeah, yeah. Let me, Don't forget. Let, okay, yes. 
Okay. Okay. So, so let's go back to the prophecies. Imam, so, so Imam yeah. Sahab, Imam Sahab, now that you're here, we're going to put a prophecy to you. Let's see if you can respond to it. Imtaz, go yeah. ahead. Um, just, 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 uh, Brother Hashim. Yes. I asked a specific question. First of all, I am here to to help all the audience to also know the truth. And I saw that you were with uh, Brother Raziullah for a long time going back and forth. But a simple statement that Brother Adnan Rashid made that I wanted to make a clarification on. I wanted him to make a clarification on. Now, this is a man who has the ability to defend Islam. Yes, but Imam, and you need to understand that we yes, have a specific we, we have a specific yeah yeah you need to understand we have a specific topic and the thing is every time we sidetrack we just go unnecessary tangents no, no, I, I, which I will not just, benefit anyone I, I was just coming to i was just coming to that okay make your point quickly i'll give you one minute but i want to come back on the topic at hand which is about the prophecies of uh, of gulam ahmed yes so first of all the point that i was trying to make is that Adnan Rashid accepts that the writings of Mirza Gulam Ahmed Ali Salam is, and particularly for Bar Bar Barahini Ahmadiyya, is the, one of the greatest work in Islam. How does a defender of Islam writing a book being one of the greatest in defense of Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not even fit to be a teacher? That is what I cannot understand. So that is what I want Adnan Rashid to address. Now going okay. back into okay. going back to say that uh, <laughs> can I address? Can I can I address? Go, go, can going I address? back to say can that uh, he can said that Isa is alayhi salam is in heaven and later on he, we know that can he I, said that when he was when he can Allah I, had not appointed him I, as a prophet. Okay, so Imam, I, you want I, an answer or you don't want an answer? Yes, if I you, want an answer. Yes. Okay, let Adnan speak. Then. Okay, and please do not I interject. Believe, yeah. I believe Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani wrote some good arguments in Barahini Ahmadiyya. I believe that. But later on, Mirza Ahmad, having done some good work, became a kafir, became a disbeliever by claiming to be a prophet when he had no authority to do so. And on top of that, his own writings later on show that he was a liar, mentally deranged, a foolish man who was actually not, he didn't know what he was doing. But now, I'll are, give you, you other examples for that. Wait, 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 wait. Imam, Imam Sahib, Imam Sahib, yeah, Imam Sahib. Imam Sahib, let me finish. I, Imam Sahib, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I'll give you another the example. There was a man called Rashad Khalifa who wrote a book titled 19. He proposed a theory from the Quran that the Quran is mathematically coded by using the number 19. That book was hit as one of the greatest books. Are you listening, Imam Sahib, or are you paying some your attention somewhere else? Listen to me. That book was hailed as a great book by the scholars. Same man, Rashad Khalifa, Rashad Khalifa, same man, later on apostatized and used his own same theory to challenge Islam. Rashad, Rashad Khalifa now, if I say today, that his book on 19 was a good book. Am I endorsing him as a good person? Am I endorsing him as a valid source of Islam? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You have limited brain cells, the Ahmadis. I don't mean you as a person. I mean Ahmadis. Limited brain cells that cannot get the message out. I don't mean all Ahmadis, by the way. I mean the missionaries in particular. The missionary, the Ahmadi missionaries, they have limited brain cells because they misquote everyone. What they do is they ignore the fatwa of kufr upon Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, which was uh, facilitated by Batalavi and other scholars. What they do is they take Batalavi's earlier writings, like what they do to me, what they're doing to me right now. Okay, They do that to Batalavi. Batalavi Similarly, praised Brahine Ahmadiyya when it was authored. Okay? In the 1880s, when Brahine Ahmadiyya was authored, Batalvi praised it for its virtues because it had some virtues. 
But later on, Batarvi is the same man who declared takfir upon Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, made him, basically called him a kafir and got a fatwa on him. Ahmadis, the missionaries, completely ignore the fatwa and they use his earlier praise, which was done for the right reasons, for the right time. Okay? So, you guys need to have some shame and get the message. Over to you now. Okay, thank you. Um, so, first of all, everyone knows that uh, Rashad Khalifa was killed. And so you cannot compare him to someone who is claiming to be a prophet and who has been protected upon all the accusations, upon all the hatred, was still protected throughout his life until he completed his life. You cannot compare him to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed alayhi salam in any way. That's the first point. Allah himself promised in the Quran that he will protect anyone, I mean, he will kill anyone who lies about him. So for Rashad Khalifa to be killed is a clear indication that he cannot be a true person. I am saying that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed alayhi salam has the ability to defend Islam, to even write a great book in Islam. How will you say that such a person does not fit to teach? Now, you okay, claim that, um, um, just a minute, just a minute, you claim that he, he was doing good things at the beginning and later on, because he claimed to be a prophet, he, the, the, the people turned against him. That is the case of all prophets, including the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. No, when the no, people no, usually called him no, as Sadiq wa no. Amin, but when he claimed no. to be a prophet, they referred him <laughs> to be a liar. In the Quran, the Quran says that he is a madman. According to the Quran, okay. the people call the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a madman. So your calling okay. Mirza Ghulam okay. Ahmed alayhi wa name does not change the fact that he is a prophet. Okay. okay. Imam, Imam Saab, Imam Saab, let's have a conversation. Let's talk. Who called him madman? Who called him madman? Who called him madman? The Quran Who? says that they called him. I don't need Who? evidence of someone okay. calling him to accept no, him. No, 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 no. Imam Saab, the Quran speaks the truth. I agree with you. Tell me Good. who was the Quran. Yes, who was the Quran referring to that they called him madman? I don't I, I don't even need evidence. Once the Quran says no, it's no, I, I no, accept no, it. no, 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 no. You wait, need to understand wait, the wait, question. Wait, wait, Try to understand wait, wait, the question. Wait, wait, who was making the allegations? Answer, that is my answer to the question. My answer to the question okay, is Okay, Adnan, tell him it doesn't I matter. Accept, I accept every wait, word of the Quran. Wait, wait, so once the wait, Quran wait, says it, wait, wait, I don't need an evidence to say that because this I don't think you understood Imam the question. Sahab. Adnan, maybe... Yeah, Imam Sahab. You, Imam Sahab. Give the answer. Yeah. Give you the explain, answer. You explain the question. You're, okay, you're, so you, you, Imam, Imam, basically what he's asking is who made the allegation regarding the Prophet Sallallahu that he was a madman? Was it the believers or was it the disbelievers? In simple terms. It, Have is, a the disbelievers, it, it is those who did not believe in him. Exactly. Who so the disbelievers, yeah? Just a minute, just a minute. I know what it is those who do not accept him, just as Adnan Rashid does not accept Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and he is calling him names, it is those who do not believe in him that are calling him madman. Okay. Yeah. 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 You got a point? According to, even about even about Anabi Isa alayhi salam, even about Anabi Isa alayhi salam, we have evidence that they call him a madman. Okay. This is the case of all prophets. We got your point, Imam. Okay, on, okay. okay. Imam Saab, Imam Saab, let's have a conversation. Are you willing to do that? Of course. Yes? Okay, brilliant. When the Quran says that people called him a madman, who is the Quran talking about? Which people? <laughs> I, have, I have answered this question. I have just answered you. No, the I answer it again. It may... answer. Brother Hashim just explained, was it the believers or the non-believers? And I, yes. I just told you, it is those Imam who Sa did not believe in him. Those okay. who so he's, not he's saying the disbelievers, Adnan. Carry on. Okay. I, I not call him a man, but just as you do not believe in Mirza Gulam Ahmad, okay. and okay. you are calling him names, the same happened. The same thing happened. And the same happens to all prophets. Okay, I think we lost Adnan, his connection issues again. And in fact, um, one point that I want, I want to add before Adnan comes is that yeah. the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, yes, has compared Muslims to the Jews. So just as the Jews were calling their Messiah 
names and not believing in him for over 2,000 years, the same have the Muslims rejected their Messiah and calling him names, just as Adnan Rashid is doing. Okay, so when let Imtiaz let Imtiaz come in because I think Adnan's having some issues with his country. I just, wanted, just, to make, go ahead. I just wanted to make a point. Then Imtiaz you you already made a point several times. Let let Imtiaz come in. Go on, Imtiaz. Okay. So Imam Saab, uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you on the platform. Uh, definitely, uh, you have every right to defend your religion. Imam Saab, I just want to mention. Am I in already? Yes. yes, but you got a different picture on your. <laughs> okay, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Adnan, you got a different profile okay. picture? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of my friends. I'm using his account. So sorry about okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Isn't my friend isn't my friend amazing? Good looking. He, huh? he's, <laughs> he's, got, he's, got, he's, got, he's got swag. <laughs> <laughs> he's got swag. Okay. So 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 my, the camera before the camera turns on, I want to talk to Imam Saab nicely, beautifully, compassionately. Before Imam Saab shouts. I, I request that you remain calm and answer my questions so that we can have a fruitful conversation and end it very quickly. Imam Sahib, the Quran says people called him uh, uh, Majnoon, mad, right? Okay. Uh, so these people are disbelievers. These are Mushrikeen of Makkah, correct? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Correct? And disbelievers. Okay. All of these people, Imam Sahib, all of them, Every single one of them believed in Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before his death. All of them, every single one of them. Wait now, let me. No, it is, it is not. It is not true. Imam, let him uh, let him finish, and then you can come in, Imam. Sir. Imam let Adnan finish, finish, and then you can come in. Okay. Yeah. Your argument does not stand. Every single time you're trying to bring the Quran in, it doesn't support you. Amazingly, your Ahmadi religion. Okay, the Quran tells us that these people were calling the Prophet a madman, a magician, okay, a soothsayer, all these things. Okay, okay, uh -huh. all of these people before the death of the Prophet, وسلم, they believed in him. The Qurayshis are the same people who fought for Islam, they went as far as China and Spain. These same people, not one of them was left that they believed in Islam and the Messenger of Allah. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani, when people called him mad, mentally deranged, a kafir, okay, a liar, a kadhab, a dajjal, majority of his own relatives, including Muhammad Begum, her husband, and the father of Muhammad Begum, which we will talk about in due course, his own relatives never believed in him and died believing in orthodox Islam with pride. So your point is redundant. Stop making lame points and wasting your time. Over to you. Can I, can I respond to that? First of all, it is not true that all, everyone who was calling the prophet names accepted him. In fact, it is a fact that they, they even fought with him. Some even died in the Akufu. They fought with the prophet and his sahaba, and some died in the in, in the process. So not all of them accepted him. Number two, number two, during the time of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there were Jews in Medina, there were Christians in Medina. Not all of them accepted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They did not accept him because they did not believe in him. So it is not true for you to make this claim that all of them accepted him. And in fact. Even if we should accept your argument, they accepted him at what time? During the last period, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was even was about to go to his Lord. Islam continues to till today, and in the Arab world, there are people who still do not accept the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, what is this argument? Mirza Gulam Ahmed Alaihi Salam also came. Allah sent him revelations. He claimed to be a prophet. And as a prophet, not every single person accepted him, including those who were praising him before, just as the prophet. They were praising him, but when he claimed to be a prophet, as is happened to all prophets, they now turned back to reject him and call him names. That is what okay. happened. Okay, okay Adnan, I, I think we... 
you know, you know, to be honest, this is not going anywhere. Let's not waste time on this. Yes. Let's bring okay. some. Let, let me quickly, okay. Let me quickly. Let me quickly say the few few sentences and we move on. No problem. Okay. okay. Firstly, you made a claim that they were calling him uh, madman. I asked you who, which people. You confirmed the Qureshis, his enemies, who were Mushrikeen. I did not, I did not say Qureshis. Uh, uh, I said the disbelievers. I, I did Mushriks. not say Qureshis. The Mushriks. I, I asked you specifically, Mushriks, Mushrikeen, and you said yes. Mushrikeen, yes? Mushrikeen were Qureshis. Are Christians not Mushrikeen? Okay. Christians okay. are also right. Mushrikeen. Yeah, uh, no, okay. they're not. The Quran does not call them Mushrikeen because they're Ahlul Kitab. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're so jahil. So the you Quran, are you saying the Quran does not say Christians associate, associate with Allah? Is that what you are saying? Does, the Quran, Quran, show me where the Quran calls them specifically. Quran calls them Mushrikeen. The Quran does not have to show use me, the me, word. Show me, show me. The Quran, show, show this me. is not going anywhere. Adnan, yeah, I told you. Let's, let's leave it here. Let's leave it here. Wait, the, wait, the Christians wait. are associating partners with Allah. That is clear. The Quran, the Quran, the Quran mentions indirectly about the shirk of the Jews and the Christians, no doubt. Okay, but the Quran gives them a title, a title Ahlul Kitab. Mushrikeen specifically, when the Quran mentions Mushrikeen, it specifically talks about idol worshippers of Quraysh. So uh, I've, I've responded to you. Your point doesn't stand. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani died a very sad man. Okay, died uh, defecating next to his bed and then he fell on his bed and he died. Okay, this is how he died. He was disease ridden. You, did you did you know that he claimed to be Masih Mahmud? He claimed to be the Messiah. You know the term Messiah. The term Masih means uh, one of the meanings is that the one who touches people, Masaha, Masaha, the one who touches people and heals them. Okay, Jesus, Isa Islam. One of his greatest miracles was that he would touch people and he would heal them. Here we have a man called Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, who claims to be Masih Maw'ud, the promised Messiah, who was disease riddled, ridden, riddled with disease, riddled, diabetes, diarrhea, okay, for so, years. Uh, His son, uh, wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 I'm, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm wait, 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 finish. Let me finish. When, let me finish. His own son in Syria. No, I just wanted to His say own that son. don't do Bahiti. His own don't son, do wait, wait, just, just be calm. wait, wait. Let me finish. Okay, his own son, his own son in Sirat al Mahdi writes about him that my father suffered from severe bouts of diarrhea, severe bouts of diarrhea for years. And he was Masih Maud, he was the promised Messiah, he was the return of Jesus. Please, and I can can I people. That? Wait, can wait, I, wait, I let, me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. We're gonna have to move on. You can stay with us, Imam Sab. You're most welcome to stay with us. But we're going to move on to the next topic so that we can do the prophecies. The topic of the day but, is prophecies. Just, you just come in. Me, Wait, let me, me finish. Me let me finish. Today. Let me finish. Let me finish first. So when you guys come to us, okay, to be honest with you, you know what? Uh, I really feel sorry for the people of Ghana in particular where the Ahmadis have gone to uh you know simple people and you know ha they have managed to deceive them because people of ghana don't know urdu the people of ghana they don't know urdu they don't know the writings of mirza they don't know who mirza Ghulam ahmed is people of ghana accepted this cult thinking that this is the religion of islam they think this is the religion of islam but they don't know what the real religion of islam is my brother okay so Mirza Ghulam right. Ahmad Qadiani, who you claim to be the Messiah, could not even heal himself, let alone others. How can he be the return of Jesus Christ? How can he okay, be the return you. of let the me, Messiah when he is riddled, riddled with... I think I gave it two minutes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Imam, let, yeah. let him tell me... Let him just make a quick point. Wait a minute, Imam. Let him just make a quick point and then you can come in. And that will be your last point, yeah? Okay, go ahead, Imtiaz Bey. Okay, Jazakal Ashim Bhai. Okay, Imam Sahib, first of all, uh, uh, let me say it because you know, you said to Adnan Bhai that you, you don't get heated. Imam Sahib, you know, these topics are very close to our hearts. Okay, this is not, this is something sensitive. It was not to be disrespectful to you, it happens to all of us. Okay, because these topics are very sensitive, close to our hearts. So please accept apologies. It's not to hurt your feelings, number one. 
Number two, Imam Sahib, the point is this. Adnan Bhai initially said, and which initiated the whole conversation, Adnan Bhai said, and this is what this was your objection on Adnan, that how can you call up this person who was defending Prophet Muhammad who was defending the deen, how can you call him that he was not even qualified to be a teacher? Imam Sahib, my point, my simple request is this, obviously because this, today's uh, live stream is not on this topic. If you are interested, okay, if you are interested, let me request you, okay, we'll make topic character of Ghulam Ahmad according to his own writings and according to his own followers. And then I will let you speak that you tell me if a person has this character, is it justifiable to say that his character was very, very questionable and it is not even uh, good to be a teacher? So I will let, but now, now the problem is because stream is not on this topic, okay? And last point, Imam Sahib, I want to make is this. Please pay attention to this, this very important point. When Ahmadis, you know, when they try to address the objections against Mirza Sahib, what they say, oh, this prophet, you know, was rejected, as you said as well, oh, hey, they were, every nation called their prophet a liar, etc., etc. Imam Sahib, we are not discussing about a prophet. The point is when Isa ibn Maryam, this was the claim of Mirza Sahib, that when Isa ibn Maryam will come, Imam Sahib, I invite you, please look it, it, into Islamic literature. We do not have any evidence that when Isa ibn Maryam will, will come and make a claim, any Messiah, please, this term, Masih Ma'ud, or promised Messiah is a wrong term. It's a Jewish term. We are not waiting for any Messiah. Christians and Muslims, we both agree that Isa ibn Maryam, may Allah uh, give him high status, has already come as Messiah. This term is very deceptive. Please don't buy this term. Masih Mo. It's a Jewish term because Jews are still waiting for the promised Messiah. We are waiting for Isa ibn Maryam to come back. We are not waiting for any Messiah. These two things, they may seem close to each other, but they are very different. For example, if a, if, if a person comes, he says, I'm a Messiah. There are both possibilities. People might accept him, people might reject him. But when Isa ibn Maryam will come, Imam Sahib, the whole Ummah will accept him because they are waiting for him to come back. And we have all the hopes of peace and prosperity in this world pinned on his second coming. So there is no such thing okay. when see him home. The whole Guys, thing I is think, Isa ibn Maryam will you come Allow me to, to respond to the two yeah. brothers now. Okay, please. Um, Imam Sahib, go ahead for two minutes. Adnan, go, you, go, have, go you, have, you have... You have uh, would you allow me to respond to what yeah, he's saying? Yeah, he's saying two minutes. He's saying yes. two minutes. Go on. Two, minutes before, two minutes, uh, Yeah. No, no, no. You, because you made some claims, I need to respond to that before. Yeah. You, said that, you, you said that you are sad for Ghanaians for accepting Muraza Gula, Ahmed Ali Islam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ahmadiyyat is growing very well in Ghana. And I'm very grateful to Allah for allowing Ahmadiyyat to grow in Ghana. First of all, you said because we don't, because we don't understand Urdu. And that is the point I am taking you on on that. And that is why the Ahmadi brother Raziullah was on you that you should discuss points from the Quran. Because every Muslim in Ghana, at least majority of them, can recite the Quran, but they may not know what you are saying, whether it is true or not. If any Ahmadi doesn't come here to disprove you, any Ahmadi who can read Urdu, if they don't come here to disprove you, how will they, how will they know that you are speaking the truth or the Ahmadi Muslim is speaking the truth. But for the Quran, it is abundant online, everywhere. Anybody can read it. And that is why they were calling you to discuss the death of Anabi Isa alayhi salam when the Quran is clear that Anabi Isa alayhi salam is dead. If Ahmadi Muslims in Ghana are accepting Mirza Gulab Ahmad alayhi salam, it is based on his teaching from the Quran, which is true, which is accepted by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Sahaba. Number one. Number two, you claim that Mirza Gulam Ahmed alayhi salam cannot be a messi because he was sick. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself was also sick. Because prophets are men and so anything that can happen to a man can also happen to them. And it is not true. It is, it is never true that Mirza Gulam Ahmed alayhi salam died in, 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 in toilet. It is never true. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, you made that claim. You said that 
You said no, that maybe you I have just forgotten right said, now. You said that. Okay, and I I'm said, saying that it okay. is never let me, let me, that let me, let me, let me correct you. Let me correct you. Let me correct you. you know, that, I that said, happened to I you. Said, he I was sick because to, he was a man. I, and like the I Prophet said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before... Wait, wait, let him finish. Let him finish. I don't interject you. You are interjecting me now. Will you allow me to make my point? But you're lying on me. It's okay, Adnan. I, Adnan, make your point after I you finish. You got ten seconds. Brother, brother Hashim, you should have allowed I, me to land. You gave me two minutes. You should have allowed yeah. me to land. You, are, you have ten I, seconds I left. Imagine. His own son. His own son. He, his own son writes in his book that Mirza Saab relieved himself. He had a diarrhea, very severe bout of diarrhea. He relieved himself. It's a lie. It's not bed. true. And wait, wait. It is not true. I will pull out the. I will pull out right now. I'll pull out right now. You want to listen? You want to hear? It is not. You want to hear? Please, can you allow me okay. to respond? Okay, okay. Go ahead. You talk. I'll show you. So I'll show now, you right now. Now, the point is the point that I was making is that when you pull out a, anything, how will somebody verify? Out. Whether it is Urdu, whether it is Persian or whatever, you, how would they verify? But as I'm sitting here, check. I have Quran with me. The Quran is translated. Sunnis have translated Quran. Ahmadis have translated Quran. Shia has translated Quran. Anybody who has Quran can easily verify subjects that are discussed based on the Quran. And the Ahmadi Muslims are asking you that if indeed you are Muslims who believe in the Quran, yeah. then let us discuss based on the Quran. Okay, so, so Imam, let, let him tell us come in now. Because I think you have made your... You made your point. You don't allow you made me your... to finish. No, no, you please made your point. Allow me to land. We gave you more than two minutes now. No, 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 no. But we gave you more than two minutes. Was speaking. Allow me to land and then you come in. Yeah. And many Muslims are saying that the Quran is our Islam. So whatever we want to discuss, let us base our discussions on the Quran. For any Muslim who will reject arguments from the Quran, in my opinion, is not a believer in the Quran. We and don't so reject the Quran. Cannot, but anyway, thank you, Imam. Accuse, they cannot accuse Ahmadi Muslims of being kufar, kufar. They are rather being are becoming kufar in the Quran because they are rejecting the arguments from the Quran. That's okay, the thank you. Thank you. Go on, MTS. Okay, uh, Imam Saab, uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, I requested you because you. this is how everything started. You claim... That how can we say these kind of things against Mirza Sahib? Okay, this was a starting point. I, I have requested you. So what do you think about this? We want to present to you evidence from his own writings, from his own followers. And then we want you to tell us that if he has these writings, these character, are we rightfully saying him that he was not a person of good character or are we lying at him? Number one. And number two, okay. Very quickly, because this is again, this is not a topic. Inshallah, Brother Hashi will give you one minute. Inshallah, my Imam Sahib. I want you to read from the Quran that because you said come to the Quran. Just inshallah for, for all of us. Read that verse from the Quran which says that Isa ibn Maryam has died, number one. And number two, Isa ibn Maryam will come back in the last days as a form of another person. So this number two, please quote, listen, before you open, listen the point very carefully. You need to show me where Quran says that an other person will come in the later days, in the last days, and he will be Isa ibn Maryam. Show me that verse. First of all, the Quran is very clear. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ No, 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 please, please Imam Sahib, Imam Sahib, no. Asha, my, Asha, my, Asha, my, Asha, no, 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 Imam Sahib. You need please, to understand please. the question and answer the I question only, please. please. Because please. I've already given you guys more time about this topic, which is not really the topic. Ima, just Asha, so, Asha, listen, Asha, yeah. Asha, the Imam question Asha, is very clear. Just answer the question, please, Imam Sahib. Yeah, because Imam was trying to say that we Muslims are not living by the Quran. I simply said you one thing. Please listen to the question very carefully, Imam Sahib. My question is, show me that verse of the Quran which says that Isa ibn Maryam will come in the last days as a form of an other person. No, you first said that I should show you a verse of the Quran where another Isa is dead. No, 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 no I no, don't want no. that. No, 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 no. I want the second we one. We specified the second one. Just yes. answer that because... You're just wasting okay, time otherwise. Answer. Let me answer, no problem. First Sorry. of all, the Quran says he is dead. So the Quran will not say he will come back. No, no, no. I'm answering you. 
You yeah, let him answer his way. It's okay, Mtiaz. The Quran says that Anabi Isa alayhi salam is dead. So the Quran and the Quran clearly says that anyone, any any people who have come before that have passed away, that have died, it is haram for them to come back. So the Quran will not make this claim and then tell you that Anabi Isa alayhi salam will come back. So Anabi Isa alayhi salam is dead according to the Quran and will never come back. So if you see in a hadith that a Masih is promised that he will come, then somebody else will come. And we have precedent. We have precedent in history. That precedent is that and maybe, uh, in, 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 among the Jews, Elijah is supposed to have ascended to the sky, as you Muslims believe, even though there are proofs that Elijah, Elijah was not ascended. So Elijah will come back as the Jews believe and as Muslims also believe that Anabi Isa is in the skies and he will come back. Now, the Quran makes it clear that Anabi Isa is dead. So when you see that somebody else will come, just as somebody else came in the spirit of Elijah, so shall somebody else come in the name of Anabi Isa alayhi salam. That is the precedent we have. And now, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives a similarity between the Muslims and the, uh, uh, and the Jews. Hazwa Na'ali bin Na'al. And then he says that they will resemble like two pairs of shoes. The resemblance here is that the Jews are believing that a prophet has ascended to the skies. The Muslims are also believing that a prophet has ascended to the skies. And then they are believing that that prophet will come from the skies. Because of that, they did not believe in their Messiah. The Muslims, in the same way, are also believing that a prophet has ascended to the skies. Because of that, they are not accepting their Messiah. Number one. Number two, and Nabi Isa alayhi salam in the Quran the Quran is clear that Anabi Isa is a Rasul ila Bani Israel. Anabi Isa is not a Rasul ila Alam. He is not a Rasul for the whole of mankind, but a Rasul to the to only the Banu Israel. Yeah, your time if is Anabi up. Anabi Isa yeah. alayhi salam will come back for the whole of humanity. Then what should we do to that verse of the Quran so where it says that? Can I? 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 Can Advan Bhai, just one statement, just one statement, inshallah, okay? Imam Sahib, you can watch this stream again. You said to all of us that this Quran, this is our deen, come to this Quran. I simply ask you the question that quote me that, that verse from the Quran. Either it says, you said that Isa has dead, it, it will not come. No problem. L leave on the side. Quote me that verse from the Quran which says that Masi Maud will come in the later days. Quote me that verse first, number one. And number after that, when it comes to Ahadith, we can discuss. You invited us to Quran. I want that one verse, just one verse from the Quran which says that Masi Maud will come in the later days. This was the claim of your prophet. Show me that verse. According to the Quran, Surah Al Hud, verse 18. The, uh, the, the witness that is coming is from the Ummah of Muhammad. Wasalam. He's not from the Ummah of Anabi Musa. Sorry, That's number part, one. Number two, number two, Anabi Isa, alayhi salam, which the Muslims are waiting for, as I, may, as I mentioned, according to the Quran, he is only a Rasul, Ila Bani Israel. And this statement was made to his mother even before his birth. So if he was supposed to come back in the latter days, that would also have been said. Now, for anybody to reject that verse of the Quran. Which verse? And Which now, verse? please let me make my point. And now run around and say that that Anab is a whom the Quran says that he is only a Rasul to the Banu Israel will come back, which the Quran hasn't said. That is false. Now, Imam when we call you to the Quran, when we call you to the Quran, we call you to the Quran because the Quran is the first point of call in Islam. Yes. Now, yeah, which, the Quran which, which says that, about the just a which, minute, which, just a minute. The Quran says that, as I mentioned, in Surah Al-Hud, and maybe yes. I should read it. Give me the verse number. In Surah Al-Hud, Allah yeah. Almighty says, Allah Almighty says, says that, eight, verse eight. The, you know the witness that is coming, and let me, let me just read it. Which, which verse number? Verse 18. That would be verse 17 18, in, okay. in yours. 
ويتلوه شاهد منه أفمن كان على بينة من ربي ويتلوه شاهد منه this shahid that is coming is from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is not from the ummah of the Banu Israel and this shahid we believe that is the Masih who is promised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come so if you want a verse from the Brother Quran which proves that Brother the Ingeos. Messiah will come from the, from okay. the Ummah of Muhammad, wait, wait. this is the verse wait, I have just wait. given you. Wait, wait, Brother Mtiaz, why are we now? The now topic? the second point is that wait, wait, the second wait, 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 point. Wait, wait, I, I, wait, I wait, 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 wait a minute. When we agreed, when we agreed, when we agreed that we're not gonna fall for any of the digressions, why are we discussing this topic? That's because okay. I told you not to no, do it, no, and you yeah, you went into it. You made it for 40 minutes unnecessary. No, but he went are, on that what, because he what, thought what, that what, he, has, he, he has got some does. straws to cut. Where, but when where, he sees that he's been exposed... The, okay, okay, Imam Sahib, Imam Sahib, Imam Sahib, can I have a, I, I'm going to ask you a question now. Very quickly, we're going to deal with this point and we're going to move on, okay? Imam Sahib, if I show you a reference from Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's own son, that his own father, before he died, he had diarrhea next to his bed, he relieved himself and then he fell on his bed and died. Then what? Okay, first of all, I am not in a I'm I'm not in a position to confirm what you what you are saying. But the point is that I was giving the reference. I also show you, wait, wait, wait. If I also show you that the, the Prophet correct. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during before his correct. death was sick on his bed. What then what? Okay. G. Reference to Kali. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani ke bete ka reference. Okay. If I show you, first of all, you keep bringing the prophet in to save your liar. So let me explain now. Where is the difference? Your prophet, so-called, yeah, this was his condition. Now that you brought this upon yourself. I, I didn't want to do this, but you're the one who did this to yourself. So I'm going to now teach you a lesson. Okay. This is your Masih Mawood. Okay. This is your Masih Mahud, your promised Messiah. Yes? You say that he was the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah? Okay. This is what his condition was. I'm going to read references. You know Rouhani Khazain? Rouhani Khazain? Yes or no? Imam Sahib, Rouhani Khazain. Do you know? Yes, I know Rouhani Imam? Khazain. Okay. Uh, first of all, let, let me say that, Wait, wait, uh, wait. Imam Sahib. Imam Sahib. Imam Sahib. I wanted Rahani you design. to add, I, I wanted Imam you to, because Sahib. I, 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 I Sahib. cannot, I cannot Imam speak Sahib. Okay, Imam Adnan, Sahib. carry on. Carry on, carry on. Rouhani Kazain, chapter 19, page 435. Mirza writes, Mujhe do mars daman gheer hain. Ek jisam ke upar ke hisse mein ke sar dard aur dorane sar aur dorane khun kam ho kar haat pair sar ho jana. Nabas kam ho jana or dusre jisam ke niche ke hisse mein ke peshab kasrat se aana aksar dust aate rehna ye dono bimariyan kareeb 20 bars se hain Mirza Sahib is writing that I have two diseases one on top of the body and one on the lower part of the body the reference is Rohani Kazain volume 19 page 435 he said the top of the body the disease is headaches. In my head, I get headaches. Okay? And because of that, I become very cold and my, um, what do you call it? This, um, uh, I think Adnan by uh, has a... Um, so before Adnan... Adnan no, 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 Imam Sahib, please, please wait, wait, um, because you, you uh, gave me the word. Just, no, just, no, no, just, 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 just some few seconds. First of all, I wanted you to add uh, Razi Ula because he is speaking Urdu. Razi Ula is also an Urdu speaker so that he can confirm what he is saying. But the are, point you saying I want to... are you saying you don't trust the translation Adnan gave you? Huh? Are you saying you do not trust the translation that Adnan gave you. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, but so, we don't need Razi Allah. They can speak all the time. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Do not trust him. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, well, I don't trust it because I, 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 I do not have anything to verify. 
that's fine. Can no I, problem. The other people will point. correct him if he's wrong. Are the, are you, you that's saying, why I want to you, add Razi. Imam Saab, Imam Saab, I don't need to. Imam Saab, Imam Saab, do you think I have an audacity to quote a page number and a volume number knowing well thousands of people are watching, mostly Ahmadis are watching, and I'm going to lie about a reference? No, I've got the reference in front of me right now. Volume 19. No, but there, there, have, been, there have been a lot of Imam instances Saab. where there Imam have been Saab. a lot. Imam it's okay, Saab. I'll finish, finish your point. Imam Saab. Volume 19, uh, page 435, Rohani Khazain. He says, I have an upper upper body disease and I have a, I have a lower body disease. Upper body is headaches, severe headaches. Lower body is extreme uh, bouts of urination. I get too much urine. And I am mostly suffering from diarrhea. And I have had these problems for nearly 20 years. Naseem Dawat, Rohani Khazain, Volume 19, page 435. Then he goes on to say, in Rohani Khazain, Volume 17, page 470 to 471. Main ek daimul marz admi I am a person who is perma permanently struck by disease. I am translating these words very responsibly. I am permanently struck by disease. I am permanently struck by disease. I have headaches. And I have sleeplessness. I have diabetes. Sometimes, hundred, hundred times I have to go and urinate. Is kadar kasras se peshab. Jis kadar awaris, zof, bagara hote hain. sab mere shamali hal rate So I have too much urination. And that makes me weak. Then... Next reference, Rohani Khazain, Volume 18, page 613. I had a lot of pain for my diabetes. Many times, I have a lot of pain in I am diabetic, severely diabetic. Sometimes, I have to go to the toilet to urinate a hundred times. My question is, when was he praying his salah? Okay. If he's going a hundred times to the toilet, when is he praying his salah and uh, i have okay. a multiple if I, if I can wait, wait, respond. okay 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 wait wait before can you i respond, respond because you have asked the question yeah 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 you, you, you i we, okay. will, we will give you we will give you wait 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 okay. wait let me, finish. The question. let me finish let me finish you have, this guy you have given, you have given about two listen, or three quotations now and well, I'm, finishing. I, I'm finishing i'm finishing you bring the prophet of islam in to save your liar and your disease-stricken uh, messiah Okay, the, pro the problem here is, there is a problem. Why am I mentioning these things? And the fact that he died upon diarrhea. He, the last act of his life was diarrhea. Okay, this is not a big deal. This doesn't prove him to be a liar necessarily. Get my point. I'm not trying to say that Mirza was a liar because he ended his life with a, with a diarrhea. No, that's not my claim. My so claim that, is... That is why, no, that is why you shouldn't finish, have brought that point finish, at all. Brother. Brother, brother, please let me finish. My problem is that Mirza claimed to be Masih Maud, the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, the man who would heal by a touch. The only way we know Jesus in the Quran, how do we know Jesus in the Quran? What was his greatest uh, virtue? Jesus would touch people. And he would heal people. He would heal lepers. He made birds with his hands and he put them in the air. Allah had given him powers to heal people. Try to get my point. And Allah is so amazing. Allahu Akbar. Allah is so great that this liar was self-confessingly telling us who claimed to be the promised Messiah, Isa salam, Jesus, that I... I'm disease stricken for 20 years. 
I have to go to the toilet a hundred times a day. I am so severely diabetic and I have so many headaches that I don't have a normal life. I'm weak. So what claim am I making? Here you have a promised Messiah who is supposed to heal people by touching them. He himself is disease stricken. So don't take it to the prophet. Don't take it to Moses. Don't take it to Abraham. Don't because Abraham, Moses and Muhammad alayhim salam were not messiahs. They were not the ones who touched people and healed necessarily, although they have miracles. Wait, Jesus was special. Jesus was special in this. He was special. He would touch people and heal them. Mirza was disease stricken for the best part of his life. Okay, so right. that's my okay. claim. Now, that's my my, point. I want now, to say something. Um, you, you know, to be I'm honest, I'm going to, to I'm going to stop this conversation because it's honestly going in circles. Imtiaz, bhai, bring the next uh, uh, the the next prophecy, and we'll deal with that. We wasted uh, like go. 45 minutes, I, I, maybe I, I, one I hour. You know, you, I agree with you, but you know, I did not start all of that. You, yeah, I know, know, I know. Okay? But, yeah. I, but I just allow me just say one simple thing for the audience. It's very important, Hashim Bhai. This person, Imam Saab, he was inviting all of us to Quran. And then I asked him, give me that verse from the Quran, which talks about that Masih, according to them, Masih Maud will come in the, in, <sighs> in the later days. Then he gave us the verse, Surah Hud, Ayah number 18. In, when he was talking, I have checked all the tafasir. Okay. This verse has nothing to do with the subject. Because it's not you can give just one verse. The point is, what is being asked to you, give me the verse that can prove that point. So just for the audience, the verse which has been given, you, all of you can please check the verse. It has nothing to do with the question I asked and the claim they make. That was Surah al hud verse 17, yeah? Verse 18, he said. No, but he's... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, 17. Okay. He read yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah 17. Okay, uh, what's the next prophecy? So now, uh, Ashim, my how, how long we want to go because we need to decide on the basis of time. Okay. Yeah, um, just, just, just go through the next prophecy very quickly. We'll let them in. We shouldn't spend more than 20 minutes on it. And then the next prophecy yeah. and then we finish. And okay. Please, guys, That's do not because, digress. Yeah, because, because, <laughs> yes. because, you know, many people, they really want to hear because they believe that maybe we are just, you know, not going into the prophecy of Muhammad Begum. Okay, yes. so let's inshallah yes. discuss our beloved sister Muhammadi Begum. Alhamdulillah, may Allah be grant her high level in Jannah. She died as a Muslimah and she went through all of those sufferings and pain at the hand of all of these complaints of Mirza. May Allah reward for, for all of that. Okay, so now, so uh, Adnan, bhai, Adnan yeah. bhai, if you like, for this prophecy, if I share my screen, I have made bullet points that this is the prophecy. And which which any, prophecy? Uh, the Muhammad Begum. Muhammad Begum's prophecy. What, what about the other one? Uh, uh, the, the one you were going to do? Manzoor. Uh, the son of uh, Manzoor Muhammad. Yes, Manzoor Muhammad. Yes. And because, because that is very short. We can even deal with it the, in the last five minutes. No, no. Let's, 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 deal, let's deal with that first and then we go to Muhammad Begum. Very quickly. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Then uh, let me then open because I was thinking maybe we're doing the Muhammad Begum one. Let's go to Let me just open that because I was uh, thinking maybe we're going through the Muhammadi Begum prophecy. Okay, so which prophecy are we doing? Mazur, um, the do son we, of Manzur? <coughs> yeah, do we want to do the son of Manzur, um, Adnan Bhai? Yes, please. That's a quick one. We do okay. it. It's very straightforward, black and white. Uh, we have already shown how why Mirza is a liar on so many different levels. But let's strengthen the case further. We have, by the way, brothers and sisters, we have a list. We have a plethora of prophecies. These Qadiani missionaries, they do not want us to focus on the topic. They manipulate things. They twist things. That's why it's taken so long on almost one prophecy. Okay, but you know what? We believe every single second of our time is being rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protecting Islam, for protecting uh, the finality of the prophet, prophethood, for protecting the right of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are here standing up 
for the right of Rasulullah. We are defending the Messenger of Allah against false claims. Okay, mm -hmm. he was the last of prophets. There's no one coming after him. That's why we're doing this exercise. May Allah accept from everyone mm -hmm. involved. So go ahead. The prophecy okay. you said. So inshallah, yeah. uh, inshallah, brother. Very quickly, I give you the prophecy. So if anybody wants to check, let me start with the references. Uh, there is a book called Tazkira, which is a compilation of revelation of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And in this book, all the revelations are mentioned by dates. So the, the, the edition I have with me, in this edition, it's page number 534. But the date is 7th of June, 1906. 7th of June, 1906. There was a uh, there was a marid, uh, there was a disciple of uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, and the name of the disciple was Manzoor Muhammad. So Mirza saw pro and the, and the name of his wife was Muhammadi Begum. By the way, this Muhammadi Begum is separate than very famous Muhammadi Begum. So Manzoor Muhammad and Muhammadi Begum. For, they for, for are some reason. For some reason, Muhammadi Begums, this is also a miracle of Allah's messenger. You know what? <laughs> These women were called Muhammadi Begums. Okay? Muhammadi Begums, for some reason, they did the job of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Two Muhammadi Begums. One, which we will discuss later on, this Muhammadi Begum also disproved Mirza and his false claims. Show, showed him to be a liar. How? Explain. Okay. So, brothers, uh, uh, like I said before, these, these prophecies are on page 5. 33 and 534 of Tazkira. Tazkira is a compilation of the revelation of Ghulam Ahmad and the date is 7th of June. So Mirza Sahib said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... What year? 7th of June? What year? What year? 1906. 1906. 1906. Okay. Yeah. So Mirza Sahib said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this revelation that Mia Manzoor Muhammad, whose wife is Muhammadi Begum, they will have a son and there will be two names for this son. In Urdu, it says Bashir Dawla and second one, Alam Kabab. Whatever they mean, we, this, this, this is not our topic. He said these will be the two names of this, this person. And then he further said that Bashir Dawla means such and such. And then he uh, again, same date, 7th of June, 1906. He again repeated the same alham and then he said that now i have given few more names okay one was that uh, basically a word and two girls a word and two girls is also going to be the name or the title or whatever for this child so 7 june 1906 then again 7 june 1906 twice this prophecy has been made okay now at this time, the wife of Manzoor Muhammad, who was Muhammadi Begum, she was pregnant. And this, has, this was very common practice of Mirza Sahib, that whenever she would see a pregnant woman, or he would know a pregnant woman, he would make a prediction about what birth she will give. So Mirza Sahib said that she will give birth to a son, and he said this is the ilham, this is a revelation. And then he mentioned the names of this son. And then on the, what happened is, this woman, instead of giving birth to a son, she gave birth to a daughter. Now, obviously, it was clearly not proven true. Okay, then the Mirza Sahib said, and inshallah, I'll produce all the references. I just want to cap, cap first, okay? Mirza Sahib said that it will happen, it, will, it has to happen that the mother of this, this girl must stay alive. So she can give birth to this <coughs> promised son next year or, or, or in the future. But guess what? Then the Muhammadi Begum died and she did not give birth to any child after that. So in a nutshell, Mirza Sahib said that Manzoor Muhammad and Muhammadi Begum, this couple, they will have a son. Mirza Sahib gave the names of that son as well. But this woman, she gave birth to a girl. And then Mirza Sahib said that this woman will remain alive and she will eventually give birth to a son. But this woman died. Now, our question is, how was this prophecy fulfilled? Okay, good question. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring in so, the next uh, yeah. guest. Participant. Yes, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Omar, are you there? Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Where are you calling from, Omar? 
uh, UK. Okay, that's good. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, did you did you listen to the question, by the way? Uh, yes, I think I understood it. Uh, Jazakallah for this stream. I have to say, as a, I am an Ahmadi. I'm not a. I'm not a, some scholar. I'm not a Marabbi. I'm not sort of super well trained in all this stuff. Uh, and I have to say that listening to you, um, listening to all things that you have said, uh, to be honest, I have to say, Alhamdulillah, my fa my faith has been greatly strengthened because. Honestly, if these are the best shots that you have, it's very, very telling. I mean, let's have a look at the premises of your entire argument here. Your whole argument is not, you know, let's critique these strong uh, prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ. It's let's try and find one or two, maybe we can say these possibly were uh, not fulfilled. And let's, let's review for a moment what you've actually said. So the first one which you quoted was not actually a prophecy. It was a report of a hadith and an interpretation. So the first one you felt. The second one, right? Second Sorry, one. which one? Which one are you referring to? The first. Uh, the first. Uh, what the, uh, what was it? Do you know what it was? With the with the uh, forty years, eighty years issue. Yeah. No, no, no. We are dealing with a different prophecy now. Uh -huh, that's what, that's that. the reason I asked you. Did you understand the prophecy? Yes, yes I'll come to that. that. Don't worry. I, no, no. Come. You you got two minutes because you need to make the point. You've already I'm used sorry. up thirty seconds of it. I so, don't really understand how you can say this is an invitation to Ahmadis to answer your questions. Well, this is well, the same rule for everyone. Today, You're not special. You've only got two minutes. But yeah. let me race through the points, okay? The, well, let have, me, you, have, you been, have you been Have you been? watching the live, uh, the stream? Oh, yeah, have you been watching thing. it? But so let, so let are you not aware now? of the rules? Can I answer? Yeah. Yes, you can. So the second thing that you brought was actually the, uh, the age uh, prophecy. And you didn't even argue that the prophecy was not fulfilled, which is remarkable. You never argued that the prophecy was not known. Okay, you know, to be Would honest, you... if he's not going to answer the question, I'm going to bring the next caller. No, no. This uh, is Ashraf, this is how they waste time. Guy, I don't want this. No, 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 no. This guy has the audacity to come and hear say that we didn't claim that the prophecy was not fulfilled. You are either deaf, dumb, or blind. You don't know. Either you can't see us, you can't hear us, or you, you know, when maybe, you know, there is something wrong with your senses. We have been saying for the last three hours, in fact, when we were discussing with Ahmed first and then Razi, we were saying repeatedly, the prophecy is unfulfilled. It is falsified because he claimed as a prophecy that I will die between 74 to 86 years. And then we have shown repeatedly, conclusively, that he was a liar of the top grade and he repeatedly contradicted himself, okay? And then he, by, by, by the virtue of his own writings, he is a deranged person because he contradicted himself so much. And then he himself wrote that God cannot leave him in error even for a moment. So, khalas, gone. Anyone else who wants to come in? Let, allow someone else to come I in. Will, I will let Omar in if he's going to answer the question or the prophecy that we are discussing at hand. I don't want you to summarize everything we have already discussed in the past four and a half hours. That's not yes, how it works. Please. So you got two to, minutes. If you're this. going to waste your two minutes, it's entirely up to you. Go and on. Sir, giving me two minutes. The reason why I said that you have not uh, argued that is because Imtiaz Saab especially argued primarily and actually only that the Prophet ﷺ was not sure about the date of the year of his birth. There has not been solid arguments that the year of his birth was not 1835, which scholarship has entirely established. Brother, you what, what, it what, again. Are you I have two minutes. Wait, I have two you, minutes. So let me speak. You, you have, you have, you get, you get your two minutes. You will get your two minutes. Let me, let me, let me put you to rest for a second. Did you hear our argument when we said that Mirza made a prophecy that I will die between seventy-four to eighty-six years, and then, and then we showed, then we showed conclusively that wasn't the case. Did you hear our argument, our case, or that are you just pretending to? You said that that was oh. the you 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 claim that as the argument. I say that you did not prove that case at all because you ignored for the okay. fact that the actual birthday could have either been on eighteen thirty two or eighteen thirty five, and scholarship has established that eighteen thirty five. So, so, so obviously, the only obviously thing you, you also obviously you also summon bookman amyun from la your own. We, that that we cannot change. So let's get on to our prophecy, this yeah. current one we have discussed. Okay. And please stick to that, because if you keep summarizing everything before, you're just wasting your time. So it's entirely okay. up to you. February 19, 1906, I saw in my dream that a son was born to Manzur Muhammad, and he asked what name should be given him. Then my mind moved from the dream towards the recep recep re reception of revelation, and I was informed, Bashir al-Dawla. The Prophet said, I supplicate for a large number of people 
and do not know to whom the word Manzur Muhammad refers. Okay, so that answers the, the whole the whole criticism. He never said right. that. This is your time. This is your time. Title, you got, you got one and a half minutes more. Muhammad. Okay, so that, that answers your allegation. Now, what I find remarkable, therefore, is that, you know, you have not actually come with real solid arguments either on Aqaid, and you're focused on prophecies, and you have not even, even slightly proved your case there. And the fact that you haven't actually criticized the real meat of the prophecies, let's take the plague prophecy, for instance. He claimed that he would not die from the plague and that those in his household would not die. Okay. This was an epidemic which had twice the death rate of COVID in the USA. Allah allowed, or you could say killed, 10 million people in India, but he could never kill the false prophet, Nalzabullah, according to you. He was not able to do this. Lehram, let's have a look at Lehram. 1893 says he'll die within six years on the, around the day of Eid. He then dies. When does he die? He dies in uh, 1897 after Eid. So why did Allah fulfill this prophecy? Dawi, 1902, challenged him to a prayer duel to the death. 1903, Dawi accepted. 1907, he died. So if you believe that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a false prophet and you believe in God, then how can you possibly believe in those two things? Because why is Allah fulfilling the false prophecies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And you have to rely on these things like, oh, the Prophet I didn't know the exact year of his age in the 19th century. And Manzur Muhammad, where he says, I do not know to whom this Manzur Muhammad refers. So, I mean, these are very weak arguments. And as we've shown, okay. you never debate on Aqaid. You never debate on Aqaid. Okay, Into first of all, let, let me come back. Let me let me come back very quickly. Let me come back. Before we get to Manzur Muhammad, they keep bringing up the plague question because the minds seem to be plagued. So let me, let me, let me bring it up. Please, yeah. let's stick with the topic. I have Exactly, yeah, we'll get into that again otherwise. No, why run away from the plague? Okay. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so the okay. point he made what about the prophecy we are discussing now, let's deal with that. This is this is a, 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 a okay. to respond to. Let's point. go to let's go. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. About the prophecy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any, anybody who was anybody who was listening, I said that there are two revelations from Mirza Sahib on the same uh, on page five thirty three and then five thirty four. Date for both of them is same, and Umar is right. In the first ilham, he said that I don't know that which Muhammad, which Manzur Muhammad is in this. And then on the sec same day, another revelation was received. And then Mirza Sahib said, Bazriya ilham ilahi malum hua hai ki miya Manzur Muhammad Sahib ke ghar, yani Muhammadi Begum. Now this time, Mirza Sahib in his own stop, ilham. Stop there, stop there. Stop there for a second. Stop there. Omar, Omar, did you know that? A second uh, prophecy. So are oh, you saying Omar, that he misinterpreted his own prophecy? No, no, Omar, Omar, did you know that the Mirza on the same day wrote another Ilham revelation clarifying which Manzoor, uh, Manzoor uh, Ahmad is this? Which one? Yes. yes. Can, you give yes? Me, can you give me the full reference, please? Uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to he, yes. he gave you the page number. Yeah. Can you repeat the reference yeah, yeah. again? Well, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the same day, I, I apologize, I can't see it. Okay, okay, brother uh, Hashim, uh, uh, let me open Tazkira and I will share my screen. No problem at all. Okay. Yes, please do share it. Share it. Omar, do you read Urdu? No, I don't. I'm, I'm using the English. Okay. okay, no problem. I will okay. open Tazkira no at least at least to show to the people that there are two ilham on this one. Yes, brother, Friend. give me one second. I open up the uh, uh, original book. Sorry, guys, my technical team is doing some experiments at the moment on me. <laughs> you keep changing your race in the middle of the discussion. So, 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 so let's clarify very quickly. Omar came back very confidently with a stronger faith in Mirza and claiming that you, you're not uh, actually making good arguments. Then Omar came back with this uh, point, this claim that we don't know which Manzoor Ahmed was Mirza talking about. Now we are showing Umar which Manzoor Ahmad was Mirza talking about, specifically the husband of Muhammadi Begum. This is another Muhammadi Begum, uh, uh, not the one that was married to Sultan Beg. This is not the, the Muhammadi Begum that sealed Mirza's fate once and for all. Uh, MashaAllah, tabarakallah, may Allah have mercy on her, rahmatullahi yeah. alayha, and, uh, and on her husband. So now, go and share the screen so that we can show, show Umar uh, uh, and yes, maybe we can explain uh, now, it. Maybe yeah, we can explain it, inshallah. 
So, uh, Hashim, I need to uh, press the present. Yeah, press present and then share screen. So once we show Umar which uh, Manzoor Ahmed is this, then we're going to ask him, tell us if Mirza was uh, making things up or was is it, it truthful? Shared now? And then, no, and then we will. Oh yeah, it is. Then we will use. Then we will use a thermometer to check its face. Okay. You need to zoom. You need to zoom from your side. Okay. Omar, are you listening to us? Good, so you, you need to bring someone else in if you want to bring all the references. Is it, is it no, 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 no. Omar, Omar, you stay on. Omar, you stay on. We're going to read and translate no, no, for you. No, 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 please. I, I'm happy to stay on. I'm saying add someone. No, it's fine. Yeah. We, I mean, we got 2,000 people watching, so I don't think these brothers are going to lie in front of all these people and, uh, and uh, you know, ruin their reputation. So, yeah, zoom, zoom okay. from your side. Uh, 7th, 7th of June, 7th of June, 1906. Okay, Adnan's reading it. Is okay. Go ahead. I just want to see that how to Seven. go to the next page. Se Don't worry about uh, it. Okay. Uh, you can share the next page separately. Okay. Okay. Here, Close this and share 7th it. Seventh of June. Seventh of June. 1906 Basically, Mirza Sahib is saying, I had revelation that Mia Manzoor Muhammad, uh, uh, his wife, Muhammadi Begum, will give birth to a son and his name will be Bashiru Dola, Alam Kabab. Okay? And these two names have been given to me through revelation. So he explains the names, the meanings of the names in the next uh, smaller print. And then yeah. we go to the next prophecy. Uh, let me Same, just next uh, stop. Okay, can yeah, let me open the next page because I don't know how to. Are you, page are you with us? The remove you remove us? it and then add it again. Remove it and add it again. Can I respond to this? And add the next page, please. So we're going to show you which Muhammadi Begum this is. This is another one, not the wife of Sultan Beg. So that's a separate. That's a separate. Uh, Actually, what I'm struggling with is that let me see that how to uh, go to next page because I don't know how to go to next page. Is it a PDF? What is it? It's a it's a PDF. Uh, it's basically the original book in PDF from their own website. But uh, you can't scroll. Okay, let, let me let me just take the screenshots. Uh, so then, you reckon it will take be the, easy? Yeah, take a screenshot, send it to Hashim, and Hashim can put it up. Guys, can okay. I tell you why I couldn't find this? Should I tell right. you? Yeah, go you got right. it wrong. It was June 7th, 1906. It wasn't also in the same month. So okay. that Umar out. No, 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 no. It is my brother. It is on first first Ilham is on 533 in my edition, 7th June 1906. And the next one is also 7th June 1906. And you are right. Uh, it, 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 let me share screen. Give me one minute. Ah, yes. so I explain it. It's very simple. He says, Con convey to me by revelation that in the family of Mian Mian Manzur Muhammad. That is to Muhammad Ibrahim Yani. This was interpretation. That was not. Yeah, the what do you mean? What do you mean? The revelation was about yeah. Mian Manzur Muhammad. You are correct. Yeah. On it. Yeah. However, yeah. The yeah. application to the particular family was yeah. interpretation. Yeah. So they misinterpreted it. How it okay. was interpreted is, okay. is a different question. How it was actually fulfilled was. No, 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 no. I give you the answer. It's, to it's this in the same book. The it's community. in the same book. No, no, no. I give you, brother. Let me share yeah. my screen again. Let me put on the screen. Is it on the screen now, Ashim Bhai? Yeah, it is. So this is now second Ilham, brother. Look at this one. Please allow me to explain first, then you can apply, inshallah. My brother, in the previous Ilham, you are right. Muhammadi Begum was not identified. Now look at this one. In this one, he further says that Ispishin Goi ko bayan ka jiske maan ye hai ke ek kalima aur do ladkiyan kyun ke Mia Manzoor Muhammad ki do ladkiyan hai और जब ये कलिमा तुल्ला पैदा होगा तो ये बात पूरी हो जाएगी कि एक कलिमा और दो लड़कियां ही फर्दर क्वालिफाइड ही सेड दैट दिस मंजूर मोहम्मद हुज वाइफ इज मोहम्मदी बेगम दे ऑलरेडी हैव टू डॉटर्स 
and when this one child will be born who is going to be called the world in this way his prophecy will be fulfilled now brother he further clarified and qualified that this manzoor muhammad is the husband of muhammadi begum why he clearly told us kyunki miyan manzoor muhammad ki do ladkiyan hain aur jab ye kalimatullah paida hoga tab ye baat puri ho jayegi ki ek kalima aur do ladkiyan now please respond yes i'll be happy to respond you're making exactly the same mistake that the opponents of the quran do and the quran talks about this in surah al-imran where it says you have to take mukam and mutashabihat and what happens is that they divide the verses they use the mutashabihat and they ignore the mukam and this is a disease in their hearts and allah says those who are rightly guided are those i'm not saying inshallah your hearts are not diseased may allah purify your hearts and all of our hearts but i'm saying that that is allah says the the whole is from our lord now there are two revelations that are concerning this okay the first one explicitly says i do not know to whom me and Manzo, uh, manzur muhammad is, is spoken about in this one he applies his own interpretation that i believe it refers to them okay but that is not made explicit in the revelation thus he may be mistaken in the interpretation of his own prophecy this has happened with prophets of the past including the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we talked about in hudaybiyah so again this is this is the best you can come up with and you run away from things like the plague you run away from things like lehram you run away from one minute and i was just me just give me one minute please 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 okay my brother you saying that you know we are just quoting something hardly something my brother in this one uh, if i can share my screen again mirza sahib said that in the previous ilham what the child which i have mentioned in the previous ilham i'm talking about again the same child i can show you if you like okay so first in in the in, in first ilham you are right he said that manzur uh, muhammad but he did not point which muhammad in the same date he said that iske baad maloom hua and then he further said that manzur muhammad and his wife muhammadi begum he further said that they have two daughters so he has given us oh, now but wait 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 brother wait 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 mirza sai has given us two qualification that this manzur muhammad his wife is number one his wife is muhammadi begum number two they have two daughters and when this okay. because this son one of his prophesied name will be the world w o r d world the world okay he said the because the world they already, he said he said because they already have two girls so when this child will be born then an other prophecy will fully and what is that oh. what is that the world and two girls so okay. brother there are two qualifications muhammad husband of muhammad begum second brother, qualification okay wait wait wait, wait, wait. I, i fully understand let, let me take I, it let I, me do it wait omar 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 wait omar omar i want Not Omar, Omar, seconds, Omar, 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 wait, wait, wait. You, Omar, you'll get your time, Omar. Don't worry. Omar, yeah, go Omar, ahead, Omar. You will have your time, Omar. There is no interpretation here. He's stating exactly what is written on the pages. There's no interpretation. Don't play these games, please. Be, be go a on. gentleman. Be a gentleman, okay? And don't play these games. He is reading exactly what's written on those pages. There is a there is a certain Manzoor Muhammad who has a wife called Muhammadi Begum who will give birth to a son. Okay, this is in the first revelation. On the same day, the second revelation gives more details of the same Manzoor Muhammad who already has two daughters, and Mirza confirms that his wife Muhammadi Begum now will give birth to a son. what happens what happens she gives birth to a daughter a son is not born she gives birth to a daughter then mm. mirza says that a son will be born to this woman next year or following year what happens she dies so not only the first revelation was false the second revelation was also false and then the third prophecy which mirza sahab made was also false so mirza sahab is a liar again on so many different levels so now we come to you no interpretation simple plain reading of facts as stated on those pages on your websites over to you yes well let me let me actually just respond to you by reading what this qur'an says Says both of these names were revealed to me. 
My interpretation and understanding these concern, understanding concerning these is as follows. And as Inthiyar's brother, as brother Inthiyar said, he gave an explanation for why he applies that to this family. Now, obviously, this long explanation wasn't revealed. This was his own interpretation. So what you have said proves my point that it is interpretation because he had to it use does his not. reasoning. And, oh, come on, come on. You, you had your time. And he had to apply his reasoning and applied it to the individual. But as we know, in Revelations and Dreams, names can have symbolic meanings. So he doesn't say that this has been revealed to me, that this is literally this family. He uses reasoning in order to interpret it in this way. So the February, let's, let's review then. We have the February revelation where he explicitly says, I do not know if it's uh, actual uh, uh, Mansur Muhammad, but he says, I think it is. Okay. In June 7, I'll paraphrase. And then in June 7, 1906, he gives further reasoning why he believes that is, but it, do, it does not say, the revelation does not say that it is, that he has been revealed to him that this is the case. He literally says, my interpretation no, and understanding is, is as follows. And then if I may conclude on this, on, on my, my point here, that again, it is a wonderful sign of the truth of Ahmadiyyad. Firstly, you never debate us on Wafat al and Khatm al and on actual Aqaid. Secondly, when you come to the prophecies, you come to these things which are so, you know, they're, they're so insubstantive. It's unbelievable. And, and you okay. run away from the plague prophecy. You run away from Lecham. Okay. You run away from okay. Dawi. So why haven't don't, you spoken worry. about these things? Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I will, I will please you as much as you like. No problem. Okay. Firstly, okay. the fact that you guys are so terrified and ter so terrorized by Mirza's own prophecies and the unfulfillment that you keep mentioning Akaid, Wafat al-Masih, Khatm al all these things. The Our scholars for the last 100 years have been debating your scholars and they have shown them the colors uh, they possess. Okay. Secondly, books, volumes upon volumes have been written on these topics. Stop playing these games. You are doing very, very badly tonight. Unfortunately, okay, uh, people like you who have the audacity to spin basic facts, basic statements, okay? You are calling this interpretation. In no, both the prophecies, prophecies the word Ilam... Wait, 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 wait. You have nothing else to say now. What, what, you know, Christians, what happens to them when we corner them with the Bible? You know what they say? You don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, you don't have the Holy Jesus Spirit. Wait, 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 wait. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You won't understand. So what the Qadianis do when they get cornered by Mirza himself, they start saying, you don't debate us on Akai. You don't debate us on Wafat al-Masih. You don't debate us. Why are, you de why are you talking about? The topic of the night, brother, is Mirza, his prophecies and his lies. You are here to defend. We, have, we are giving you a chance in front of thousands of people to come and defend your false prophet. And you're still struggling. Both prophecies, both revelations on the same day mention the word Ilham. It does by correct? Yes, yes, by yes. correct? Yes, Ilham, yes. over to you. Yes. You explain now. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, I want to, no, no, brother, I want to basically clarify for the audience as well. Okay, brother, Umar, please pay attention very carefully. Inshallah. Anyone who knows the, the, the Islamic science, he knows that the best interpretation of the Quran is called Tafsirul Qurani Bil Quran. That when revelation is interpreted through revelation. Now, oh, Umar, please, Umar, please pay attention. In the second Ilham, when uh, when Mirza Saab is giving us more qualification, he said that an other ilham, please, an other ilham, which says that a world and two girls, also referring to this one, and because those two girls are already the two daughters of Muhammadi Begum and Mandur Muhammad, now this world will uh, fulfill the prophecy of a world and two girls. So now he, he has basically interpreted one prophecy or one revelation through another revelation. Please don't say that he was just doing his own estimations. Okay. If you want, inshallah, I can put it again, but please, please. please put it up what, again. Uh, no problem. No, 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 no. Put it up again. Put it up again. Okay, please. I just uh, share my screen. Okay. Here. Because we don't want brothers like Omar to die uh, in this state. Okay. okay now we, Shana, want Jannah. To, we, we want Jannah. We want Jannah. We want Jannah. We should be so lucky that I die in this day. Inshallah. May. Okay. If you want to go to Jahannam, your choice, brother. We can't stop you. If you want to jump into the oven, I can't do nothing. If you want to be uh, cooked, up to you. No problem. Adnan, can you see my screen? Yeah. No, I can't. Okay. Hashim can. 
Okay. 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 Look at this one. Uh, uh, it says uh, Umar Bhai. It says, "Guzista ilham se world and two girl." Isi pishen goi ko bian karta hai, jiske mani hai ki ek. Wait, wait. Stop. Stop. Ek... Stop. Yeah. Imtiaz Bhai, isko translate kare. Guzista ilham. The previous the God revelation. revelation. The previous yeah, yeah. revelation. The previous okay. revel revel revelation, which was a world and two girl. That revelation hmm. also explains the same point that a world and two daughters, because Mia Manzoor Muhammad has two daughters. So when this world will be born, then this prophecy will be fulfilled that a world and two girls. When uh, he means word, word, not word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, kalima, yeah, yeah, kalima means yeah, word. Kalima, yeah, word. Kalima, yeah. W W O R D. So now, yeah, Umar, yeah. no, no interpretation. He is basically saying, what do you mean no interpretation? I am explaining, explain no, uh, uh, no, 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 this is revelation. Mirza said, I speak from Ilham, I speak from revelation. This is revelation to Mirza. And if it's revelation, it is falsified. Why? Because Muhammadi Begum did not give birth to a boy. She gave birth to a girl and then she died. She died because Mirza said she will give birth to a boy next year. Because the prophecy wasn't fulfilled at that birth. So he claimed she will give birth to a boy eventually because my prophecy will, will be fulfilled. So this Muhammad Begum showed Mirza to be a liar. And Mirza okay, said, if one of my respond. prophecies... Sorry? Sorry, let me know when I can respond. Yeah, respond now. Can... Respond now. Respond yes. now. As, I, as, I, I'm, as I've already explained, the revelations are one thing and the interpretation is the other. Now, Imtiaz Bai has made a false analogy between the Quran and these kind of prophecies. Now, we have great love for the Prophet, but Tazkara is not the Quran. So you can't use that kind of analogy in this situation. A prophet has the right to interpret his prophecies in the way that he thinks is correct. And what has clearly come out is that he is saying that he has had revelations about Manzur Muhammad, right? He first said, I don't know who this is. I, don't, I, I think it's about the individual. But I don't know for sure. The second time, he is this the best? I... Is the best you can do? Is this Hold the on. best you can do? My, uh, my, you have strengthened my iman in Orthodox Islam to okay, the extent Mubarak. that now, Mubarak. Alhamdulillah, Mubarak. Alhamdulillah, Mubarak. Alhamdulillah and there are many, many, interrupt. many Ahmadis watching this. Can I? Many oh, Ahmadis oh, are oh, watching this. Can I continue? Oh, oh, I continue? Oh, 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 complete, inshallah. Jazakallah. As I have said, and as the Promised Messiah Islam himself has said. His own interpretation, my interpretation and understanding concerning these as, is as follows. And he continues to give his interpretation. Now, as I am, I hope you are aware, I hope you are aware, inshallah, that the Jamaat Ahmadiyya has, shows that this is actually, this, the, our interpretation of this is that this relates to the second Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, that it was fulfilled through him and it was fulfilled in the prophecy of the worldwide calamity in which the Tsar would be killed. Now, let's not forget that. This was all linked to that. And that prophecy was an incredible grand prophecy, which gave many details about World War I. And the highlight of that prophecy was that at this time, the Tsar will be in a pitiable state. Okay? And yet again, you don't, you don't mention any of these things. You accuse us and you accuse Ahmadi Murad. No, no, I okay. have lied to you, brother. You complete, please. Finish, please, right? you Let complete. me finish my point, brother. Let me finish uh, my point. Me, let him come. Okay, brother, you, how much time you want, brother? Let me complete. And then complete. Two minutes, two minutes. It's finished oh, now. Nearly minutes, finished. Go ahead. <laughs> not, so, not from two. You've been speaking for nearly two minutes. So go ahead. Quickly finish. Right. Jazakallah. Thank you. Thank you for your graciousness. Um, so no remember, the, as I was saying, that, that there is a wonderful prophecy about the worldwide calamity and the fact that the Tsar will be in a pitiable state at this time. And the interpretation that we have... Sheikh Elias, the camera can... Sorry. Sorry and and the interpretation that ahead. we have is that this refers to this. Now, as, uh, as I said earlier, this is a wonderful stream to show the power of the Jamaat Ahmadiyya because we have so many prophecies which you have run away from. The prophecies, the, the, you know, these, if this is the best you have, this is... This is in my, in my humble opinion, not good arguments. You've already misstated things at Nampai about the plague. Umar, so you are done, please, uh, please you have ignored the things of Lefram. 1893, he says he will die within six years. He does on the day next to Eid. Dawi, he dies within his lifetime in a remarkable manner. Lehram, sorry, I just Umar, by please, please, Umar, by please, 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 your, your time is finished. Please, Umar, by your time is finished. Please, let me allow to respond now. Please, your time of is course, finished. Of course, please, okay. Go ahead. okay, Umar, by please listen this point very carefully. 
so did you say that this prophecy was about the second caliph did you say this uh, that is our interpretation yes okay what is the date of birth of second caliph just the year of birth just the year of birth of second caliph i believe it's 1889 sorry Sorry? I believe it's 1889, but I might be wrong. And I my brother, that. please, my brother, Anand, my, please pay attention. Uh, Omar Bhai is saying that Jamaat says that this prophecy is actually about the second caliph. It's related and he was, to. Uh, I said please, it's related please, to. Omar, please, Omar, please, please. I said please, it's related to. to. Okay. And this second caliph was born on 1889. Okay. Yeah. When this prophecy is being given, prophecy is always, brother, about the future. That this thing, uh, please don't talk now, okay? This prophecy is given in 1907. How can you apply this to Caliph? Caliph was already there. Uh, he was, uh, at that time, he was 17, 18 years old. Okay. Can I answer? Give me, give me the answer, please. Yes. As I've said, this, is, uh, th this applies to him and it's associated with him. Because it's about no, his how? spiritual manifestation. I'm answering it in this very sentence, brother. It's about his spiritual manifestation in Khilafat, which is linked to the World War I prophecy. Okay? 1914, 1914. So if you want to talk about this, let's talk about the World War I prophecy. How did the Prophet know that there was no, no, a no, worldwide please, calamity? No, 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 please. Don't change topic. Don't change so topic. So no, no, no. no. Omar Bhai, no. Omar Bhai, no. no. Of course, no you run away topic. from this. Of course. Omar Bhai, no new topic. No new topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anandpa, you're on mute. Anandpa, you're muted, please. Uh, Omar, Omar, we're running away. We're running away, Omar. We're running away. Okay. <laughs> now that we're running away from you. Okay. Omar, 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 I'm saying we're running away. Omar, we, I'm saying we're running away. Okay. So, so now uh, it's clear that Omar is waffling. So we're going to go on to very quickly something else. Omar kept mentioning plague, plague, plague. Uh, so it seems that Omar loves the plague of Kadian. So we're going to go and take Omar to the plague very quickly so that Omar is satisfied. This is going to, this is going to go on for, this is going to, he's going to keep waffling. He's going to keep repeating, keep waffling. He doesn't have any answer. It's clear. He doesn't have an answer. So let's I agree. Go. Let, Adnama, I, yeah, Adnama, yeah. I agree with you. I, just give yeah. me, just give me 30 seconds to let the people know what is Okay. So basically okay. Mirza Saab has given a prophecy something about the future is called prophecy this was in 1907 that a child will be born to manzoor muhammad husband of muhammadi begum they have two daughters he qualified that which Manzoor muhammad is this now this lady instead of giving birth to a child uh, to, to a boy she gave birth to a daughter okay then mirza sahab said that this woman must live until she gave birth to this boy who is promised in this ilham but guess what the women died now umar bhai gave us one answer he said that jamaat says that our understanding is that this, this applies to second caliph my brother please please don't, don't don't play this game second caliph was born in 1889 and this prophecy is given in 1907 second so caliph it's clear was now. Okay. okay and then yeah so, so no you cannot answer wait no 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 yeah, no no wait umar okay. umar stop 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 now we're going to go to the plague. Okay. Out of respect, Mirza, I, won't, I won't give the answer to that, but there is a very clear answer. No, there is, you, you have no answer. We spent already 20 minutes with you. We spent 20 minutes with you already. You have no answer, nothing. I will, uh, Mirza Saab, Mirza Saab claimed in Al-Bashari, volume two, page 140, I will protect my house from plague. Okay. Then in Dafful Bala, page five, Mirza Saab, said all around Kadian, within two square miles, the plague was heavy, but Kadian remained free from plague. Okay, so in the first quote, Mirza Sab said, I will protect my house from plague. In the second quote, he said, plague will not come to Kadian. It will not come to Kadian. Then Mirza Sab, okay, tells us, that in the days of the plague, when Qadian was under its attack, my son Bashir Ahmad fell ill. Hakikatul Wahi, page 84. Here is another prophecy that failed. Mirza said that plague will not affect my house, number one. Then he also said plague will not come near Qadian. Then in Hakikatul Wahi, 
He is telling us, in the days of the plague, when Qadian was under its attack, my son Bashir Ahmad fell ill. Hakikatul Wahi, page 84. Over to you, Umar. And no waffling. Could you clarify exactly what, I, and, I, and I will answer everything, can you clarify exactly what the nature of your argument is? What exactly is your criticism? Only a dumb person wouldn't get it, but I'll, again, I'll repeat it again. Sorry, no insult to you, but I will repeat it again. <laughs> I'll insult you, but it's not an insult, Acha. Okay. Now, amazingly, you understood my insult, right? You I understood my insult. You are so intelligent. It's unbelievable. You understood my insult and its implications, but you didn't understand my argument. I'll repeat it again. I have Mirza Saab, Al Bashari, Al Bashari, Volume 2, page 140. In this book, he's saying, I will protect my house from the plague. Clear? Follow me. Continue. Are you clear on this so far? I'm clear on what you've said. I will protect my house. And now you're probably looking for uh, <laughs> responses already. But here, no problem. We will let you find. Are you clear so uh, far? Mirza I, I, have said, I, I, I will protect my house. I've recently written an exhibition, protect... actually. So I, I know this very well. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. So Mirza have said, I will protect my house from plague. Then in the second prophecy, in Daful Bala, page 5, he says, all around Qadian, within two square miles, the plague was heavy, but Qadian remained free from plague because Masih Maud was in Qadian, according to Daful Bala, same page five. But then in Aqiqatul Wahi, Mirza Sab says, in the days of the plague when Qadian was under its attack, my son Bashir Ahmad fell ill. Page 84, Aqiqatul Wahi. Clearly, Mirza Sab not only could not protect Qadian, but couldn't even protect his own house. Okay, so what you're saying you is my a contradiction between the prophecies and what happened. No, yeah? I'm saying I'm saying Mirza Sab made a prophecy mm -hmm. and he failed because his okay. son was struck by plague. Was he and fell ill? No, fell ill. Okay. Wait, so let's have to review. Wait, let's review wait, 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 wait. Do you understand my do you understand my my my, my case? First, he says, I'll protect my house from plague. Mm. And then he said, plague remain, Mir Qadian remained free of plague. And he said, Qadian remained free from plague the, because prophet and Messiah of God was residing there. Daful Bala, page 5. And then in Hakikatul Wahi, page 84, he tells us that plague was in Qadian. And then he says his son Bashir Ahmed on the same page, he fell ill because plague was inside Qadian and it struck his house, his own son. Do you get my argument or you're, you're still very simple? Okay, thank you for showing you a clock. I um, want to I, 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 you know, with people like you, Umar, I used to, I mean, sorry, come on, go ahead. I will try to use my clock. Okay, Umar Bai. My beloved Omar Bhai, do you understand my argument? Yeah, am I, am I able to, to answer it now? Yes, you are. Oh, Jazakallah, thank you very much. Um, so let's actually review the original uh, wordings of the Hadith firstly. It says in, where are we? Uh, it says in Nuzul al -Masi, in 19, uh, sorry, apologies, I'm bringing it up. Ah. It ought to be known that the decree regarding Guardian has two aspects. Firstly, his decree which relates to the town in general, that Guardian will be saved from such plague as brings chaos and destruction and consumes entire dwellings. Now, let me, clear, let me clarify from his own words. He says that when he means protection from, uh, of Guardian from the plague, he says that it is that kind of protection, quote, from which people flee from place to place and die like dogs. The situation is beyond the limits of human tolerance. Thus, this divine revelation contains the promise that this condition will never affect Guardian, and it never did affect Guardian. And no one in his family died from the plague. And he didn't die from the plague. So if we actually review the prophecy, in 1893, he said that the plague was coming. The plague came 1896 to Bombay. But he said it would come uh, after Lehram died, another prophecy you ne never mention. Lehram died in 1897. The plague comes in 1896 to India, and it develops in 1899 and, and 1900 
in the Punjab and it takes a few more years to fully develop. The Prophet throughout this entire time says, those within the four walls of my house will be protected from this. His son did not die. His son had a fever. Okay, he did not die and it is not thought to be plague from which he suffered. Even if he had, he did not die from it. Thus, he was protected, okay. but he wasn't. Thank no, you for your I response. I have more to say, brothers. I have more to say, but I, I, will, I will conclude soon, I promise. This entire plague argument completely disproves your, your whole opposition to the promised Messiah, salam. You believe that Allah exists, number one. Number two, you believe that the promised Messiah, salam, is a false prophet. Okay? He is saying for basically 10 years plus that I will not be killed by plague and those within my family. But let's just take I will not be killed by plague. So for 10 years, Allah kills 10 where, 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 where does he? Where does he say that? Where is the word killed? For his family? Allah will say, where is the word killed? Four walls of my house. So, why are you, why are you, why are you, in a habit of adding information to text and, and books and quotes? You just added a caveat, a very important caveat, which is what you are basing your argument right. on. Are you saying? Are you that, saying that? that wait, 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 no, wait. No, no, no. You, you just added. You it. just added a very. Right? Wait, wait. You just very smoothly, very slyly, you added a caveat, a very important caveat upon which you're basing your case, your response that no one was killed, and you added that there is no mention of killing or getting killed. Mirza said. Plague is not coming to my house. Mirza said, plague is not coming to my house. And then Bashir Ahmad fell ill. Mirza did not mention getting killed or not getting killed. Show me. Are show you me. talking about Sharif show Ahmed? Me where he, show, no, show me, where, show me where he said, my family will not kill, okay, get I'm, killed. I'm, I'm happy these, are the games, these are the games Mirza was playing when he was alive, I'm when he was proven to be a liar. Let me finish my original point, which will take 20 seconds, and I'll move on to this point. Is that okay with no, you? No, no, no. Okay. Your time is finished, Umar. I, I have to speak now. I'm sorry, you can't just say my time is finished when you interrupt me and you don't let me finish my point. Then you introduce two new points. Okay, and then finish, 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 finish. You have 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. 30 seconds. My finish. original point, which I was developing, is that Allah killed 10 million people in India from the plague, but the one man who said that he will be safeguarded from the plague, Allah wasn't able to kill him. Did he, did he miss 10 million times? The false prophet, he allowed him to stay? He allowed him to live on this no. earth? Well, he's no. saying that, no. uh, that my, those but that's... four walls of my house will be safeguarded. But, okay. Then we move on to Sharif Ahmed. Can I answer this? 30, no, 30 answer? seconds. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we move on, before we move on, over to you, Jazwai. Okay, obviously, you know, uh, it's again the same thing, okay, how to understand, etc. Let me give you a more clear, uh, you can say, the, the theme on the same subject, okay. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, he issued instructions for his followers that what to do in the time of plague. And he said that he knows that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, that when plague comes in a place or a town, leave that place. Okay? Achha, so did leave they leave that Kadiyan? place. Did Sorry? they leave Kadiyan? Did they leave Sorry? Kadiyan? But, but listen, let me, let me quote the world to world. Please listen. Allow me to quote the world to world. Give me one second. Yes. I quote dot to dot. Okay? Listen carefully. Mujhe maaloom hua hai ke a hazrat sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne farmaya hai ke jab kisi shahar mein वबा नाजिल हो तो इस शहर के लोगों को चाहिए कि बिला तवक्कुफ विदाउट एनी डिले इस शहर को छोड़ दें वरना खुदा ताला से लड़ने वाले ठहराए जाएंगे मिर्जा इज सेइंग दैट अल्लाह दैट आई हैव केम टू नो दैट प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम हैज गिवन दिस इंस्ट्रक्शंस दैट व्हेन प्लेग कम्स इन एनी टाउन लीव दैट टाउन इमीडिएटली विदाउट एनी डिले Okay, and if they do not leave that place immediately, he said that according to who? According to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if they would not leave the place, they will be considered as though as they are fighting against Allah. My brother, I don't need anything else. Give me this hadith. I don't, I don't, I'm, I apologize. I don't fully understand even your argument there. because Okay, no problem. Let me repeat. Let, no, 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 no. Let me repeat. Let me repeat. Mirza Sahib quoted a hadith. He said that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that if plague 
comes in a place or a town or a village immediately without any delay leave that place and if you will not leave that place you will be considered one of those who are fighting against allah i'm asking you produce this hadith dude i'm not sunnah.com okay we're Sorry? actually debating on the on the actual um on the actual prophecies here and no, 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 brother, I, my brother, I, wait, I wait, 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 this is, this is, this is, this is, this is part of the subject, okay, because the things you are quoting, you, Adnan what? might already establish the point, because Mirza yes, claimed yes, that his you house, Shreef Ahmed. Shreef Ahmed no, 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 Mir, no, no, his, he, he, he said that he was, he, he falls sick, okay, my brother, look, please understand the point, it has already been discussed, people have listened to your point, there is an Adnan Bai's point, that's done, now you give us this hadith. I don't even see how this hadith is relevant even to your argument. Let's it is relevant. It is, you know, no, it is relevant. It is, you know why? Because, because Mirza, Sahib, Mirza Sahib in this hadith has clearly contradicted the actual hadith. Okay, the actual, the asr, the actual hadith is that if you are in a place where the plague come, stay there, don't leave that place. Okay, Mirza Sahib exactly gave the opposite uh, instructions. Why? Okay. Why? Uh, and if you give me, I will give you the reason, but it will take some time. But I want you to do two things. Number one, Mirza Sahib quoted this hadith. Okay. Please, you can ask Razi, ask anybody, give us this hadith. Okay. So let me note okay. what just happened. Okay, guys. Have, have, guys, guys, guys sorry. sorry. I'm going to have to be brutal again. Come on, finish your point. Very quickly. Finish. 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 Okay. Finish your point. Shri Tamil didn't die the play. Didn't have play. Secondly, you have not answered my primary my primary question to you. You have diverted to the Prophet ﷺ, you know, uh, misquoted a hadith, which is which is not the topic of discussion. Okay, you have missed you have, you have diverted it to that. But the question I asked you is why did Allah keep fulfilling the prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ? Why did He safeguard him and his family? Why did He survive for ten years while Allah kills ten million people in India? You have not answered this, and you can never answer this. Why did Allah fulfill the okay. prophecy of Lehram and, and cause him to die in 1897? Why did Dawud okay. die within his lifetime? You, you cannot answer these things. Thank you very much. You have to keep diverting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. You always divert. Wait, this, that, bring this I, like, I'm, like I'm a search engine, I'm not. I apologize. I'm a humble... humble no, but Omar, Omar, you need to understand one thing. You know, if the Prophet ﷺ never quoted what Mirza said, then by default it means that he's lying against what the Prophet ﷺ actually said. He quoted the exact opposite. Okay, so, so, you, you know, you imagine, you imagine you yourself you. when you're when you're actually in a place where there is a plague and the Prophet ﷺ said, do not leave that town. It's common sense because if you leave the town, you're going to spread the infection elsewhere. This is exactly what Mirza did. Okay, so, so let's it goes against that. common sense. It goes against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It's, it's, it's clear. It goes against Come basic on. medicine. It's, yeah. It goes against it goes against basic okay. medical so ethics. Again, again, let's just let's just note that you haven't answered any of my questions about the place. You don't have you questions. Have you you are sidetracking. That's what Prophet, I call it. You have sidetracked it. You sidetracked No, we are okay. talking about the prophecies, so the failed note, prophecies. On, on, the topic on, here is the okay. failed on, prophecy. On so note, stick to it. And it was a fulfilled prophecy. Hush, so why do you tell me how you can have a stream on your channel if you want fulfilled prophecy? Brothers, tell me how this one has failed. Omar, 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 Omar. Okay, Omar, 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 someone spiritually blind, we cannot give them sight. So that's it. We will stop here and we will move on to the next prophecy. Mahdi Begum, inshallah. Okay, so Omar can leave. Thank you very much for your time, Omar. And we will get someone else in. We will allow but, another but, Ahmad why, to come my, and, my and, and try. Why and did try. Allah kill 10 million people? Try. Okay, he's just repeating himself. Okay. Right, so those people he's who have already joined himself. before, and, we are not taking them again. We are taking only the Ahmadis okay. for now. Um, yeah, carry okay. on. Do you you're going to make another prophecy claim, or shall we? Yeah. Mohammed Begum, Mohammed Begum, Mohammed Begum. You want to discuss? Yes. Go. You okay? Let me put the case forward. I'll do it. Okay. One second. Okay. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna make the case and let the Ahmadis come in and dismantle the case. Okay. So. Okay, this one is a bit long, but bear with me. Okay, the prophecy concerning Muhammad Ibegam, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, in support of his claim to the office of Messiah and Prophet of God, prophesied concerning his marriage 
to Muhammad Ibrahim, a woman much younger than himself. It was the will of God that she should be married to him. He had been married to him in heaven. She is also to be married to him on earth. He gives the following account of his prophecy with regards to his marriage to Muhammad Ibrahim. And I quote Mirza, a sister of Ahmad Beg was married to my cousin, Ghulam Hussein. His whereabouts for the last 25 years are unknown. His estate, which was lawfully ours, has been transferred by us to the sister of Ahmad Beg. In the meantime, Ahmad Beg sought the permission of his sister to transfer her estate under the name of his son, Muhammad Beg. Since such a deed of transfer without our permission was useless, Ahmad Beg requested that we give our consent to the transfer by signing in the appropriate place. I was about to sign when I remembered that for a period of time, it has been our custom to seek guidance from Almighty God. God Almighty instructed me to initiate the process of matrimony with Ahmad Beg's daughter, Muhammadi Begum by informing him that this marriage will be a sign of blessing and grace, but that if he refuses to give this girl in marriage, the consequences will be harmful for her. If she is wedded to someone else, he, the husband, will die within two and a half years after the wedding. And I, likewise, the father of the girl, will die within three years. Okay? And likewise, the father, sorry, not I. And likewise, the father of the girl will die within three years. So the prophecy goes, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had a piece of land. Someone wanted it. Okay. But before signing away the piece of land, he told the guy to get his daughter married to Mirza. Her name was Muhammadi Begum. Okay. So the man was Ahmad Beg. Ahmad Beg had a daughter called Muhammadi Begum. And Mirza, before signing away the land, told him that I have been given a revelation from God to get married to your underage girl or young girl or young woman, if you want to call her that. And if that doesn't happen, Mirza threatened that if she gets married to another person, that person will die within two and a half years. This is a prophecy and it's a threat. It's a challenge. And the father will die within three years. Then in those days, it was related that Almighty God had decreed to bring this girl into marriage with his humble servant to Mirza. This, uh, this is Ainai Kamalat Islam. This book is Ainai Kamalat Islam, published in 1888, page 281 to 288. Okay, now, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed proclaimed that the fulfillment of the prophecy was a test of the truth of his messianic office. If he does not succeed in marrying Muhammad I Begum, he is a liar and his prophetic office is invalid. A man cannot make such claims. These signs are in the hands of God. I'm again quoting Mirza, by the way. If anyone wants to challenge us on these quotes, please do so. Just as there is no change in the words of God, even so it is impossible that this prophecy of mine should remain unfulfilled. Another test of Mirza's truth. And remember that if the second part of this prophecy is not fulfilled, then I am the worst human being. Have no doubt that this is the true promise of God whose words never change. So now, the revelation, the revelation of God concerning Muhammad I Begum failed to demonstrate any visible improvement in the relationship between Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and Ahmad Beg, the father of Muhammad I Begum. The matter seemed trivial and easily achievable. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad had concluded that Ahmad Beg was in need of his help and that for the sake of worldly advantage, he would not decline his offer and would give him his daughter to wife. But he underestimated Ahmad Beg, who in fact rejected his offer and refused to give him his daughter in marriage. Now, this, has, this whole thing has an ethical side to it as well. This is supposed to be a prophet of God who is blackmailing the father, is blackmailing the father to give his daughter in marriage to him. Otherwise, he will not sign the property over to him. 
Mirza Ghulam Ahmad thereupon began to lose faith in the revelation of God and words of prophecy and commenced a correspondence with his relatives and acquaintances asking them to persuade Ahmad Beg to give him his daughter. Ahmad Beg still refused to do so. In an attempt to persuade him, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad wrote a letter to his son's father-in-law who had married the sister of Ahmad Beg. The letter read as follows. From the humble servant Ghulam Ahmad Ludhiana, dated 2nd of May 1891, to Sher Ali Beg. Peace of God be upon you. I have never withheld anything from you. I always considered you an upright man, virtuous, and a firm believer in the religion of Islam. I have heard that on the 2nd of the festival of Eid, Muhammad e. Begum will be married to Sultan Muhammad. Now, because Muhammad e. Begum is already engaged. Should this marriage be executed, my rivals will mock me, humiliate me, and spread evil rumors about me. Had you spoken to Ahmad Beg about it, would it have been difficult for him to understand? I am not a sweeper or a pariah that it would have been disgraced to have Muhammad e. Begum marry me. It was my desire that the offspring of Muhammad e. Begum should inherit my wealth. Now, Mirza having realized that Ahmad Beg is not going to give his daughter to Mirza in marriage. He started to now uh, basically make it happen himself. Now, God seems to be against him. Allah, who apparently revealed this revelation to him, but clearly it wasn't working. So he made an intention to make it happen by threatening people. Now, I continue. In the same letter, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad threatened Sher Ali Beg with the divorce of his daughter, who was married to his son, Fazal Ahmad. If you do not succeed in persuading Ahmad Beg to have his daughter marry me, my son, Fazal Ahmad, will divorce your daughter. So said Mirza. He warned his son that he must divorce his wife if the wedding with Muhammad e. Begum does not take place. So disturbed was Mirza by the refusal of Ahmad Beg to give his daughter Muhammad e. Begum to him. Should he refuse to comply with his wish, Walam Ahmad will disown him and he will have no share in his father's inheritance. So he even threatened his son to divorce his wife in case Muhammad e. Begum is not married to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani because Mom, uh, Mirza's son was married to the daughter of uh, the aunt of Muhammad e. Begum. Since the marriage to Muhammad e. Begum never took place, Fazal Ahmad acceded to the wish of his father. Having failed to persuade, uh, persuade Ahmad Beg through Sher Ali, Ghulam Ahmad wrote a second letter to Sher, Ali's, uh, Sher Ali Beg's wife, the sister of Ahmad Beg, in the hope that she would be a better tool in his hands. From Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Ludhiana, dated May 4, 1891, to the wife of Sher Ali Beg, let it be known to Izzat Bibi's mother, that she should convince her brother, Ahmad Beg, to nullify Muhammad e. Begum's marriage to Sultan Muhammad. Otherwise, my son, Fazal Ahmad, will divorce your daughter, Izzat Bibi. Should he refuse to do so, I will dis uh, uh, inherit him. So Mirza now is threatening the aunt of Muhammad e. Begum to get her brother to agree to the marriage of Muhammad e. Begum with Mirza. Otherwise, Mirza will divorce uh, the daughter of Izzat Bibi, who was the wife of Mirza's son. The situation was becoming critical. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad failed to receive favorable, uh, favorable answers. The news of the impending marriage of Muhammad e. Begum was shattering his prophecy. He became the target of mockery, and he did not know how to stop Ahmad Beg from marrying off his daughter to Sultan Muhammad. He began to apply pressure to his son, Fazal Ahmad, who, were, who, as a result, initiated the process of excluding Izzat Bibi from family affairs. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad harbored a grudge against her. Her survival and the perpetuation of her marriage depended upon the marriage of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. On the verge of despair, she took the matter in her own hands and wrote a desperate letter to her mother. The letter ran as follows. The mother of Izzat Bibi. At, at this time, Pray look at my misery and wretched state. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad does not spare me anything. Advise your brother Ahmad Beg to marry off his daughter to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad or I will be divorced. 
if you fail to convince your brother, take uh, take me away from here as soon as possible. It is not uh, for me to stay here. The adverse situation continued to prevail. The hopes of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed remained unfulfilled. When he realized that second-hand correspondence was of no avail, he decided to correspond directly with Ahmed Beg from humble servant Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, dated July 17th, 1891, to Mirza Ahmed Beg. Peace of God and blessings be upon you. I do not know by which method and words I should explain myself so that the love, sincerity, and aff affinity I feel towards you should be exposed. Among Muslims, the truthfulness of an individual's word is determined by his oath. When the Muslim surveys by the name of God, the other Muslim immediately removes all doubts from his mind. So I swear by God that I am truthful in this matter. I received a revelation from God that your daughter is to be married to me. If she's married to me, if she's married to someone else, it will cause punishment. Consequently, she must be married to me. Therefore, I humbly and respectfully request that you give me your daughter to wife which will be a source of blessings. There are 10 million people who are looking forward to the fulfillment of this prophecy. This humble servant who believes in there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, likewise believes in the revelations he has received from God. I request you to cooperate with me in fulfilling this prophecy. No one may gainsay God that which has been decreed in heaven will be fulfilled on earth. Blessings of God be upon you, and may he enlighten you about the matter concerning which I have received a revelation from God. May he help you in your problems and provide your physical and spiritual needs. If I have annoyed you by some inappropriate word, please forgive me. Despite all his efforts, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was unable to convince Ahmad Beg of the truthfulness of his revelational message. His letters, threats, and declarations failed to prevent the marriage of Muhammad Begum to Sultan Muhammad. They were married on April 17, 1892, shattering Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's revelations, completely decimating him. The frustration resulting from this prophecy was crushing for Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. He had hoped to prove his incumbency of the office through visible results of his words. Uh, but this proved futile. His propaganda against Sultan Muhammad also failed to disqualify him from marrying Muhammad e. Begum, and he ignored the words of the prophecy and the consequence which was supposedly to engulf him. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad now endeavored to compensate for his false prophecy by pre pre presenting the argument that Sultan Muhammad was excused from the horrible consequence of prophecy because he was frightened. This is Ahmadi propaganda. There is no proof that Sultan Muhammad was ever frightened by the prophecy. Two letters by Sultan Muhammad written concerning this matter reveal the facts. March 3, 1924, signed by Sultan Muhammad, he wrote, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad prophesied concerning my death. I never considered the prophecy as effective. Neither was I ever frightened by the words of the prophecy. I have always been and still am a follower of the religion of Islam. He was writing this in 1924. Mirza said, anyone who gets married to Muhammad e. Begum will die within two and a half years. This is 1924, um, 16 years after the death of Mirza himself. So this is the story, the sad story of Muhammad e. Begum affair. And this is the prophecy. Mirza prophesied that Muhammad e. Begum will get married to him. This is a revelation from God and it will be fulfilled. She will be married to him. And he said, if she does not marry him, then her husband, whoever she marries, will die within two and a half years and her father will die within three years. That did not happen. Muhammad Begum did not marry him. And in this, one comes to realize the ethics and the morals or the moral condition of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani trying to blackmail everyone around him, his son, his daughter-in-law, her aunt, his relative who wanted the land. And in return for the land, Mirza wanted a, a young girl in his marriage. Mirza himself was very, very old at the time. All these things put together they again clarify that Mirza was a liar, a kadab, a dajjal. Over to you, Mtiaz Bhai. Jazakallah khair, Nan Bhai, for uh, summarizing the whole uh, story. So I just want to mention two very important things. 
because uh, any uh, Ahmadi brother who's coming in the stream and same is happening in the messages as well. They're giving an impression that we are taking half an hour and then we give them one minute to respond. No, no, brothers. Look, before we start any prophecy, we need to give what the prophecy is so everybody the can context. know. This is, yeah, the context. Okay, and this is the prophecy. After this, you will see and you, you can see the stream in the back as well. When people come, then when they raise a point, then we all, we all take few minutes each. Okay, so this was only to explain because some people are giving this impression that maybe we're not giving them enough time to respond. So, so please be clear on this one. Secondly, uh, now, what is our question? What, whatever Ahmadi, whichever Ahmadi brother is coming, inshallah, in the future on the, on the stream, please listen the question which you need to address. Our question is, the prophecy, the subject matter of the prophecy is that Muhammadi Begum will marry Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And Mirza said many times that if it will happen before she is married to someone, obviously it will be fine. But if she marries someone, then still the husband will die and she has to be marrying back to me. So our question, please listen to the question. Did Mirza Ghulam Ahmad marry Muhammadi Begum? Please answer this question first. After that, you can raise the reasons that why did this not happen? Once you raise the reasons, we can deal with them one by one. But please first answer the question directly. All right, I'm going to bring in a, another guest from the Ahmadi community. Assalamu alaikum to all the Muslim brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Where are you calling from, Fateh? I'm from Canada. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, another continent, alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, did you listen to the question, by the way? Yeah, I listened to the question. Okay. And uh, what's your first response? First of all, uh, uh, just give me the details. Uh, whoever from all of you read the whole books of Prophet Messiah, just raise the hand. Whoever read that. Look, my friend. Can you just answer the question? Just, just raise There's the no, hand. If nobody, are not... then, then it's okay. Then it's I, I, okay. I, I, I yeah. have something. I, I, I have a question. I have a question. Have you read any tafsir of the Quran from cover to cover? Alhamdulillah, I have, I have read about Which one? seven tafsir. Which one? Seven tafsir. Which one? Tafsir Which one? Ibn Kasir, tafsir Mazhari, tafsir okay. Muna. How does... Okay, how does Ibn Kathir do the tafsir of the verse? Surah Hud, uh, verse 18. Yeah. No, no, Surah Chalo, Hud, verse Chalo. 18. Wine min ahlil kitab, you yes. want me to, to do the, that tafsir? No, no, In no, that, Surah Hud, verse 18. That, just, just brother, just, just brother, listen. In that again, verse, again, just, just stick to, again, stick to the top. Fateh Islam, Fateh Islam. You asked Stick me. To the topic. You asked me. Muhammad you asked me. You asked me. You yeah, asked okay. me. Muhammad, Muhammad Begum. Muhammad Begum. Was she married to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Khatiani or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. First of all, you all accepted that you didn't. You didn't read anyone. Anyone didn't read the whole book. So from his Messiah, Jazakumullah. First of all, I would like to answer that. Typically, everybody knows that. The Muhammadi Begum was not married with the promised Messiah. Just, yeah. just give me two minutes. You got two that. minutes. Yeah, go ahead. After that, he clearly marked that there are certain conditions. If they are fulfilled, then that will be happening. And both of you in the start, Brother Imtiaz, uh, if I'm not wrong, he accepted that few predictions are bound with few conditions you you don't accept the conditions with any proper conditions I, I did not discuss any kind of about conditions you don't accept that there should not be any kind of conditions once brother, there's something brother, is prophesied. brother you, you said that yes or no brother brother my... yes or no if you believe that you cannot accept the prophecies could have conditions with them can that yes or no now? Can I, no, no, can I respond? Yes or now? no? After that, respond. Yes or no? First. Yeah, he can respond. Same like I, I did. How, I, how, I answered bro, this. Islam. I okay. answered you. Fate I Islam. answered Fate, you, brother. Fate Islam. Fate Islam. Fate Islam. How old are you? Yes or no? How old are you? I am yes 35 no? years old. How, uh, 
Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm saying yes or no. How old are you? Yes or uh, no? I'm just uh, I'm just asking the question. How old are you? Relevant. How I'm not old asking you, yes you no? the, about the numbers. Okay. I'm not asking so, you so, about so the numbers. So please, uh, let let about... let Muhammad Imtiaz yeah. let Muhammad Imtiaz respond to you. Otherwise, we're gonna let you go and bring someone else in who will speak to us. Please, Muhammad Imtiaz. Brother, one, please. you you must have that much courage to listen the truth. At least we we have or no credit for the last six hours. What do you we think we're doing no for credit. nearly six hours? What do you think we're doing? I was talking. I, was I am. I'm also bear. I am also bearing you from the last six hours and the last program also in the six hours. And I have the video evidence. You can. No, but you said to have the courage. If we didn't have the courage, why would we be here for nearly six hours? Yeah, it's, if somebody is listening, you. Okay, listen. You, you know, in order faith. to have a productive discussion, just have a dialogue. You know, there's no yes yeah. and no for every question. You know be, that. Every question then, is not answered then, in yes or no. Okay, Hashim brother. Okay. Then you must have that much courage if you are asking, if some, were, if, if some MD is coming, he must have to answer that Muhammad Begum is married or not. Then you already answered you that. You should not ask this kind of question then. then My you friend, you already answered it. So it was, it was a legitimate question. That's the reason you already answered that nobody says that so, he was married to her. So you so have already I answered asked, that. I it's not an brother. irrational question. I okay. ask, brother. So, so, so Fateh Islam, Islam. Fateh Islam. Fateh Islam. Fateh Islam. Mirza <coughs> Sahib. Fateh Islam. Yo, yo, Fateh Islam. Mirza Sahib said, anyone who marries Muhammadi Begum, which uh, in this case, <coughs> Sultan Muhammad uh, married, uh, he said that within two and a half years, that person will die. Sultan Muhammad lived long after Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. 1948. He died in 1948. You made your point. 40 years after Mirza. 40 years you made after your Mirza. point. Can I speak now? Yeah, go yes. ahead. Yeah. So, did Promise Messiah said to us do astaghfar, do toba? Yes. For what? It's it's brother your two Allah. minutes. Can you just answer, please? Yeah. No, just answer. Allah. It's your two minutes. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm just I, making a few points. I, did I think it's not relevant to this. Salam, did okay. promise Wait, uh, Hashim, we're going to have to let Salam, someone else. Who is Hashim, prophesizing? We're going to have to let someone yeah. else. Yeah, Hashim, I think so. Yeah. Hashim. No, no, brother, yes, just please. answer me. We are going to yes, give you Hashim. one more minute. If you don't answer, then we're going to let somebody else. Because you're wasting I, I, time I, I, right I, I, now. No, I'm not wasting. I'm you wasting are. You're not. You're not sticking to the topic. Stick to the topic. I'm. I'm sticking on the topic. You're asking that, irrelevant questions. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Fateh Islam, Fateh Islam, I'll ask you again. I'll ask you again. Fateh Islam. Last chance, yeah. Last okay. chance. Okay. Okay. Just, I'll ask just, you again. Just let me okay. clear. That, then, okay. Then, uh, One second. Fateh Islam, I'll ask you again. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani specifically said that anyone who marries Muhammadi Begum will face disasters. And die within two and a half years. And Sultan Muhammad married her and lived for 40 years and died an Orthodox Muslim, a Muslim, a Sunni Muslim. So, so let me do you think, let, let me do you think Mirza that. was a liar? Do you think Mirza was a liar? No. no, no, no. Let me prove you. Okay. Okay. First of all, all the audience. Brothers, listen carefully. If somebody predicts about your or about my mother or about my grandmother, I will never accept him. I will never accept him. The grandson of the Muhammadi Begum accepted the Ahmadiyat and his family is still Ahmadi. I have a very close okay, friend. How is that an answer to our question? How is just, that an brother, answer just, to our question? I have question? two minutes. Let, let you, me finish you, my you answer. Are an you, you have that to much courage to listen to someone. You need to answer the brother, question. Stop, your, okay. stop okay. Yeah, Hashim, yes, I'm answering. Hashim, I'm answering. Hashim, this, he's Hashim. there to do propaganda. Okay. Yeah, we gave, him, okay. we gave him chance twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These guys, they have no answers. All they have is propaganda, claims of victory, Claims of all this. Okay, let's see if this person does something. Zevius. Yes, uh, Imtiaz Bhai. First, first Imtiaz Bhai, go ahead. One second. Uh, Zevius will come to you in a second. Imtiaz Bhai, over to you. Yes, Zevius so, will come uh, to inshallah, you. Inshallah, brothers, whoever has just joined now from the Ahmadi community, this is my simple request. I did not ask anybody to give me yes or no answer. Hashim clarified already. I simply said 
that the subject matter of the prophecy was that Muhammadi Begum will marry Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Did this happen? Okay, this is first question. If you say no, after that you have every right to explain that why it, it, it did not happen. But my request is, once you explain, give each person give us one reason and allow us to respond. Because if you will say 10 things, nobody can understand what's happening here. So whatever, whoever has joined now, Brother uh, Zivis, please give, uh, first of all, tell us, did he marry? And after that, give us one reason why it did not happen. No, he did not marry. But I just wanted to ask a question because I'm not really knowledgeable on this topic of, you know, this prophecy and everything regarding it. Um, if Brother Adnan can give me the references or the uh, letters that you're reading, basically, of Muhammadi Begum to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed al -Islam, um, you know, you were reading a couple of those letters in your uh, yes, uh, thing before. Can, I can, if, I can. Would you be able to share them, yeah. uh, the ex exact scans or something? Which which letter in particular? Sultan Muhammad? Uh, so one was regarding Muhammad Ibn. Um, yeah, no. I can, Sultan I can Muhammad read it. When, I think you said Sultan something Muhammad. about... Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Go ahead. Wh which letter are you talking about? I, I, read, uh, I read Sultan Muhammad's letter and Mirza Ghulam Muhammad's letter. Yes. Yes, so would you would you have these scans for those? What, or what are these references? Just if that's fine. Which which particular which particular letter are you talking about? Because I read few. All, yes, all of them. For example, can uh, can you do the? So, uh, sorry, Xavier. Is, uh, is is that a reason you want the scans right now? Are you no, going okay, to respond okay. to the questions? We, we, no, no, no. We, we, I do not. Can, he can do it later. The, we can. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. No we can we give you the references the, later. But yeah, no, are you we able can, to answer the question that? Brother and Adnan. Yeah. Yes, so, I answered the question. So the, uh, the answer was no, but yes. then he said that, give us the reason why it didn't happen. Yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, I, I'm not really knowledgeable, so I'm not here to... Okay, shall we bring it. somebody else in then? Uh, yes, just one more question after this. So okay. if you can give me scans and references after whatever, you know, after this argument is done before the end of the stream. Also, another question was, would you also do the same thing at the end of the call? Um, you know, non ahmadi Muslims or Sunnis, yeah. they argue that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam died on the toilet and all these allegations. Is it true we don't from say your that. perspective? We don't say that. Okay. I didn't say that. We don't say that. In fact, I let me correct everyone on record that exactly. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani did not die inside the toilet. He did not die uh, even at the door of the toilet. He died in his room next to his bed the last thing he did was he defecated he had uh, a strong uh, bout of diarrhea according to his own son's testimony and then he uh, felt extremely weak and he died he passed away and there was a pot there was a pot next to his bed in this pot he relieved himself because he didn't have the strength to to go to the toilet so those who say that he died inside the toilet on the toilet they are wrong he died having relieved himself in, on, on a pot. He didn't have the courage to go to the toilet or the strength, and he died on the bed. <clears throat> according, to, according to the Ahmadi sources, by the way. Can I say and something? This, or is yeah, it... this, this, point, this point people raise to humiliate and uh, disgrace and insult Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, which I believe they shouldn't do. We have arguments we can use to debunk his claims. Um, the point I was making earlier was that he was the promised Messiah, the return of Jesus Christ. And with that, he should have had powers to heal people because he is the same Jesus who came earlier, no? Because he claimed to be the return of Jesus. Jesus he was known for specially healing people. He was he's, he specialized in touching people and healing them. This One man of his key was miracles, disease. Yeah. He was riddled with disease. Disease ridden, as they say. He had, by his own testimony, for 20 years, he had diarrhea. All right. Can I can I answer if it's fine? But just one quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. Because yes. you mentioned that he defecated and then right after. Um, that's not true because I'm reading an article and it has the primary source, which is Al-Badr, June 1908. It says that he died on his deathbed surrounding his family, reciting um, the praise of Allah, oh, my beloved, and the last time he used bathroom was like 2 a.m. and then he died in the 10 a.m. or something. He even prayed Do you Fajr. have Siratul Mahdi? Do you have Siratul yes, Mahdi? Yes, I have Siratul Mahdi, yes. 
all of them say exactly the same thing which is he went in the toilet last time was 2 am or something and then he died 10 am according to multiple sources so the very source okay. is the al badr you know the newspaper that um, jamaat has and right okay. the very first week after his death the whole article explains oh. what happened at night so it says he got sick at uh, 2 am he went to the restroom later he was in the state of unconsciousness until and then he woke up again uh, uh, here and there prayed fajr and then at 10 am he passed away so that's the <laughs> al badr reference okay and I it's the have, you, i have siratul okay i have siratul mahdi i have siratul mahdi in front of me yes brother zevius i have siratul mahdi in front of me uh-huh. page 11 page 10 and page 11 yes. okay so i will read now is ke baad okay i will read the whole paragraph sure khaksar ne walida sahiba ko ki ye riwayat jo shuru mein darj ki gayi hai jab dobara walida sahiba ke paas raitik sorry sorry sorry, 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 sorry to cut you off can you read one before this because it's explaining the riwayat before it sorry because it's no, explaining okay let me read this one first let me okay. this is the one i i am talking about okay all right go ahead but खाकसार ने वालिदा साहिबा की ये रिवायत जो शुरू में दर्ज की गई है जब दोबारा वालिदा साहिबा के पास बरए तस्दीक बयान की और हजरत मसीह मऊद की वफात का जिक्र आया तो वालिदा साहिबा ने फरमाया कि हजरत मसीह मऊद को पहला दस्त खाना खाने के वक्त आया मगर इसके बाद थोड़ी देर तक हम लोग आपके पांव दबाते रहे और आप आराम से लेट कर सो गए और मैं भी सो गई लेकिन कुछ देर के बाद आपको फिर हाजत महसूस हुई और गालिबन एक या दो दफा रफे हाजत के लिए आप पखाना तशरीफ ले गए इसके बाद आपने ज्यादा जोफ महसूस किया तो अपने हाथ से मुझे जगाया मैं उठी तो आपको इतना जोफ था कि आप मेरी चरपाई पर ही लेट गए और मैं आपके पाओ दबाने के लिए बैठ गई थोड़ी देर के बाद हजरत साहिब ने फरमाया तुम अब सो जाओ मैंने कहा नहीं मैं दबाती हूँ इतने में आपको एक और दस्त आया मगर अब इस कदर जोफ था कि आप पखाना ना जा सकते थे इसलिए मैंने चारपाई के पास ही इंतजाम कर दिया और आप वहीं बैठकर कर हुए और फिर उठकर लेट गए और मैं पाऊ दबाती रही मगर जोह बहुत हो गया था इसके बाद एक और दस्त आया और फिर आपको एक कह आई जब आप कैसे फारिग होकर लेट लेटने लगे तो इतना जोफ था कि आप लेटते लेटते पुश के बल चारपाई पर गिर गए और आपका सर चारपाई की लकड़ी से टकराया और हालत दगरगू हो गई इस पर मैंने घबरा कर कहा अल्लाह ये क्या होने लगा है तो आपने फरमाया ये वही है जो मैं कहा करता था खाकसार ने वालदा साहिबा से पूछा क्या आप समझ क्या आप समझ गई थी कि हजरत साहब का क्या मंशा है वालदा साहिबा ने फरमाया हाँ वालदा साहिबा ने यह भी फरमाया कि जब हालत खराब हुई और जो बहुत हो गया तो मैंने कहा मौलवी साहब हजरत मौलवी नूरुद्दीन साहब को बुला लें आपने फरमाया बुला लो नीज फरमाया महमूद को जगा लो फिर मैंने पूछा मोहम्मद अली खान यानी नवाब साहब को बुला लो वालदा साहिबा फरमाती है कि मुझे याद नहीं कि हजरत साहिब ने इसका कुछ जवाब दिया या नहीं और दिया तो क्या दिया सो इन दिस खोट इट इज कन्फर्म्ड that mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani relieved himself next to the bed and he became so weak because he couldn't go to the washroom he relieved himself next to the bed and he was so weak that he could not uh, lie down on the bed he fell on the bed his head hit uh, the bed and after that basically his wife screamed that what is this happening oh allah and he said it is the same thing i used to talk about so that's it and yeah that's my claim and then he, and, and yeah. then he says call uh, hakim nuruddin right right after yes yeah ji and this happened mm. at uh, around like 10 to 12 am or 2 am at night this is the yes a- so, event. so 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 right? what, what can i say yeah, yeah. so so, yeah. so this is and then after this this bunch of stuff happening and which is explained mm. in the narration that this narration is explaining you know i said read the line the narration before it so within the page 10 If you go to line number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
uh where is it no baje uh, okay that's right it says right there one second yeah हाँ नौ बजे के बाद हजरत साहब की हालत ज्यादा नाजुक होगी और थोड़ी देर तक आपका घर घर शुरू हुआ दिस इज नौ बजे इन द मॉर्निंग दिस नरेशन रीडिंग इज फ्रॉम द नाइट बिफोर एंड इफ यू रीड ऑल दी सोर्स राइट एवरी सिंगल सोर्स सो आई हैव अल बदर विद मी सिलसिला अहमदियत हजरत अहमद सीरत मेहदी हयात नासर ऑल ऑफ दिस से मिर्जा गुलाम अहमद इस्लाम यूज दिस इज वट हैपन थ्रू आउट द नाइट एंड यू नो दरेशन यू राइट ही फॉल्स टू द्राउंड गोज ऑन कॉन्शियस What, what you did said, I claim? You said he thing? defecated I, and then he died right after. So I'm saying he died. Yeah, so, at least eight so, hours so here, after he the, used that okay. restroom. Okay. What 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 was my claim? You you came and questioned me. Yeah, yeah. That so he you did said, not die in the toilet. I said, yeah, you're right. I confirmed that, right? And then yes. I gave you the yes. the version that he defecated next to his bed because he couldn't go to the toilet and yes. he had diarrhea. He had severe diarrhea. Yes. Okay. And there are other reports from. Mirza Sun, that state, uh, which are shorter in length, and that state, that state, that uh, uh, that Hazrat Sahib had a strong uh, bout of diarrhea, and then he passed away. These are, there are those reports as well. Do you want me to pull them out? You're going to waste our time. No, no, no. I was just I correcting you. You can, you can. No, do no, it, but you I did not saying... correct me because because um, I'm not. I'm can not we get back to the topic, Adnan? Because we we always yeah. keep diverting, and so, this. Can I say one line? Not yeah. helpful. Yeah. No, I was just yeah. correcting you. Sure. No, exactly. For correct, you you said you you corrected every non-Ahmadi that he did not die on the toilet or on the toilet or near the door or whatever, right? You corrected everyone. Yes. Exactly no. Correct. He. Yeah. So, yeah. I appreciate my, you. My claim, yes. My, yeah. Yeah. Can I, my just claim was like. always that he he defecated next to his bed. He couldn't go to the washroom. So this yeah. claim that he died on the toilet or inside the toilet has no uh, has no credibility. Yes. Yes. I was yes. not uh, any saying anything wrong with it. I was just clarifying that you said he defecated and then right after. I was just saying he did not do that uh, at least for ten or eight hours. Well, there are reports. Exactly. There are reports that say that. There are there reports no. that say there that. are no. I can, you can you can go check it later and then you can do a tweet or whatever. Have, you can do another video. I have checked. There are. I, there I are have diff- everything. There, okay. Uh, can I say one so, more last thing, I, and then you guys can go okay, ahead? Okay, so, so shall I thing. shall I put those reports up on Twitter later on? Then you can check sure. my Twitter, and then you can sure. Okay, Ji. I'll do that. Uh, and I'll one last that. thing, you can continue with okay. your thing. Um, he died just like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also had a pot under his bed, and he urinated and died right after on the chest of Hazrat Aisha radhi Allah taala. And this is in the hadith uh, also. What's your reference? No, no, brother Hashim. The reference is. Okay. Yes, I have uh, that. Allah, I'm I'm sitting with a lot of sabr. Alhamdulillah, I have a lot to say on this topic, but I want to say. Yeah. But yeah, you can say it. Uh, but I was no, just mentioning for we, those people, not you guys, obviously, but the people who are outside. They okay. Claim, we're gonna go back to Muhammad yes. Begum now. That now that is clear that Mirza Sab died uh, next to his bed or on his bed, whatever. Let's can go I to just add Muhammad something? Begum. Is it possible? Yeah. So he asked for a container to urinate in. He urinated well, why, there. Why? I mean, I, 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 I'm I'm so amazed yeah. tonight, especially amazed. It's been six hours. Why is it that Ahmadis are coming in and they are just talking about all these side issues, all these other things, and no one is actually taking our questions head on? Each and every single Ahmadi who has come in tonight, not one of you, okay, took these questions head on and gave us straight answers. There's a lot of manipulation. No, I I told you I do not know much about this topic, so I was not going to say I was. So let's. That's why I asked you specific knows. questions. So thank you. Zakla so for thank answering. You. Where are you calling thank from, Zabis? I'm from the USA. Okay, good. Thanks for your time. Zakla. Uh, thank you, yes. thank, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Hashim, I uh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Go okay. On. Okay, uh, Hashim, I I wanted to say this that uh, it has already been established the first point. that mohammadi begum did not marry with mirza sahab okay i really mm-hmm. want to read two quotes they are very important very very important okay that what is the implication of this first part please brothers uh, pay attention okay ruhani khazain volume 9 page 124 to 125 okay mirza sahab says first i quote the exact quotation in urdu then in short translation in english as well so he says that फातिहीन एंड देन इज और मैं बिल आखिर दुआ करता हूँ 
eventually said that I make this supplication, this dua, A Khudai Qadiru Aleem, O Allah, who are, who are overpowering everything, who are all knowing. Agar Atim ka Azabe Muhlak me Griftar Huna, or Ahmad Beg ki Beti ka, is Ajis ke Nika me Ana. Ye Pishen Goya, Teri Taraf se hain, to inko Asi Tor pe Zahir Farma, Jo Halkulla ke Upper Hujat ho, or Kor Batin Hasido Kamu Banhojai. He says, O Allah, my dua is that if the prophecy of Abdullah Atam, another prophecy, and this prophecy of I am marrying with the daughter of Ahmad Beg, O oh Allah, if you are the one who gave me this prophecy, O oh Allah, I beg you, I make dua to you that you fulfill this prophecy in a way that it can be an it can be a final case upon all the creation, upon all the people, all the creation, and those people who are blind spiritually, it can shut their mouths. And then he says, O oh Allah, which means, O oh, 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 uh, Allah, the, the dua continues, E Khudavan, ye pishin goya, agar teri taraf se nahi hai, to to tu mujhe namuradi aur zillat kisa halak kar de. O oh Allah, and if that is the case, that these prophecies are not from you, O oh Allah, then you let me die with, as, as a loser, with humiliation. Now, Mirza Sahib has made a dua. The, oh Allah, if these two prophecies, and one of them is the prophecy that he will marry to Muhammadi Begum. He said, oh Allah, if, this is, if it is from you, you fulfill it. And if it is not from you, then oh Allah, make me humiliated and make me a loser. Just inshallah, one more reference. Please pay attention. Very important reference. Ruhani Khazain, chapter number, uh, sorry, volume 11, Page number 223. This book is in Arabic and in, uh, uh, in, in Persian. I read the Arabic first. He says, Fawallazi baasalana Muhammadinil Mustaha. By Allah, I swear by Allah, the Allah who has appointed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I swear by Allah, wa jalahu khairul rusuli wa khairul wara. And the Allah who has made our Prophet the, the, the best of all the prophets and the best of all the creation. Inna haza haq. This prophecy, which, which prophecy? This inna in the context is very clear. He's talking about the prophecy of Muhammad Begum. He said, inna haza haqqun. This prophecy is the truth. Fasawfa tara. You will see it very soon. Wa inni, wa inni aj'alu. Please pay attention. Wa inni aj'alu hazal, hazal naba. I make this prophecy. What prophecy? That I will marry with Muhammadi Begum. I make this prophecy as a criterion to judge my truthfulness or my falsehood. Sorry, Sorry, Because the, the text is not clear. He says that. I am not saying myself, no, I am saying it only after I have been informed from Allah. Brothers and sisters, please, Ahmadi, brothers, please, pay. he said that he is taking an oath to Allah and then he says that I am going to make this prophecy, my marriage with Muhammadi Begum as a criterion. Inni aj'alu hazan naba me'yaru sidki wa kizbi. This prophecy is a criterion to see if I'm a liar or a truthful person. And I am not saying this from my own. I am saying this after Allah has taught me. Now, this is the implication, brothers and sisters. Please understand the gravity of the matter. He has clearly made this. This is called tahaddi. This is exactly what is called tahaddi. So in this tahaddi, and number one and number two, please remember the rule. When oath is taken... After that, things cannot be taken metaphorically. After the oath, things have to be taken literally. So this literally have to happen. It's not, it, it can't be metaphorically. Now, please, when, once any Ahmadi comes, I will put all of these two things on the screen. Please explain for us, how would you deal with this? Okay, shall we yes. bring the next one in? Yes. 
Osama, you're in next. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Okay, I'll go quickly here. Um, as I know, you guys have uh, stipulated two minutes, which we did not do on our stream. But in any case, uh, Muhammad Begum, they were families of the Promised Messiah of Islam, and they were staunch opponents of Islam and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They used to curse the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. In any case, this was a prophecy to help have them repent and come back to Islam and to come back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the whole the problem of Messiah of Islam himself said that in the in the prophecy says that that I will not humiliate them or strike them in one strike, but rather gradually so that they may return and become the, of those who repent. So clearly, repenting repentance is part of this prophecy. So let's go to that real quick. Mirza Ahmad Beg, who is the father of Muhammad Begum, did not marry uh, the Muhammad Begum to the Prophet of as is clear. He married to Mirza Sultan on April of 1892. He died five months later, and everyone in the family or the family repented, especially Mirza Sultan Ahmad, who was the husband of Muhammad Begum. Now, it's very clear that he repented because later on he writes in Al Fazl, in our newspapers, he said, I have received your request. I am grateful that you remember me. I consider the late respected Mirza Sahib, and I still do, to be a holy man, a servant of Islam, of noble character and devout. Then he also writes that the state of my heart can be determined by the fact that at the time of his prophecy, of this prophecy... Is Al-Fazal, sorry, sorry, just to understand, is Al-Fazal Akadiani newspaper? Yes. Can I uh, just give me one second? The state of my heart, he writes, Mirza Sultan Ahmad, who is the individual, the, the one who married Muhammad Begum, he says, the state of my heart can be determined by the fact that at the time of this prophecy, the Aryas and the Christians wished to hand me 100,000 rupees so that I would issue a statement against Mirza Sahib. Had I taken that money, I could have become a rich man. But it was that very faith and belief which prohibited me from this act. So it's clear that Mirza Sultan Ahmad realized that this prophecy had become true and he had repented. Now, moreover, how is this clear? It says, it's clear from the evidence that my wife, and I'll tell you, the individuals that, who accepted from the Ahmadiyya Muhammad, uh, Ahmadiyya from the, uh, the family of Muhammad Begum. Number one, the wife of Mirza Ahmad Beg, who is the mother of Muhammad Begum, she accepted Ahmadiyya. She accepted Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam. Why would the mother accept? Secondly, there's the sister of Muhammad Begum, Inayat Begum, who also accepted. There's the grandson of Mirza Ahmad Beg who accepted. Okay, your, there's, your time is up, Osama. There's just uh, one last thing, just one last thing, uh, uh, Hashim Bhai. Uh, now, we, uh, I think Razi Bhai had mentioned this as well that these have mashrut, they are shurut. This is tafsir by Dawi, bi anna wa'id al fusaqi mashrutun bi adm al afm. Right? So the, there is shara'it. There are bad shara'it, and this was clear from earlier that he did not that the, the whole goal of this prophecy was to have these people return to Islam, return to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu because they used to be atheists now and they used to curse the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, your, your time okay, go ahead. Okay, so inshallah, just to make it simple for the people, whatever he said that you know the family of Muhammad Begum accepted. It's all red herring. It's nothing to do with our prophecy. Our point is this. Now, please listen the point brother carefully. So the gist of the point he made and all the Jamaat makes that after the death of father, because Sultan Beg, uh, sorry, Ahmad Beg, the father of uh, the, 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 the girl, Muhammad Begum, he died six months after the marriage. Okay, this thing happened. Even though I don't want to go on that tangent that it still did not fulfill the prophecy. Okay, anybody has to die. The prophecy was the son will die first and the father will die after. This was the prophecy. Just death is not a prophecy for anybody. Anybody has to die anyways. And I have the reference that when Mirza was making this prophecy, he knew that Ahmad Beg was very sick. He was almost choking. He knew that he's sick. He will die in three years. I can produce the evidence on this one, but that's not the topic. The topic is this. If they have repented, because Ahmadi claims that after the death of Ahmad Beg, which was just six months, which means in uh, 18, uh, in basically around 1892, okay, this family has repented and they have done their toba. And because of their repentance and because of their toba, the everything was cancelled. Is it the claim of Usama, just to clarify before I answer? Usama. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, okay. they had repented so that the, okay. there was mashrut, the shurut had been met, and so okay. uh, the prophecy was fulfilled. When, when, no, no, when, when were the shurut met? Please say that. When, in which year? Usama. As, as soon as uh, 
the the father of Muhammad Begum died, right? Mirza yeah. Sultan, the the husband of Muhammad Begum died, or, okay. or sorry, he he repented. Okay, okay. Now look at this one. Let me give you a very simple way to disprove this. I'm going to give you the reference that Mirza up till 1905. 1905. Think, we're talking almost 17 years after. Uh, sorry, yes, almost. He is still saying that I am going to marry Muhammad no. Begum, number one. He said that this is Takdir e Mubram. It's the destiny. It's not Takdir e Mollak. And please pay attention. Then he explains that Takdir e Mubram cannot be changed. He said this part of the prophecy is Takdir e Mubram. It cannot be changed, number one. Number two, he said, these are the kalimat of Allah. These are the words of Allah. If these words will change, then the kalam of Allah will become batil, falsehood. I will give you all of these references. My brother, if family has already repented and everything has already been cancelled in 1892, why Mirza Sahib is preaching all of that up till 1905? Give me the answer. And also, you, and also, I have another question. I want to add. I want to add something very quickly. If Sultan uh, Muhammad has repented, why did he not divorce Muhammad Begum? And why is Mirza still lusting after Muhammad Begum in 1905? The question is very valid. If this is true, and Osama, it is true that up to 1905, Mirza is still lusting after Muhammad Begum. Why did Sultan Muhammad not divorce her and let her marry this noble saint, uh, as you claim that uh, Sultan Muhammad had these views about Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiyan? Over to you. Okay, sorry. Uh, one second. Listen, I just need the 1905 reference, please. Can we get that? Okay, no worries. Give me one second. I'll give you the reference. Put it up on the screen. Put it up on the screen, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I no and, if, and, and by and the way, if that's the, true. The, the the mubram and, 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 yeah the mubram is only if he goes against the repentance the mubram is always if sultan yeah, Muhammad okay. rejects him. What, re, that's okay. the mubram you know that's the conditions the you, know, you know the conditions of repentance you know the conditions of repentance I will he come clearly to you, repented yeah, yeah okay no he clearly repented as you claim he repented repentance has conditions number one you stop the action number two you don't uh, no, number one, you are ashamed of your action. That's number two, problem. you stop it. You stop it. You stop it. Number three, you don't go back to it. So repentance for what? Marrying a Muslim woman? A Muslim man getting married to a Muslim woman, okay, against the threats, against the threats of a so-called prophet? And uh, if they uh, actually, you, if they, wait, if they, if they actually believed in his prophecies and his prophethood, they would never dare get married to each other. So now after the father died, you're claiming he repented. So that, that repentance should have, should have constituted the marriage of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani. And we have shown already that Mirza was so desperate, so desperate to get, get this done, that he was threatening his son, he was threatening his daughter-in-law, he was threatening the mother of his daughter-in-law, the father of his daughter-in-law, he was threatening the father of the girl. He used anything at his means to get this done, but it never happened. Okay, can I speak? Okay. Uh, can I, yeah. Can I go? Okay, look, uh, I think we're going to yeah. go back and forth. It's going to be really, you know, get this word, that Annoying. word, this year, that year. But the, 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 the Amr al waqiyah right? What's the waqiyah What happened? The family of Muhammad Begum accepted. And I'll tell you, my wife, her extended family are descendants of Muhammad Begum themselves. So why would they accept Mirza Ghulam Ahmed? How, how is this? How wait, would they wait, wait, accept? Wait. No, just how, why would they accept? How, how is this? How is this an argument? And Mirza, by the way, okay, Mirza Ghulam, wait, wait, wait. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani's own son did not believe in him. He didn't pray uh, Janazah. Now what? Muhammad, now what Muhammad, gonna... the Sultan, he did believe in him. He did believe in him. Why did Why did Mirza not pray Janazah? He did believe in him afterwards. Listen, though. No, uh, I'm uh, asking you a question. Why did Mirza no, not pray Janazah? No, Adnan, listen to me. If, if, Listen, let's come on the topic. Yeah, let's come on the topic. Yes. Okay, please, uh, Osama, uh, note down all the references. Okay, and then you can check every single one of them. The reference, uh, which is for 1905, it is Al Hakam, which is the literature of the Jamaat, authentic literature, 30th June 
1905 and i have the original scan of this paper al hakam can you pay, can you put it up can yes. you put it up yes please we're going to show it to you yes no problem and and there goes your repentance claim amen so if mirza is still lusting after muhammad i begum in 1905 um where is the repentance in this can you see the screen brothers uh yeah hashim there you go in it is zoom in okay yeah. okay yes. 1905 there you yes. go musamma is... musam yeah sorry 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 yes मुसम्मात मोहम्मदी को दूसरा शख्स निकाह करके ले गया और वो दूसरी जगह ब्याही गई अल जवाब वही इलाही में मैं ये नहीं था कि था कि दूसरी जगह ब्याही नहीं जाएगी बल्कि ये था कि जरूर है कि अव्वल दूसरी जगह ब्याही जाए सो ये एक पेश गोई का हिस्सा था कि दूसरी जगह ब्याही जाने से पूरा हुआ इलाम इलाही के ये लफ्स सयकफी का هم فسيكفيكم الله ويردها يا ويردها اليك اليك يعني خدا تیرے ان مخالفوں کا مقابلہ کرے گا اور وہ جو دوسری جگہ بیائی جائے گی خدا پھر اس کو تیری طرف لائے گا جاننا چاہیے کہ رد کے معنی عربی زبان میں یہ ہے کہ ایک چیز एक जगह है और वहां से चली जावे और फिर वापस लाई जावे बस चूंकि हमारे अरबा में से क्योंकि चूंकि मोहम्मदी हमारे अकारबा में से बल्कि करीब खानदान में से थी यानी मेरे चचा जाद हमशीर हमशीरा की लड़की थी और दूसरी तरफ से करीब रिश्ता में मामू जाद भाई की लड़की थी यानी अहमद बेग की बस इस आ, इस सूरत में रद्द के मानी उस पर मुताबिक आए कि वो पहले के वो पहले वो हमारे पास थी और फिर वो चली गई और कस्बा पट्टी में बहाई गई और वादा ये है कि फिर वादा ये कि फिर निकाह के तालुक से वापस आएगी से वापस आएगी सो ऐसा ही होगा सो मेरा साहब इन 1905 is saying that muhammadi begum will physically come back to him she has physically left the family she will come back to me and my enemies will be disgraced i e sultan muhammad who married her so where is the repentance okay, can I, can I talk? so can I this talk? is wait wait this is this is a lie made up by the Just ahmadi jamaat relax to save uh, mirza not... from uh, rebuke and ridicule Okay, yes. okay. 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 Can I go? Can I go now? Okay. Uh, listen. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that my wife's extended family are some of them are descendants of Muhammad Ibn Begum. You're repeating yourself. Stop so him. it tells Stop you him. this is. Uh, Hashem, he's repeating Anand, himself. Anand, 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 please allow me. Yes. Anand, please allow me yes. to say something. Yes. Please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters in in humanity, Ahmadi community, please pay attention. It is being said that after the death of Ahmad Beg, the family repented. Now, because I wanted to go one by one, listen everybody carefully. I will. I I have the reference ready. Mirza Sahib said that the, the repentance is. That what this person is doing, whatever his fault is, he basically comes back to Allah and leaves that thing. And I have the reference that this is what is meant by Tawbah or Ruju. And we all know this anyways. Now, I have the second reference. Please pay attention, Adnan Bhai. I have a second reference. Mirza Sahib has clearly said that the fault or sin of Sultan Ahmad is... That he married to Muhammadi Begum despite we giving him all of these prophecies. So this was the fault or the sin. So the ruju from this sin is he must divorce Muhammadi Begum. Only then it can be repentance. Now I can give you both references. Number one, according to Mirza, repentance means leave that thing and come back. Number two, according to Mirza, the sin or the fault of Sultan Ahmad is he married to Muhammadi Begum. How can you say he repented? Point number one, please listen very carefully. Point number two, brother, please be, please use your mind, my, all my brothers. If if the family has already repented in 1892-93 and Mirza is saying the same thing in 1907, does it make any sense to you? Think about it makes sense point. to the Ahmadis. It makes sense to the Ahmadis. It makes sense. Very. It makes a lot of sense to the Ahmadis. Okay. Now, uh, now Osama, again, please, the story, Osama, please address, the story this point. Osama, please address this point. Osama, address this point that if the number one prove to us, prove to us because the repentance means that whatever sin you're committing, you have to abandon that. Okay. Can you, can you put on 1907 and, reference? 1907 yes, reference. Can I put already? Put yes, already there. Yeah. And second Ashen, point. Put it up, please. And second, second point, very important point, very important point. As long as Mirza was alive. He kept saying this, that I will marry Muhammadi Begum. But obviously we all know, in 1908, he died. He did not marry. Towards, and, and that is very important point. As, and guess what? I have a complete list of references. Please pay attention, everybody. <coughs> Mirza Sahib said, if family will repent, the only thing that can happen is delay. Takhir ho sakti hai. But he said that this prophecy cannot be cancelled. Why? He said that if it is cancelled, the kalam of Allah becomes batil and the kalimat of Allah will be changed and takdir e mubram will be changed. I can give you, Osama, please listen. I have, Mirza Sahib said, if the, as a result of repentance, the only thing that can happen is a delay, not cancellation. Can I speak Over now? Over to you, Osama. Okay. Yes. So again, uh, this is very clear. Even at the life of the promised Messiah of Islam, this was brought up. He said that if you think that this prophecy was not fulfilled, then have Sultan issue a, a statement against me, right? And that's what your ulama tried to do at that time. They had to try to <laughs> try to bribe him to make a statement against uh, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad al Islam. And it was only Mubram if he goes against the repentance. How would Mirza Ghulam Muhammad al Islam know if he was going to repent exactly or not? How would he know that? He could he could take back the, the stance of repentance as well. But, but, so brother Osama, he, he brother, issued a statement brother Osama. to him and said, "Look, you all you have to do but, but, is Osama. all you have to do yeah, is issue a statement Mirza, saying that I am a liar." Mirza, Mirza was saying that Muhammadi Begum will get married to him. It was Masrut. It was Masrut. It was Masrut. No, they were. Where's the shirt? Shirt. The shirt. The shirt the shart is if they repent. They have, and okay, they repented. They so, and no, it's so very, it's so clear. The repentance is clear from the fact that the repentance is clear. The repentance is clear. The repentance is clear by Mirza Sultan not issuing a statement, even at the behest of getting a hundred thousand dollars. How can someone? How can someone not he, issuing a statement? Uh, he, is, he was is an offered a hundred thousand. He was offered oh, 100,000 okay. rupees and said that he would not issue a statement. Why would he not do it? Where, is the, evidence, where is the evidence of that? Where is the evidence of that? It. We have it. We'll give it to you. Wait. Al-Fazl. Al-Fazl. 
Al Fazl, right? Sure. Al Fazl. No, right? your own your own ulama, your own ulama bribed him, but he wouldn't repent. He wouldn't he wouldn't write a, 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 a statement. Show, show us the reference. Let's let, let, let's let's see the reference. Let's see okay, the reference. One second. One second. Uh, can you put can you put up nineteen oh seven? Nineteen oh seven. Have you got the reference for nineteen oh seven? Sorry, my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I put it. No problem. Yes. Okay, Osama. You have reference. It's from Al Fazl. Okay, Al Fazl is a Qadiani newspaper. Why would we, why would we trust the Jaz newspaper defending the Jal? Tell Adnan me. Adnan okay, Adnan if, if, if it was an independent, we are using Mirza's own writings to show you that he is the Jal. He's a liar. Okay, you're gonna bring a Qadiani source to me, claiming that money was offered to Sultan Muhammad to write or make a statement against Mirza, and you want us to believe it. Bring an impartial source, bring an independent source. That's when you claim from your ulama, I ask you for the source. You don't have it. So, uh, you know, call batil. We, we call it call batil. Okay. Uh, we don't accept it. This is a, this is a false claim. Uh, do you have 1907 reference? Listen, why would, why would his, why would her own family accept Mr. Ulam Islam? Brother Osama, you are begging, Brother Osama, like, one second. Why way, would they accept Just it? like his own, just like his own son, just like his own okay, son, Hazrat. and many, wait, 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 just like his own son, and many of his relatives did not accept him, rejected him as a kafir, as a disbeliever. Many of his relatives, Mirzas, Begs, okay, Mughals, Many of his close relatives did not accept him. They called him a kafir. Now what? This was there goes your close. argument. <laughs> this, this, there goes your argument. The point, the point of contention here is... And they, and they all died without progeny. Their progeny was yeah. not... This, this is a red herring, so let's move on from here. Red herring, please. Very, yeah. very important point which can... The, the, people, the people who rejected no, no, the Prophet Osama, Messiah Osama, Islam from his family, their progeny did not proceed. Yeah, yeah you're just repeating yourself, Osama. We have... Osama, is a red herring allow... nothing to do with the prophecy here. Osama, please allow me to finish. Please. No, he's, br he's bringing it up. Osama, is bringing Osama, it up. Please uh... allow me to complete Osama. Okay. My brother Osama, please pay attention to this one. You are saying after the death of Ahmad Bey, family repented. I know all of those references. I know all of, and guess what? Every single letter is with me right now. But I want to stick on the topic. The topic is this. Please pay attention. This is a question. Family has repented in 19, uh, sorry, 1892, around 93, after the death of Ahmad Bey. Fine, okay? And because of that, look, look, when family has repented, it means that now no punishment will come on Sultan Bey, which means he will not die, number one. Number two, now Ahmadi Begum can never be a widow. As a result, Muhammad she Begum. will never... Muhammad uh, Sorry, sorry, Mamadi Begum. And she will never marry to Mirza Sahib. This was known to Mirza Sahib in 1893. My question you're not addressing. Up till 1907, Mirza is saying that she will marry with me. Please address this point. Again, these were all Mashrut, right? These were all Mashrut. <laughs> yeah, okay. You guys, we're going back and guys. forth. You cannot say... You cannot say... We're going to have to run away from this now. Again, we're going to have to run away. Yeah, to, tonight, we've yeah, been running away. Yeah, Adnan, Adnan, we've been running Adnan. away from Qadianis. You've been tonight, running a lot, we have man. Been, yeah, we you are can, running a lot. Cannot say that as long, lost, you cannot we've say. We've you lost, cannot we've say. Lost one final tonight. point. One final point. Adnan, Adnan, one final point. Just eight point, yeah. okay? Just one final point, okay? You cannot say that as long as the promised Messiah Islam was alive, that he could go against and make a statement, right? That they were, the ulama at that time, they were silent. You guys are bringing this up like 120 years later. They were silent about this prophecy. They were going to Mirza Sultan trying to beg him to issue a statement. They were trying to bribe him, giving him money. Brother, but he wouldn't do don't it. And then on top of that, that the we Shahada... Have to. You're repeating yourself. Okay, stop it now. Stop it now. We're going to have to be... Okay, just so, final, Hashim. Just, 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 uh, Adama, just yeah, shall we bring... Just a final moment yes, of this one, inshallah, brother. And the brother Osama, please listen to this point, brother, carefully. You are not, maybe you are not willing to see this point right now. I can, I can understand that. But my request to you is, once you go home, please sit down and think about this point. Number one, Sultan Beg did not repent because his fault, his sin was he married with Muhammadi Begum. And the repentance would be, leave her, divorce her. So there's no repentance, number one. Number two, 
uh, if you are trying to say that uh, you know it, it was all conditional etc etc you are missing the point in 1907 as you know volume 22 of ruhani khazain which is the uh, uh, the last book in that is kitab ul wahi okay this is the last writing of mirza in this last writing mirza sahib is saying it is only delayed it is only delayed why he, he says because because they repented and he was very consistent in saying this that because of their repentance it can only be delayed but it has to happen if it will not happen the kalimat of allah will change the kalam of allah will become but i have all of these references with me right now so but the please think about it yourself. if the, if the fa- okay if, can if i just say one thing okay no no wait wait, 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 wait stop now okay stop, one stop, thing now stop stop osama once again we're running away we're running osama we're running away wait just stop can, can we're going to bring second. something else for you one second okay go ahead go ahead can i just say one thing Yeah. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. That just very simple, right? Like your ulama at that time couldn't convince Mirza Sultan to come up with a statement, right? You are very again clear. quoting And Al-Fazl it's... which is a Qadiani source we do not Their take own it. Family we don't accept it. it. His own family, Mirza Sultan Muhammad Ibn Abdul Aziz. His Their own, own son accepted Mirza Sultan. His own Abdul son did not accept him. His own son did not accept him. Uh, uh, again these are red herrings. Guys, come on. Yeah, Let's move on from this. We've been we've been through this already. Again, again, stop stop this. Stop this. Call uh, uh mute him. Mute him. Sorry, sorry, Mumtaz bhai. Sorry. Sorry. We have to move on very quickly. <laughs> Abdullah Atam. Next one. Abdullah Atam very quickly. We we'll deal with it and finish it. Okay? Abdullah Atam. Go ahead. Abdullah Atam. Abdullah, uh, do you want to read the the case first and then we can discuss? Or? Shall I read the case? Yes, please. But 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 be very brief, inshallah. You know because it's almost seven hours. <laughs> okay. If you don't want to do Abdullah Atam, then we we just we just leave it. And I think yeah, I would say what enough. I would yeah. say I can would I say that Abdullah Atam, Lake Ram, Earthquake, and yeah. Town of Snake. Yeah, okay. We can do. We can do. Perhaps next time it's been like we really can seven do hours. Yes. Yeah, I I I promised the Muslims as well they can join in. So yeah, inshallah, Hashim, we'll have to make time for them. Hashim okay, go ahead, Osama. Make, yeah, make your case. Basically, the prophecy about Abdullah Atam is Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani. <laughs> he made another prophecy that Abdullah Atam will die on a certain date, and Abdullah Atam died two years after that predicted date. Okay, so and and amazingly, whole of Qadian was made. So this is a Christian missionary, yeah. Abdullah yes. Christian missionary, Christian missionary. Christian missionary. Okay. When Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani uh, was debating him. uh he made a prophecy that abdullah atam will die on a certain date okay and uh, i don't remember the date <coughs> i can actually read it very quickly so that this remains you know this stream is very long i know but it becomes part of it it's recorded so people can Allah, go and watch can it I, later on as i can I just say yeah. one thing adnan yeah. before you yeah. read yeah. 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 my, re- yeah, my request my request to you is because if we will touch it now we won't be able to give it its due right my request as, as hashim brother said that we can there are four very important prophecies one about earthquake one about the plague one about lake ram one about dul atham whenever okay. inshallah you guys like we can do let's, a stream let's do them in the next stream let's do them in the next stream hashim agree can i just say one thing can i one thing okay yeah. let yeah. us sama yeah. say the concluding yeah. remarks yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shukran uh, hashim thank you so much uh, uh, for allow me just give me like 10 seconds again um, you know the these prophecies that you guys are focusing on they're like few and far between you're taking the again you know the yeah. the muhkam prophecies that you know are very clear you guys are running away from those and then the mutashabihat that could have some doubt in them you guys are going towards them unfortunately again we go back where are the aqaid why why are you like running away from the quran and hadith let's discuss the quran and hadith this is so simple it's so like like let the quran be the judge between us rabbana iftah bainana wa bain qawmina bil haqq like let let the 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 Allah be the judge the, and his book be the judge and of course you guys don't want to discuss uh you know the the aqaid and you want to run towards these things okay. which Thank actually are much. like Thank you. I I will quickly respond I'll quickly respond why we're running from Quran and Hadith I will respond we are running from the Quran and Hadith is because we don't need the Quran and Hadith uh to dismantle uh Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's uh false claim to prophethood because his own writings condemn him his own writings and that's why 
the Ahmadi Jamaat will not indulge in these topics. You will keep crying, victim. You will keep crying. You don't let us talk. You don't give us time. You will keep saying, oh, you don't debate Akida. You don't de de debate Wafat al-Masih. You don't debate Khatma Nubuwa. Why are you going to Mirza? Why are you going to Mirza? What about those Kuffar who were attacking the Prophet of Islam? You're behaving like them. Okay, all these things, you know what? They're not doing anything. They are not doing anything. We're not stopping. Yeah. We've been stopping. here discussing okay. that for eight because hours. This We've is been discussing duty. those prophecies this, for six this is, hours and 41 this is, minutes. So, so uh, and <clears throat> if you have noticed, if you have noticed throughout this conversation, throughout this six hour or nearly seven hours of uh, stream, we have been using the Quran and Hadith against you, but you're so dumb. Sorry, I haven't, dumb. I haven't Sorry. heard a single so Quranic deaf. ayat from you. Sorry, deaf. Other, deaf. Deaf. Wait, other than wait. the ones we've you're not, you did not. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the ones I used. I can give you them now, right now. Okay. No, no, I need. Let's, let's move on. Right. Khana, Usama, Muhammad this will not end. Yeah. Yeah. And then, this is, let's be honest. Okay. Wait, wait, I want to say something go. important. You can let Usama go. No problem. We can end the stream. Thank you very much, Usama. Thank you. Let's do right now. Don't run. Don't run. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Yeah, go on. MTS. MTS. Usama, allow me to see Don't run. Let's do it. Imtiaz, okay. Carry on. Imtiaz, imtiaz, imtiaz. Okay. Let's run. Okay. Let's run. Okay. Listen, brothers. Okay. Okay. Listen, brothers. Okay. First of all, first of all, one thing is being said by many of them. They said that, oh, why are you, you are, why are you discussing these prophecies? Osama, please listen very carefully. I have the quotation. Mirza Sahib said, I have given three prophecies concerning three nations. Number one. Prophecy of Lekram for the Hindus. All the Hindus covered in this prophecy. The prophecy of uh, Abdullah Atam for all the Christians. And guess what? The prophecy of Muhammadi Begum for the Muslims, non Ahmadis. Okay, brother? So these three prophecies. And guess what? I have read Mirza's book. I, I, I don't want to make a big claim, but I can tell you sometimes 16, 17 hours a day. Okay? My brother, these books are on my fingertips. Okay? Mirza Sahib has spent 50% of his literature on these three prophecies. 50% of his literature, okay? Allah Whichever Allah. book you open, Allah. pages after page, page. And you say these are not important, that's one point. Second point, okay, Alhamdulillah, I don't want to be a Khabib, but I have finished your boy, Razi. <laughs> I, have gave, I have given him a challenge and I repeat my challenge. Razi can never come in front of me to discuss the research of the Khulafa that the Mirza was born in 1835. I want to repeat my challenge. Your boy is finished. Okay, brothers? Now, second thing, very important. Now I'm going to finish Usama as well. Okay? Usama <laughs> said that why don't you why don't you discuss the Akida, the belief? Guess what? Give me the time and date. I am going to discuss awesome. with you. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to discuss with you the Akida of Zilli and Buruzi Nabi. We are going to focus on the Quran from the Quran. I will prove there is no, no. such thing as Zilli or uh, Buruzi Nabi, and you have to prove from the Quran Absolutely. that there is such thing yes. as Zilli. And and they, they, they 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 not, not, not in this stream, not in this stream. No, not in this stream. No, we're not going to set this up. We're 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 going to set this up. Okay, well, wait, 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 wait. Reason, uh, uh, no, no, Adnan, don't stop him discussing the cards. Once, Adnan, the, the don't reason, stop him, come on. The reason, the reason I said this, the reason I said this, it has been like two, three times that Ahmadis are giving us, you know, this thing, oh, we don't discuss the Absolutely. Aqaid. Guess what? Guess what? Absolutely. We are going to discuss the Aqaid and we'll begin with the Aqidah of Zilli and Buruzi Nabi. No, listen, tell no, me, forget the Buruzi, Zilli. No, 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 forget all that. Tell me, no, can there be a prophet you. after Muhammad? No, 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 no. All right, guys, no, thank you. Me, thank you. Let's do this debate. Osama, thanks a lot. Let's move on. Come on, guys. Okay. We'll be here well, all guys. night otherwise. The reason why the reason why they cry Akida, 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 because they don't know what Akida is. The question yeah. is, is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Kadiani part of your Akida? Is this man important to you? Is this man important to you? Is his character important? Important? Is it is this truth important to you? Is this not part of your Akida? If it is then deal with it. Stop crying victim, brothers. Stop. Yeah. I hope this stream is going to make a difference to many Ahmadis out there. We have been receiving messages for the last two weeks, messages upon messages on all our social media accounts. Ahmadis, 
leaving Ahmadi cult and accepting Islam. Many, many Ahmadis have messaged us because of this behavior, because of no answers, because of no response to all these questions. And spins upon spins, excuses upon excuses, lame excuses to protect who? An open liar, a plain liar, someone who was so contradictory against himself that it's unbelievable that people can believe in someone like that today. It's unbelievable. Right. So it's, I'm going to now allow so, the Muslims to join in for the quick questions. Please keep it brief and to the points. So wow, until, thought, until next thought, time, we'll... I thought we're going to get... <laughs> Uh, no, we promise Adnan. We promise them to I, I, come. So that's the actually, actually, Adnan, why I have actually missed my work day. I have, I have taken a leave now because it's ten. Subhanallah. Allah, May Allah, Allah give you barakah. Allah. Guys, but play, you play, know, play, play for Imtiaz Bay. May Allah uh, give our, barakah our in his uh, our, risk. Our lives, our children, our parents, everybody, we are willing to happily sacrifice for the honor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This Salam is Allah, nothing. Allah. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. May Allah accept let's, from you. Let's bring in the Muslims quickly. Uh, this uh, brother is Har Khan, mashallah. He's been very patiently waiting for many hours. Salaam alaikum, is Har Bay. Salaam alaikum. How are you First of all, can I please congratulate you for your patience and for the time you're spending. You are an inspiration, I have to say, particularly uh, Brother Imtiaz. I will be very brief. I was born in Amadi. I'm 62 years old. I'm an NHS consultant, nephrologist, a kidney specialist. I work in Scotland. And I have no shame in exposing myself because I think we are only answerable to Allah. And Allah says in the Quran that I give hidayat to those who I want to give hidayat, and I don't give hidayat to those who will not get hidayat. Absolutely. Three years Absolutely. ago, until three years ago, I was a born Amadi in a very devout Amadi family. Uh, I won't bore you with the details of that because it's getting too late. But Allah gave me an inspiration. I was an agnostic before that, an agnostic. Even though I was an Ahmadi, I then said to my wife, this, month, this year, I, I don't know, I want to keep the fasts and I want to do the prayers, the Salat. Alhamdulillah. For three years, Alhamdulillah, I have not missed one Salat. Alhamdulillah. For three years Allah. and not one Ruza. And then I said, at that time I was Ahmadi. I said, well, Ahmadiyat is the correct religion. Let's study it. Because I'm a scientist. I'm a doctor. I, I, you know, I, did, I published 50 papers. I did an MD. And I'm not going to bore you with those details. But suffice it to say that I do a critical analysis. And Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala opened my eyes. And I discovered that, sadly, this is not the true Islam that they proclaim for the very reasons that we have been discussing today. And mm -hmm. I tell you, in a family gathering, I mentioned Muhammadi Begum, and nobody had even heard of her. The one thing about Muhammadi Begum, I would tell you, is that forget about everything else, about whether Ahmad Begum, it's a lie. He never published anything. I've asked repeatedly. And one of my nephews, who's a devout Ahmadi, failed. he spent six weeks trying to look for that article, which purportedly suggests that Ahmad Beg blasphemed Nazbillah against Azul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no such thing. Forget about even all that. In Islam, a minor girl who's 13, <laughs> if a proposal comes from a 53 years old man, it's Jais. But the Wali of that girl is the father. And the father, if he's the Wali, now they, Ahmadis, will come immediately saying, oh, Aisha. Well, Azat Abu Bakr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the wali and he gladly uh, allowed Azu sallam to have the nikah and then consummation when she became mature. So that's a fallacy. So I think that that was one thing. But then I looked at the doctrines. You talked about the birthday. Forget about the birthday. In three different places, and I've read many of his books, alhamdulillah. I don't want to read any more. I, I can tell you I've read enough. There are three different dates of death of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. There are three different burial sites. In one book, he says he was buried in Syria. In another book, he says he was buried in Jerusalem. And then he came up with Notovich's idea. It was the German 
Nutovic, who was the yes. monk, yes. who actually Absolutely. started this. Yes, yes, yes. And even before that, you see, so I've seen through all that. And I tell you one other thing, forget about, so it was doctrinal issues. I have Surah Arafa, Surah Juma. You know, they take Surah <laughs> Juma and the second and third ayat, and they try to convince me that it predicts the advent of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. It's not. It clearly says, I don't know Arabic, but I have translations. It clearly says that others will join us. Those others will be the non-Arabs. You know, it's just beggar's belief how they have distorted the meanings of the Quran. And I tell you Absolutely. one last thing that I would like to say is I pray for my family and I'd like you to pray for my family. My nephew was the first in our family who became non ahmadi and became a Sunni. And Alhamdulillah, he has published books about Islam, uh, re uh, reclaiming Allah. Islamic culture. And he's a professor of Allah. medieval Islamic history in Cairo, in the American University. Wow, so the I would like to know him. Is, yes, uh, uh, Ahmad Sabah is his name. You can Google him. He, he was a visiting professor in Columbia University. Because, last year. because, because that's my field, be, you know. He helped me yeah. and my son, Umar Khan, two of us. And please pray for my wife as well, that she also leaves this culture. Mm -hmm. and I may, think may Allah Allah make it very easy. last thing I would like to say is the sexual peccadillos of the Mirza family. You know, mm. that is just a disaster. When I was going through that transformation, the Nida um, scandal broke. And I'm not going to bore you with that. My family then said, why don't you write to Huzur? Because I had all these questions. And I swear by Allah, I wrote to Huzur, I, I sent it by registered mail, fax, ordinary mail, followed up by phone calls. On the 15th of March, 2022, I wrote a letter, and I can show you the letter at some stage. I am still waiting for that letter. I think Huzur's goat must have eaten it. <laughs> because, you know, there is no excuse. They keep talking about right no, They have no response. They have no response. But no response. Yeah. But look, yeah. I'm not, I wasn't born yesterday. I'm 50, 62 years old, alhamdulillah. And I, I'm now in uh, Scotland. I can tell you where I am. I'm in Scotland. And we're in a jamaat, which is fantastic. You know, they keep telling us, don't go to Sunni mosques. Me and my son went to Sunni mosques and just the talawat of the namaz makes me cry. You know, the way they... And, I, and I don't want to... Ahmadis is also naive and these believe in the Quran. I would plead and I pray to Allah that naive mm -hmm. Ahmadis, gullible, good-meaning Ahmadis, please contact me if you want to. I can speak to you. I even made a PowerPoint presentation about how I left Ahmadiyyat and my plan is if you pray for me to write a book about it, inshallah, one day. May Allah reward you. Brother Izhar, you, you are an inspiration and you will be an inspiration to a lot more people. Uh, this is going down in history. And, and may, Allah, may Allah grant you more courage. May Allah guide your wife. May Allah guide your entire family to Islam. And, um, and you know, Allah, as you said, you know, if, if Ahmadis start to come out of the bubble, of the cocoon, they are forced to live in, and if they mix with the Muslims, just 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 go yes, go to, to the mosque. A normal, yeah. just go to a normal Sunni mosque, and they won't as you said, pray you. behind the Imam, pray behind the Imam, and you will feel you will feel something different. Just come to us, mix with us, talk to us. You will see that we love you. We have no hatred. We have nothing but sympathy. You know all of this. What we did today, please don't take it as as a uh, as an exercise of hate or anything like that you know some of these trained missionaries they make you angry they make you passionate they make you you know sometimes we become frustrated we're human beings we've been here for seven seven hours but please don't take our passion in the wrong way it's with this exercise we are doing for who for the ahmadis for our Ahmadi brothers and sisters we My feel father. for them so that you can see the reality and but brothers like Izhar Khan, there are many people like that out there. So yeah. seriously, Sheikh, may Allah bless you. Continue mm -hmm. strong from strength to strength, and I mean, you make make dua for us. And and you know what? Now that Allah has given you hidayah guidance, don't sit on it. Go and spread it. Talk to your people. Inshallah. Try tr try to get your relatives and try to get them to understand that this is not true Islam. What they're following is not true Islam. 
Okay. So may Allah Jazakallah. bless you. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. And good we will pray for you. Have a good, well earned so rest. Yeah. And, I mean, and Dr. <laughs> Dr. Izhar, before you leave, I mean, it'll be good to connect with you. So if you can email us uh, at dawaisatgmail.com. I will put my email in, my, in your chat and you can have it. Thank you. Okay. Do that, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Uh, sorry, oh, Imtiaz, you wanted to ask something? I just wanted to, because Izhar, bhai, uh, sorry, Izhar Khan, bhai, he alluded to something very important. This thing has never been discussed on this topic of Muhammad Begum. My brother, look, think about this. Muhammad Begum was a wife of someone. She was a sister of someone. She was a mother of someone. And one person is publishing in the newspapers that your husband will die. And he was, he was publishing his dreams that I see you naked. naked. So, Allah, you all know this. He was publishing in the newspaper that I see you naked. Your husband will die. You will come with, back to me. With, with the head, head yeah, shaven. Yeah, yeah. With the head yeah, shaven. Yeah. You, will, you, will come, yeah. you will come back to me. Yeah. My, you know, for how long? As long as Mirza was alive, I, I gave the references up till 1907. This was the last book he published. Hakikatul Wahi, which is in the last volume of, of, of Rahani Fazain. This woman went to this torture. The whole family went to this torture. I would say, I would ask any decent Ahmadi in today's world, in today's world, in today's civilized world, if this harassment is done, what will happen? This person would be in the jail. Well, the thing is that I just won't, don't want to take too much of your time. I think Sultan Ahmed, uh, Muhammadi's husband, went to fight in the war in yeah. France, got yeah, injured, yeah, yeah. he survived. He was yeah. a decent man. He didn't Very want decent. to prolong this whole nonsense. No. I've written a letter. It was a very respectful letter, but he yeah. never became Ahmadi. Yeah. And whether Mumadi Begum's son became an Ahmadi is neither here nor there. You know, that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Mumadi Begum was a very decent woman. Yes. May Allah bless her very and decent. give her Jannat. And Sultan Amen. Ahmed, a very Allah. good husband. Imagine what he must have gone yeah. through having to marry a woman who yeah. was. His grace. Remember also Mirza Ghulam Ahmed had a cousin, Imaduddin, who had also yes. made a claim of Imamat. And Mirza yeah. Ghulam Ahmed said about Imaduddin's wife that she's a prostitute. I've read that. You know, yeah. it's all yeah. in the books. And I also plead all Ahmadis to please read some of his books as well. At Arya Darham, yes. he has written a poem which is so filthy about yes. Hindus that yes. I've challenged Ahmadis, when are you translating Arya Dharam in English? It's actually yes. on page 71. I even yeah, remember yeah. that in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Azhar Bhai, just to, just to keep the record straight, there was no letter written by Sultan Ahmad. They produced a letter in 1913. 1913. After the death of Mirza, they produced something. And guess what? When the Sunni Muslims, they produced two letters in 1924 and one more letter. And they said to them, the letters were published with witnesses, with the challenge in the newspaper, that if you prove this, that these letters are not the letters of Sultan Ahmad Beg, we will give you 300 rupees. Okay? No Ahmadi, no Qadiani accepted the challenge. On the other hand, the letter produced by the Qadianis, in which, uh, as you said, is our by that uh, Sultan Ahmad is praising Gula, Amirta Ghulam Ahmad, that's a fake letter. There was, there was never put to the test of scrutiny ever. But the letter produced by the Muslims, they were produced in the newspaper. Everybody knows about those letters. So just to keep that state. Yeah, it's, uh, I can only say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilai rajiun. You know, I, I used to trust them. I used to love them. I still do because they are my brothers in humanity. And some of them are totally unaware even of the age gap. And the fact that poor Hurmat Bibi, who was his first wife, was treated yeah. so badly, um, yeah. you know. And, to, and remember, a father, think about this, my Ahmadi brothers, a father's son dies and a father refuses to read his funeral prayers. Astaghfirullah. Yeah. Whatever his beliefs. And they then say that they don't call us kafir. And... Mm. This was his own son, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His own son. Wow. Yes, yes, and yeah. and you know what? Fazal. There is the Sultan. Sultan later on became an Ahmadi. That's correct. But Fazal did not. Yes. And Fazal, Fazal was yes. a man Fazal who was disinherited because he refused to divorce his daughter because he, she refused to influence Muhammad's family. 
I mean, for goodness sake, if God is on your side, why would you need to ask people to kindly sifarish karne ki kya zarurat hai? Absolutely. And, 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 and you know what? Sifarish. And, 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 and I, I know a lot about KM2, jo second khalifa the na, unko inhone baut bada hawa banaya hua hai. Astaghfirullah, aap Fakhruddin Multani ke murder ko sirf dekh le. There was a man who was killed in broad daylight. Al-Islam has taken away that khutbah. It's not even found. Every week's khutbah is there in khutbah e Mahmood. I think it's the 6th of August, 1936. The date may be wrong, but I've got the record. I've done extensive research on this. He, he Mr. Misri, who was one of the Ahmadis, his son alleged that Mirza uh, Bashiruddin Mahmood Ahmad had uh, sexually assaulted him and Mirza Bashir uh, at least you must uh, grant him that unlike Mirza Masroor who never in a khutbah answers any allegations he puts out people like Zevius and all the rest of them and Osama to go and bat for him but he will never answer in a khutbah I challenge him give me 20 minutes on MTA you've got a TV channel and just interview me why did you leave Ahmadiyat try to convince me bring me back to Ahmadiyat Give me 20 minutes. They won't do that. That's, but coming that's, back to Mirza that's not going to happen. He made a khutbah in which he said, he challenged anyone to go and avenge him. And after that khutbah, in broad daylight, Fakhruddin Multani, who was supporter of Misri, was killed by an Ahmadi fanatic, at which point the British government told him to tone down his khutbahs. And his next khutbah was half a page long. And he was basically complaining that, look, they don't even allow us to give a khutbah. So please look at the history. And we were told, and every time you discuss anything, they come to the Wafate Masi. That's their last stand. You know, just in a, in, a, in a fight, well, we've run out of all ammunition. Oh, get that Isa thing out. This is also possible. My opinion is that if Isa has been तो क्या अगर आ जाएंगे तो हम देख लेंगे अगर नहीं आएंगे तो हमारी जिंदगी में नहीं आएंगे इट्स नॉट अ मैटर ऑफ अकीदा ऑफ ये जो अकीदा की बात करते हैं ना अकीदा ये है कि हां सलम अल्लाह ब्लेस हिम एंड पीस बी अपॉन हिम वाज द फाउंडिंग प्रॉफिट वो कहते थे कि बात है जिसमें कई ईंटें हैं और मैं उसका आखिरी ईंट हूं उन्होंने ये भी फरमाया कि वही अब नहीं आ सकती सिर्फ मुबशरात आ सकते हैं जो के ट्रू ड्रीम्स होती हैं तो किस इल्हाम की और वही की बात करते हैं आप मैं आई कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन बट इज आवर वाइफ आई एम टायर्ड आई हैव बीन लिसनिंग फॉर 6 आवर्स एंड थैंक यू हिशाम फॉर लेटिंग मी इन आई रियली अप्रिशिएट इट बिकॉज़ आई ट्राई टू गेट इनटू द अहमदी वन एंड दे ब्लॉक मी आई ट्राई टू गेट माय वाइफ्स नेम फोन टू गेट इन दे ब्लॉक्ड हर इनको सब पता है मुझे आनी नहीं द वन पहले मुझे बोल रहे थे the one they had with me the one they had yes, with me no, in that no, one the one they had in which they invited you in the end the one which yes, was done yes. by a chap called tahir nasir who i can also okay. tell you has written a mm. very bad tweet about uh, nida he said yes. mujhe, i don't care what happened to you he's telling a woman mm. who is alleging rape that i don't care yeah. what happened to you yes. you insulted yes. the khalifa he was then mm. he's a doctor and he needs to be very careful because you know he yeah. can be get into he can get into trouble yeah. for that so he can get cancelled not a very yeah. good performance there they didn't let yes. me in that program khair inshallah they, they you, have, you have you have ex amadi ex amadi jo hai na unse bahut darte hain ji ji bilkul kyunki wo puri community ko attract kar sakte hain na they can attract the whole yeah. community there are decent people jamal bhai aate hain na hyde park mein वो yeah, मेरी yeah. सास के दोस्त के एक्स हस्बैंड हैं हरी टोपी वाले जो डंडे वाले मैं जी सेक्स का दिया मैं भी आऊंगा हाइट पास इंशाल्लाह It will be nice to see you. You're most, most welcome, and and you know what? I want to say that there are decent people out there in the Ahmadi community, just like Azhar yeah. Bhai, and and they don't know. They just need to. they just need to get out or someone needs to reach out to them and explain to them or even share this live share the stream with them it's going to be on our channels share it with yeah. them let them see okay 
let them see the evidence and examine it for, uh, for themselves and see the behavior of the missionaries. Okay, so inshallah, I hope this will make a difference. Thank you so much, Izar Bhai. We really appreciate it. All right, yes. Dr. Saab, thank you. Take care, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Mashallah, he's been waiting in the back chair. You know, the, the, the hadith brother, brother Izar was quoting that I am the last brick in the palace of Nabuwa. Mirza Sahib said yes. that this is about me. I am the last brick of the Paris of Nabuwa. Here comes, here comes another soldier. <laughs> here comes another soldier. <laughs> who, 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 looks, who, looks, who looks like he's going to collapse any time. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> Thank you, brother, for, for your patience. No um, worries. Um, Salaam alaikum, brothers. How's everybody doing? Salaam alaikum. So I, I, I just have a few notes. Uh, uh, brother Imtiaz has done amazing. Brother Nan, always amazing. Uh, I just had a, 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 a few notes. So... <clears throat> There's one son of Muhammadi Begum that we have investigated that they might have bribed. And this is how they go after people's kids. You know, she had like 10 kids. We found her grave in Lahore. So if you're ever in, in Lahore and you're a Muslim, we, we, we know exactly where it's at. Feel wow. free to check it out. We posted it at um, the uh, Gayani. Actually, I don't remember. It's on the blog. It's on the blog. So, wow. so that's the first thing. They will bribe people the way they bribe governments, right? So, okay. Um. What else? Uh, oh, uh, um, so uh, Brother Imtiaz said, um, Hakikat the way he was in Mirza Gamama's final book. Not exactly. It's um, Jashma i Marifat, no worries. In 1908. That's the book where he lied about the Black Prophet. No, no, actually, uh, Brother, I, I was saying that in, in, in Ruhani Khazain, you know, in, which is the last volume, the 22nd volume, there are 22 volumes, and this is in their volume. <laughs> Yeah, it, there's 23 volumes. <laughs> yeah. So, I, no, but, yeah. but my, my, my main point was that up till 1907, he was preaching this, and we have no reference when he stopped this. No reference. Yeah. Right, right. So, so th there was an additional point. Um, Brahini Amadi of Volume 5 was published posthumously. Yes. Um, Mr. Gomamon had died. So, yeah, they had yeah. an opportunity to edit four or five books and say he wrote it. So, uh, uh, um, that's why the age prophecy, it begins to vary extremely in that book. Um, there's another one, Nazul al Musi, that's 1909. So they play these tricks with these posthumously books and they tried to go mm. back. Okay, the other thing is the backdating. Remember, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed prophethood in 1901, but he backdated it 20 years. So mm. in mm. 1901, when Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed prophethood, he had already been called a kafir. He had yeah. already been called at the job. So uh, um, these Gadiani said, oh, before his claim of prophethood, people praised him. No, that's not exactly true. In fact, they, they, there was they, they, the ulama united in the fear against him. So yeah. that's the character reference. Um, let's see what else. Okay, the, uh, 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 there was an Arab brother named Hassan Oday who, who wrote a book. He quit um, Ahmadiyya. He's from Akababir, Hafa, Israel. He's the first ever... Uh, Israeli Arab missionary Qadiani, he he found in the Muhammadi Begum situation, there's an Arabic uh, um, ilham that says we will kill uh, the husband Sultan Muhammad for you, and they mistranslated the word kill, the um, um, Arabic word kill. So we can go on and on, but uh, I'm I'm just quickly going th uh, through my notes here, and then the uh, uh, Treaty of um, Hudaybiyah, and, and and it's hard to listen to. The Qadianis, when they accused the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of making mistakes, we yes. tried to tell them, "Don't just don't go there. It's not cool. You know, uh, uh, there's going to be trouble." And um, for a uh, 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 brother, um, Izar, he just gave his email address. I'm connected with the uh, ex Amdi movement. We're, we're all over the internet. Uh, um, feel free to connect with us. I can connect you to the network. Mostly Muslims. There are some. I love you know, this most uh, um, ex amnesty brother unfortunately go go agnostic like the brother said you know when you believe that um adam al islam wasn't the first man then the next step is is atheism unfortunately so yes, uh, yes. It, there is a reddit forum called the islam amity reddit forum they got some good conversations but it's mostly atheist agnostic and etc and brothers that's all i have i'm sure there's there's um other people in the back uh, thank you, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum and peace out. Allah bless. Thank you for all your hard work, brother. Uh, uh, he's, doing, he's, he's doing some amazing work. His, his blog is a must read. Uh, something, uh, inshallah, yeah. something yes, inshallah we can do in the future. Let me tell you just, just a hint, just a hint. You know, like when you send your money through the post office, it costs you some charges, right? 
so what mirza was doing with his with with, uh, with hakim nuruddin and other people they would rip the note half and they would send in the normal post half of the note and then in the next post the rest of the half in this way they were trying to avoid the posting charges <laughs> this was profit of allah robbing the post office okay subhanallah it's, right. it's, it's a financial corruption <laughs> yeah okay this brother has been trying to get in for a while uh, shogun are you there yes i am i'm here thank you assalamu alaikum everybody oh, i started so listening there. to the stream mashallah uh, right after Isha, and now I just prayed Fajr. So, uh, Barakallah Fikum, thank you for this patience and uh, stamina. I'm a huge fan of uh, Adnan Rashid and all of you, really uh, amazing stream. I, I have only a couple of points to make. Nothing to do with the prophecies, which was the topic of today. Mm -hmm. I have uh, encountered uh, uh, Ahmadis, uh, spoke to them, they're very polite. They come across as people with a lot of patience and everything else, but I have seen them never to stick on the point and always try to digress. Two things that upset me a lot is that they keep comparing this uh, individual to our Holy Prophet, which is uh, which is very difficult to absorb, really. Everything else is fine. My, my two points are, very quickly, is uh, the first, which I, I think is not the point today, but I'm just making it anyway, is that they, they keep claiming that uh, the Khatman Nabi, uh, which is the last, is a seal of a prophet, and it's not really the... Uh, and so my question for that is, uh, you only seal something that's at the end, you never seal something and then keep adding to it. So even if that interpretation is to be accepted, it, it also means that the Nubuat has already ended. There is no more within that chain. And uh, uh, the other point is that the prophets uh, in interpretation of Islam are either messengers of Allah, books, mm -hmm. and or they are Nabi uh, who are giving glad tidings and warning people for their mistakes. Um, no one sits, writes books, promotes themselves, and gives prophecies. Prophecies are Christian tradition and not something that Islam is known by. Prophets are not supposed to be known by the prophecies they make. Uh, if that was the case, Nostradamus has made more prophecies than anybody we know. So we should consider him a prophet now. So I think the whole aspect of this uh, Mirza Ahmad Qadiani's thing is, uh, and, I, and I go back to uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, hadith that, you know, whoever prays Surah Kahf on Friday will be protected from fitna to Jiddan. And I have seen how, how difficult it can be for someone who is in that fitna. And I really pray for these brothers to get the light. Thank you for all the hard work for two mm -hmm. points. And all. I, I will give yeah. the floor to someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh... Okay, so those people are waiting in the back chat who haven't actually verified with your cameras on. Can you please do it quickly so we can let you on? Uh, it's it's a rule for everyone. You need to show your face, obviously. That's the whole purpose of the verification process. Um, yeah, thanks, Samir. Thanks, Hussein. So we're giving priority to those people who have shown their verification, uh, the camera. If you haven't, then you won't be let in. Right, sit down. Oops, sorry. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Can you hear me? Yeah. Morning, Islam. Sorry about that. I was too quick to click. That's on. okay. Didn't mean to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I think the Qadianis usually they bring up always the issue of Aqaid and how we don't talk about Aqidah and stuff like that. I think the, I was uh, looking at the stream with uh, Ustad Adnan had with them on their channel and they mentioned that they had like two prop Arab guys that were trying to they put up there as someone that were scholars about Qadiani's, uh, their prophet and basically their religion. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned something which also Razi agreed with him. They said there's not even one Sahih Hadith or one Da'if Hadith that mentions that uh, Isa a.s. will return from the sky. And unfortunately, I don't think they know, but there's a Hadith in Sahih Ibn Hibban, which is actually not even weak, but it's authentic, that talks about Isa a.s. returning from the sky. So I thought that was an important point to raise that they always, also when it comes to this aqad stuff about Isa alayhi salam and the return, they cons uh, consistently, you know, they go after that point whenever they cannot answer regarding their prophet. But I think it's an important point that I think uh, Brother Imtiaz raised and also Sheikh Adnan raised that their prophet is part of the aqidah, that when we talk about aqidah, we say, amantu billahi wa malaikati wa rusulihi. Rusulihi is like part of the aqad. So if you can't, Exactly. Defend 
your exactly. prophet, then it's, it's part of the aqidah. So don't say, oh, I just want to defend aqidah, aqidah. But you don't want to talk about the Rasul. And also, I also find funny that yeah. they also say, I wanted to ask uh, Sheikh Adnan and for the Imtiaz's take. When they talk about, oh, um, why do the Muslims in general make the fear of us? They say that, like, when the Christians accepted Isa, alayhi salam, the Jews make the fear of them and say it's a different religion. When we accept Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi salam, the Christians make the fear of us and say, okay, we're not Christians. And now they accept another prophet, but they say, oh, we can't make the fear of you guys, but we say, la ilaha illallah, Rasulullah, but we have another prophet, but you can't make the fear of us. So I wanted to ask you guys' take on that, about um, the specific takfir on them of accepting another prophet. Well, this is not a matter uh, we have determined. Uh, they have made takfir on the rest of the Ummah. Uh, because Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani basically said clearly that anyone who does not believe in me will not go to paradise. Anyone who doesn't believe in me is a disbeliever, cannot call him a believer. I have quotes, I have everything here in the, in the writings. So they are the ones who have marginalized themselves. Okay. Is there, even, uh, there are statements by him that you cannot pray the janaza of a non Ahmadi. Okay, so these are statements found in their literature. So, there are actually uh, there are very clear references from the Jamaat in which they have they basically, uh, you know, they do takfir of anyone who does not believe in Mirza and so much uh, Mirza as a prophet and, and, and Masih Ma'ud. So much so, they say that if you even not have heard about him, if you still don't believe in him, you are not a Muslim. This is what they, they have in their literature. I think they generally, on the outside, they portray that oh, all of us are Muslims, but I think in their aqaid, there is that anybody that doesn't accept Mirza Ghulam as a prophet is a kafir. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there are clear reference for this one. Yeah, so it's kind of like a taqiyya, basically, like Shia have. Exactly, exactly. It's you know, but the, the problem is this, you know, whenever you go away from the haq, from the truth, all you have basically misguidance, then you just try to justify that by, by putting spin on things. I give you a simple example. You remember you, you quoted the hadith of uh, that Isa will descend from the heaven. Guess what? Mirza quoted the same hadith and he removed the word minas samai. He quoted the whole hadith. Yanzilu akhi isa ala jabal. The actual wording was Yanzilu isa akhi isa minas samai ala jabal. And he removed the word minas samai. I have reference. Hmm. That was a important one to respond. Barakallah Barakallah Sorry, Adnan, your, your internet's uh, lagging again. All right, so those people who haven't you verified have with your camera, you the back chat, yeah. unfortunately, we won't be able to take you. Um, so let me take Hussein. And I think on that note, we should, okay, let's uh, go. Yeah, we got about four people in the back chat. Okay, let's quickly deal with them and finish, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going into eight hours now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're almost there. Uh, Hussein, uh, can, can you hear us? Okay, yeah. Hussein. Yeah. Salaam Salaam brothers. Um, I just wanted to make a quick, quick point because I've been technically kicked out of my house because my mom was angry. Um, so basically, you know how Razi made a couple of claims about the prophecies of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Yunus al Islam and sent a challenge that, oh, you need to accept my challenge and uh, you know and I would I would like to say to Razi I accept your challenge and if you can show me from Quran that Hazrat Yunus al Islam actually made the prophecy I'll stop accepting Hazrat Yunus al Islam as a prophet show me from the prophecy of Sunnah <coughs> Hudaybiya that Prophet Sallallahu said that he didn't knew in fact Prophet Sallallahu said to Hazrat Tumar mm -hmm. when he questioned him when did I tell you that we would do Hajj this year? So, so that gets refuted there. And his other point was the about the long, long hands of Prophet's wife. And that's actually not a prophecy. He just told them that the next wife that would die would have longer hands. The wives assumed that those would be physical hands. 
And in fact, if you actually see the Matan of Duza Hadith, you would know that the, the wives measure their hands after the death of Prophet Sallallahu not before or, or in front of him. So these guys, they, they, they clutch the straws, they've got nothing on them. They accuse the Prophet, because the issue with that is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad put the shoes of prophethood and he's not actually a prophet. He cannot be proven a prophet. So all they have to do is try to degrade all the other prophets. That's the thing. If they, if Razi's got anything from Quran where it says, Hadra Yunus al Islam said, oh, you guys will have a uh, wrath of Allah within three days. I, I'm, I'm saying online right now that I will stop accepting Hadra Yunus al Islam as a prophet. How can it be possible that a prophet makes a prophecy that something will happen and then it doesn't happen? Then they, 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 there's no difference between a prophet and some. You, you know, one of those Najumis, uh, I, I'm not astrologers, even, yeah, yeah, astrologers. But what's the difference if, if you're gonna accuse the prophets? Then actually bring your proper excuses, not these weird things that can easily be refuted by someone like me who's hardly got any Ill, ilm of deen. You know, I'm, I'm very much a very new student about Islam. I'm, I know I've got very little knowledge compared to you guys, but. These things are just ridiculous, accusing prophets of things that even someone like me can refute them. So I'm, I'm telling right now, I'll accept your challenge. Whenever you have the time, let us know. I'll come with you. I'll sit with you on my own time. I will deal with these prophecies of yours and I'll show you how how wrong you are. Okay. Just have luck with that. Thank you. Okay. Salam. Right, um, what we'll do that next? Okay, Samir, go on quick. Assalamu alaikum to all the panelists. Wa alaikum assalam. Brother, I think I've been studying about Kadiana for only one month because my main uh, topic is about the other sect. Kadiana, because I don't study that much, I've only studying for one month. And I'm going to make my point faster and faster. This guy, if the next stream should be done, it's about the manners of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, about the uh, manners of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. You know why? Because he has said such words against Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Hussain, which, uh, brother, it's very tough, even Hashim, for us to put it on our mouth. Trust me. What he uses for Hazrat Ali, Raziallahu and Hazrat Hussain. And one thing I have to tell about that this guy is so much uh, obsessed with punishing people that once he went to bathroom, and one of his maids, by mistakenly, by mistakenly, gave her hot water, <laughs> hot water. And while he was washing his uh, backside, his hand and uh, that burn. You know what I'm talking about. And then you know what? Instead of being acting like a prophet, what he has done, you know what? He said, "Put your hands in front of me," and he burned uh, that maid's hand by putting that hot water back on his hand. Subhanallah. Yeah, we caught we caught part of his uh, character and about his uh, foul language in the last stream. I don't know if you watched that. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the, but there is not much, brother. I believe that we should make a presentation. I'm not saying that you guys don't do that. I'm just saying that make a presentation and just show it that how much and especially the Elul Bayt because trust me, brother, Elul Bayt has a special status. I'm not comparing them Sahabas or anyone. I'm just saying that the words he has uses have no justification. And he says that, you know, brother, one thing I just like to say before my battery runs out. He says, I became married and become pregnant metaphorically. How can be somebody say pregnant metaphorically? I've never seen pregnancy as a term, as a metaphorically. You can never be pregnant metaphorically. You can never especially, be pregnant metaphorically. Especially a male, even physically, literally, it's not possible. <laughs> Forget physically. They will use Allah's magic and Allah's I, power. I, I, that. I, yeah. Oh, brother, not for I think... I think Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Kadiani was uh, mentally deranged. He was not a normal man. He suffered from many, you know, physical and and uh, you know medical conditions, and that affected his brain clearly, his thinking capacity, and he used whatever little skills he had uh, uh, in languages, and his literacy was used for these these things. And he ended up, he ended up causing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to become misguided. It's a very unfortunate thing, seriously. Very, very unfortunate when you think about it. I actually uh, that... feel for the Ahmadis, you know. 
uh, that's normal because in their family when in the british time there is a high liter- illiteracy rate in india and we and adnan mm-hmm. both i'm from india and, he, and he's from maybe pakistan pakistan to yes. uk now you live but that's the truth because mm-hmm. many people are illiterate but thanks to the digital media and they are doing uh, printing their books brother one last thing i want to say that he says in that kira or maybe haqiqatul way he said my relationship with allah is like a son to me how can they even use this because allah is above these relationship these relationship are with humans yes. almost exactly like christianity that's the, the, the christian say that spirituality son he is uh, talking about not actual son but some christians now go begotten how can you say that everything is metaphorical metaphorical they say my relationship with allah is like his throne everything is metaphorical they everything brother how can you do use metaphorical yes. in every turn yeah that's right okay samir bhai jazak allah khair uh, we got jazak allah uh, please keep process. doing this work and uh, yeah. thank you jazak allah take care sir akal allah all right uh, we got a sister here sister maski morashid morashid assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i admire all of you and the work you do i am a young muslim and i am going through a journey to learn more about my faith and i i consider myself as someone that doesn't know anything so when i see you young brothers mashallah doing a great job i i want to be like you i want to know as much as you guys do and um may allah bless you all for what you do i follow your programs and i learn a lot about the things you do and sometimes i dot down things to follow up and then read about it and mashallah i see what you guys say and i learn i love to challenge myself to learn every day i am not ahmadi but i've been learning a lot about islam virtually anything i come across because i i want to know i just want to know the truth i want to find myself i want to be closer to allah i want to know the truth if i see something and i have doubts i know i would find answers or watch programs like yours or yeah so i pray allah helps me too and um but with the with the notes i i dot down i just wanted to ask a few questions and i wanted guidance from you maybe to explain more so i would understand because i consider myself as someone that doesn't know anything i i always look up to learned people like you all of you all three of you and others mashallah okay uh, thank, thank you i sorry I, sorry you can just ask can just ask one question one because question of the, because of the time, limit. time limit that'll be great yeah. that'll be great yeah okay okay that's fine no problem i i was uh, i came across a post that um say that the pro- uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, i'm trying to read sorry no hardship pain worry grief harm or distress befalls a believer not even a thorn that pricks him but allah will expiate some of his sins thereby and i've been he- hearing brother at hand talk about um the sickness of um the sickness is that uh uh the the leader of the ahmadis uh, was going Mirza. through Mirza. and yeah. i am yeah. sick myself <laughs> i've been struggling with my health and when i go to the hospitals i don't really know what's wrong and they can't really diagnose what is wrong with me i am just 25 years old and it just came out of nowhere it's traumatizing me mentally physically even with my education because i am going to university so but then i stand corrected because i'm learning but from the way i heard brother um adnan say it it may, it it kind of sounded like going through sicknesses is more like a punishment from allah when no but then no. i came across this uh this a uh, quote from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said otherwise so i would want him to elaborate more so i would understand was the okay. leader okay. of the ahmadi being punished because he was sick his whole life 
and doesn't mean people like me also that are sick are being punished. And the Prophet is saying something different. So I would want okay. to learn okay. from let you me, and understand. Let me contextualize. Let me contextualize. Thank you. Yeah. Very quickly. When I spoke about Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani and, and his illness, I was making a specific point. And that point was that he claimed to be the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. He claimed to be the promised Messiah, the return of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus was known to have healed people by touching them. His entire living, his entire existence was about healing people from illnesses. And here we have a man. It is as if Allah is giving us a sign that this guy, this person who has claimed to be the promised Messiah or the return of Jesus Christ himself is riddled uh, with, uh, with a number of conditions. So I am saying there is a sign in this. The problem is not with the conditions. The problem, the problem is with the claim of the person and having those conditions. Do you understand? Do you get my point? So if he's making, so if he's making a claim to be, claim to be, to be Jesus to Christ, be Jesus, he's making a claim to be Jesus Christ, and he himself cannot heal himself. He is going through all these conditions for so many years, for two decades. This shows you that not only that he's a liar uh, on other, uh, uh, you know, matters, he's a plain liar on this matter too. How can he be the Messiah who heals people by touching them himself is riddled with so many different conditions? Okay, so that's the point I'm making. With regards to believers, because the Hadith is very, very clear. Okay, Mirza was a disbeliever. I don't believe I don't he was. Believe he, he, was, was a, he was a Muslim. Muslim. Okay. Mm. Okay. As for okay. believers, the Hadith is very specific that no believer who has been afflicted by uh, a hardship or even uh, getting pricked by a thorn, except that Allah will expiate for his sins. This is a glad tidings to those people, you know, who suffer from conditions, maybe diseases, maybe accidents, maybe loss of limbs, uh, anything. It could be anything. It could be any calamity. Any calamity that strikes a believer who believes in Allah, that calamity removes from the sins of that believer and raises his or her rank with Allah if they are patient, if they thank Allah for whatever blessings they have and are patient in the hardship and difficulty, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them immensely and expiates uh, for the sins. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sister, you got your, got your, I, yes, I just I, need uh, mute you. So, sister, you got one of the tabs open, the YouTube tab. So we are he hearing an echo. So if you can switch that off, close the tab, that'll be great. Only using my laptop. I don't have. Um, yeah, a yeah. We don't. We, don't. Okay. we can. Okay. We can still hear the echo. But carry on. But carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would um still read more and. Uh, uh, educate myself, and I, I appreciate your answer. Thank you um, very much. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Yeah. yeah. You. yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking specifically about the the condition of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani uh, with his claims. Okay, because there are many examples in the history of Islam where people were afflicted, like Ayub al Islam. He was a true prophet of Allah. Ayub al Islam was, uh, you know, uh, uh, given hardship through disease. He had a disease and he was patient. Okay. He's mentioned as a patient man in the Quran. Okay. So, disease in itself is not an issue, it's not uh, uh, necessarily a punishment. It can be a test for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So, we have to be steadfast. But when someone makes a claim to be the Messiah and cannot treat himself, being the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, who healed people by touching, and there is a sign in that for those who contemplate. That look at this guy, he claims to be the return of Jesus Christ, and he is basically disease-ridden. Basically, he has all these different conditions. That, that was the point. Okay. Right. 
Uh, we got Abdullah next. Abdullah, you need to unmute yourself. Can anybody can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can, yeah. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, first off, I would like to say Jazakallah khairan for all of you brothers um, on here. I'm looking at it live. It's like seven and a half hours. <laughs> so may Allah Ta'ala reward you, brothers, for the uh, the long lives that you guys do. Um, you know, it, exposing people to the truth of uh, Ahmadiyya, uh, Qadiyaniyya. Um, and I'm just going to make this uh, short because I know you guys have been on here for a long um, when I first uh, reverted back to Islam, um, uh, living in Toronto, I was exposed to the Ahmadiyya uh, a lot, you know, um, and a lot of the, the, the misconceptions and doubts that they brought um, at one point got me caught up in their uh, sect and their cult, uh, especially when they would bring prophecies from Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. And um, there were many literature and many books that actually helped me. Um, dispel many of these doubts and, and, and these misconceptions. And of course, you brothers have mentioned them in the past, um, but just for the sake of the viewers, um, would there be any books or literatures that you brothers, especially, I want to hear this from, uh, you know, Muhammad Tiaz and obviously Anand Rashid as well, um, any books or literatures that are written in the English language that you would recommend for brothers and sisters that might be <coughs> caught up with that cult, like I was once caught up with them? Can you tell us why is everything in English? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adnan Bhai, uh, there is one book, it's basically uh, a partial PhD uh, dissertation. Inshallah, I will share with you, uh, uh, Ashim Bhai, in PDF. I have found that very precise, very to the point, and everything with references. And I found that very short, but at the same time, it's very sweet as well. So, inshallah, I will share the with Brother Hashim. You can, inshallah, share in your. With the link, yeah. maybe in this, uh, uh, inshallah, with the video, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll ask Abnan to tweet it later when you. Yeah. So inshallah, it's a very good book. Keep keep an eye on Abnan's uh, Twitter feed. It's yeah. Mister yes. Abnan Rashid. Inshallah, you can find it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> can we can we tweet yeah. PDS? Uh, you can. No, it's a link, so you can tweet the link. I can send you the link. I will upload on my uh, drive. Now send yeah. you the link. Okay, brilliant. We can do that. No problem. Uh, Inshallah. Um, I'm going to ask um, and, and brothers, check out uh, that likewise. Ahmadiyya yes. check out, sorry, uh, uh, before I forget check out that Ahmadiyya fact, fact check uh, uh, yeah. blog of, of our brother Ahmadiyya fact check blog, check it out Inshallah, they have a lot yeah, of yeah, English definitely. articles there Inshallah Oh, definitely that that brother yeah may Allah Ta'ala reward him as well he's uh his his help has his has helped me out a lot especially since you know i know uh, a brother likewise yeah. who you know Ulam Stan, he got caught up in the whole you know that, that whole uh that whole sect and that cult um yeah. one one book if if you don't mind me brothers mentioning it there's one book actually two that i've uh <clears throat> tremendously benefited from that you know if you guys want to share it on your uh on your Twitter, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, there's one by uh, a Saudi sheikh named uh, Mohammed Subail, and I'm pretty sure you brothers have came across it, exposing Ahmadiyya. Um, that book's helped mm -hmm. me out tremendously. And then there's one by uh, by a Pakistani sheikh as well, uh, by Hassani Lehi Zahir. Um, his is, in, in, I'm pretty sure it's in Urdu and English as well. Um, yes. So if you brothers want to mention that as well, um, that would be a help and, you know, like I said, keep up the good work and may Allah Ta'ala reward you, brothers, tremendously for your efforts. I mean, Barakallah. Jazakallah khair enough. Wafikum ba'ad. Wa alaikum Right, uh, we got uh, Omar Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brother Adnan, Brother Hashem, and Brother Imtiaz. Excellent show. I don't want to delay you guys anymore. You guys are marathon runners, and alhamdulillah, you did an excellent job. I'm an ex-Qadiani, ex-Amadi, who is trying to preach <coughs> to my family members and your shows, and the purity of your show is what I, I truly appreciate. Uh, Brother Adnan, you. your approach is absolutely excellent. Keep it up. I would ask 
and I know that you guys got plans and, and, and how you're going to strategically uh, bring up different topics. But one thing just amongst the Qadianis or the Amadis themselves is the varying translations of their Qurans. You know, the translations of Mirza Qadiani himself, uh, Hakim Nuruddin, Mirza Bashiruddin, uh, Mirza Nasir, uh, I'm sorry, Mirza Tahir, and, and their other, some of the companions. If you could also do shows on that, excellent. Brother Imtiaz, I really appreciate the fact that you cornered the man very strategically when you clearly said that Mohamdi Begum's family had uh, converted in the 1890s and Mirza Qadiani himself shamefully continued to argue his point and advertise about this young lady. May Allah give, you know, grant her paradise. Uh, excellent job, gentlemen. I, I, like I said, don't want to take any of more of your time. Uh, I do want to point you guys to one Tazkira reference. It's from 1898. Now, gentlemen, all of us have mother and fathers and we're very appreciative of our parents. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And may Allah bless them. And for those of them that have passed Amen. away, may Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus and the highest positions. Amen. I point Amen. you guys to this one reference in Mirza Ghulam Qadiani's Tazkira of 1898. Amen. It's both in the English Tazkira or Urdu mein bhi hai. What is the date? 1998. And it, the reference is, is how Mirza Ghulam Ahmed purportedly received this wahi or this ilham from from Yalash, I can't believe that such a ilham would have been from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm I've killed your father and your brother so that you can go forward with your mission. Now, this man, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, lived under the roof of his father, ate from him, stole his pensions for 34, 35 years of his life, and then in 1898, his supposed God or his supposed di uh, deity kill says that I killed your brother and your father so you could uh, perpetuate your mission. I mean, it's unbelievable how how erratic this person was. And he was receiving ilham from none other than Shaitan himself. So if you can look yes. into these, I, I, I know they will be eye openers. And I would also, I know that you guys are limited screen-wise, but if it's possible to bring up the actual references as, you're, as you guys are, so you guys don't have to request, maybe a third or fourth person can open the references up on the screen. That would be absolutely excellent because Jesse Akia Abjante and Kadiani to follow Ni Katena get reference though, reference though, reference though, Kahani Kawa. Where is it written? Give me the reference. And even when they see the bloody references, they still don't want to believe. Exactly, yeah. Jazakallah Khair, all three of you, my salam, keep up the excellent work. And thank you, brother. Jazakallah I'm linked to you guys. So, inshallah, you know, just as you guys are doing, always give the Kadianis the first approach um, that way it gives them a chance and it further brings uh, to the forefront of younger Amadis of yeah. how Qadiani Mullahs or Qadiani Murabis cannot answer and they completely evade the topic and run away. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And, and, and you know, thank you so much, Brother Omar. May Allah bless you. And just to just to emphasize that point, that these streams are for youngsters. These streams are for those youngsters who are on social media, are online activities for them, for them to wake up, for them to realize that life is far too much worthy for it to be wasted on, on something like this. Seriously, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani is simply not a worthy man to waste your life over defending him, reading his books and calling him Masim or Ud Salam and stuff like that. He's not worthy of these titles. He's not. Far from it. And so alhamdulillah, all praises, to, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all praises to Allah praise. subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave me the benefit of learning mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Urdu language. I always used to wonder why 
my father wanted me to learn Urdu, and he was fairly disciplining in his tactics of me learning Urdu. I only learned when I was at the age of 34 of why I needed to learn Urdu. And I can I have all of his books just as Alhamdulillah you guys all have. And uh, I'm able to translate them. And I, I do that for our different groups that I'm in. But Alhamdulillah, you know, I many, 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 I can't even thank Allah enough for just learning the, the Urdu language and finding out the true facts of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah. Fake, brother. And just, you know, brother, just, Omar, just to second your point, Omar, you said that uh, my understanding, Adnan, why maybe you agree with me, after the Arabic language, if somebody wants to learn the deen, Urdu is the second most important language. A lot of work has been done in the field of Hadith, yes. Quran, Tafsir, everything. This is the second Absolutely. most important language to learn. Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. It, it used to be Persian. It used to be Persian, but now it's Urdu. Urdu has surpassed Persian in terms of translations from Arabic yeah. works. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Omar Bhai, until next time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. alaikum. Right. Uh, I think I turned up the law already. Okay, you got a pass. You know, you know, I want to say something. Yeah? My team members, my support uh team right now with me they are all sleeping on the floor <laughs> 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 they, they, they are all knocked out they're completely knocked out they have given up <laughs> they have given up may Allah, may Allah bless the soldiers mashallah i mean i mean may Allah give them barakah and give you as well ustad right uh, abbas Ameen. you need to unmute yourself yes my dear brothers assalamu alaikum <laughs> i hope you are well Ameen. and alhamdulillah thank you so much for doing this uh I've been watching you guys for a very long time, Brother Adnan. I, I hope you recognize my voice, right? Uh, we've been talking on WhatsApp. I messaged you a few days ago. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. How are you, brother? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Yeah. MashaAllah. Good from you. So, brother, I just wanted to say that, uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for what you're doing. And may Allah reward you and uh, keep giving you the power and the ilm so that you can continue to do this. And inshallah, brother, it will be amazing to see you doing this, the same thing that you're doing right now, to do it for, against the Shias, right? Because, uh, like, I, uh, I'm the example myself here, right? There, there's many who are converting as well, reverting back to yes. the original yes. Islam, you know? So, so it would be amazing if you could do that. I know you're very, very busy. Even now you're traveling, so may Allah make it easy for you. But inshallah, okay. you know, like, the, the, the truth is apparent. Right. Absolutely. So that's all. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you so way. much, Abbas. May Allah bless you. Stay in touch, and we will uh, continue talking. Inshallah. May Allah bless you. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. So yeah, that was the last caller. Uh, sorry, guys, we are closed now. So those people who are joining in, we cannot uh, let you in. Yeah, we would. We would love to hear from you guys. We would love yeah. to hear from you, but we are absolutely shattered. It's now nearly eight hours. I didn't think this stream was going to go beyond four hours but i think every minute was worth it if if any sentence any statement we might have we might have made tonight and it helps you find the path to allah this entire stream was worth it so we leave it Absolutely. to allah we leave the results we leave the results to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can do our best we are very weak we are very limited uh in, in many respects and uh, you know we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our Ahmadi brothers and sisters in humanity to Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. to guide them to the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, for them to realize. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these uh, you know, interactions, these streams, uh, a means of their guidance. And may Allah forgive us on the Day of Judgment for our mistakes and cause us to enter Jannah through these little efforts we're trying to do. I mean, mm -hmm. and I would like to thank Brother Muhammad Imtiaz, last minute entry, uh, and his expertise have come uh, very, very handy today. May Allah bless you, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for reaching out and helping us and supporting us. Brother Hashim, mm -hmm. as always, amazing uh, moderation. May Allah bless you. And mm -hmm. now you have more Qadiani fans. 
<laughs> you're more, you're more, you're, you're more May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. You're, you're, Very, you're uh, doing it full time on Twitter, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't really spend so much time on Twitter, but uh, they have got me busy. But Alhamdulillah, it's, it's for yeah. good, for, for a good cause because there are people looking at our stuff. A lot of people are actually watching Absolutely. what's going on. Yeah. So, so uh, on that note, others, I think we should say the. The dua yeah, of inshallah. ending. Let, let brother Imtia say over. the last words, Adnan Bhai. I just yes, yes, to sorry, 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 brother Imtia. Very good. Very good. No, no, very please, good. please, please, mm -hmm. I insist. Yeah, no, alhamdulillah, good. brothers. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I am very pleased. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this small opportunity to defend the honor of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Sallam. You know, obviously, all the fronts of deen are very important. But my personal attachment is, alhamdulillah, a lot with this particular area. I believe this is very important to defend the honor and the namus of, of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So alhamdulillah, brothers, I'm very glad. Inshallah, after I finish this one, I'm going to drive back to my home because I was uh, away from my home. And I served as a Muslim captain in the prison. So I, I cannot go to prison today. <laughs> but now I'm going to drive back to my home, Canberra. But inshallah, brothers, if at any time, inshallah, I am more than happy to join. And uh, it was a pleasure for me to be part of this uh, this noble team. Barakallah, Faith, brother. Really appreciate the sacrifice yourself and Ustad Adnan. MashaAllah. A lot of people have benefited from the stream. And inshallah, mm -hmm. they'll benefit in the future because once it's online, you know, it's online. So, yeah, until next time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah. Ilaha illa anta. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك